I'm watching a video of Cheeto Vera right now, man. Tears. I like this guy. I love him. I love him. That's crazy. That's it. I'm already sold. What's up, man? How's everybody doing? Everybody doing all right? Welcome to a watch along with me, Chance Pulver, a.k.a. me. No, I'm just kidding. What's up? Everybody doing all right? UFC Mod 2. Well, look at you. Look at you. Oh, it's another fight day. How is everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. Do we do we span out there? Do I have to say hello to some other places as well? Or do I just say, hey, if you want to talk with me, Twitch TV slash UFC. But if you're out there in the tube world, the book of the face, and wherever else you may be watching, how are you? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well. It is Jensen Jim. Jim, hey. Dude, that Cheeto Vera, though, I was stuck. That thing is cool, man. And his family of fighters. Yo, I'm telling you. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing all right? All right, so we got predictions. We've got the time. We're going to have ourselves a guest assist. So we've got a guest that's going to be popping in and hanging out with us if and when they show they show up. Yo, Falid, how you do? Saludos. Ah, I like it. I like it. How are you? I like that. Saludos desde España, amigo. GG. I like it. Yo, Mota, how you do? How you do? Hope everybody's doing well. So right now, let's have a gander. Let me have a look real quick. We've got 10,000 channel points popped up here by Tank Fairy Tales for Mazzani. All right. And then Shane Young, 2000. Mota. Dropping in 2,200. Okay, good, good. I like it. Guest, yeah. No, for sure. You know he's going to pop in, right? Yeah. He got, he will, too. Yana is just going to boop. He'll just be popping up right there. What? <laughs> so, no, again, big shout out to the 8K Snoo and all the mods behind the scenes making this, putting everything together. Wildness. Let me move my, let me move my mouse out of the way there. And then... Yeah, we'll just kind of see how everybody's doing. How's everybody think? There was a canceled fight, right? Yeah, the first the first fight, don't do not try to make me say his name, but there was a the first fight was canceled. But we also had an addition, well we, we had that canceled fight from what a week ago and they're fighting this week, so that's kind of cool. Yo, legs, much love and appreciation. Yee, yee for sure. Hey, I was flyweight. Um Dang, they already took it off on the stats and everything. The she the Shana Shanna Young, the Shanimal, that is gangster. Her nickname, her fight name is the Shanimal. Yo, yeah, we got Romanov and Sherman. I like it. Romanov and Sherman is and is fighting now. Romanov and Sherman. Yeah, right. So we'll get them. But yeah, we're gonna be doing every fight. You know me. I'm gonna be chatting with all of you the whole time. That's how we go. Yeah, you know I mean prelims rolling up, and then like I said, we will get the. Uh, Yana is in here at some point and then off and running. And yeah. I'm listening to Karen Bryant, Michael Chiesa, and Dean Thomas on UFC Fight Night, and they're having a conversation about Orlovsky's been around forever. He has been around forever. What's a strong storm system, supercell thunderstorms to eastern Iowa and northwest Illinois between 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. today with the threat of hail up to a quarter size damaging winds at 60 miles an hour and isolated tornadoes? I don't see any of that yet. It better not. It better quit playing. That's more north. North, right? East, maybe that's above me, hopefully. I don't need to be in the middle of that. Well, Giannis has got this if uh, if I have for the dip. Well, luckily, the thing is, Bright Pin, is that because of the river being so close, it usually keeps all that from happening. It'll go up more towards Iowa City and, uh, you know, and things like that. But, huh, when does the first fight start? And is there a list of who goes next? There'll be a list because I'll be the one that pops up. Nathan Levy and Mike Breeden is up after that. Gabriel Green, Johan Lenis, um, Lacerda. So I'll move it over match stat-wise. But this is going to be the first fight. 
That's that'll be up. When it if and when if and when, but we do need the rain. Rain makes the corn. Corn makes the whiskey. You know what I mean? Mullet check. Straight teeth check. Blue blockers check. Company branded lid check. Live fights check. Pausing not at all, Doctor Fauci. Not at all. But the rest of it, you got me. You got me. All right. Bye. Orlovsky was fighting when I was a youngster, and the reason why I remember when they said it. I remember they said we got this youngster coming up, Orlovsky. It makes me feel like I should have still fought in my 40s. I don't know why we didn't. When is UFC coming out on Quest 2 and, or for Mixed Reality VR? It should be, you should be, be able to put on the headset and sit cage side and watch all the fights. You should be able to do the, uh, boop, have a little by the pass, probably about an hour before the fight starts, so there's no too much bootlegging you can buy it an hour before and boom next you know you're sitting there cage side watching everything in your vr headset chilling you could be sitting right next to the, the commentators or something hanging out watching the fights or back of row you can pick right where you want to sit and watch the fights that'd be for the vr you know what i mean shoot get up and even walk your way over to get yourself a uh a in-game coke or an in-game beverage, which, by the way, you could charge to be in the in-game, walk around. Oh, yeah. I've been saying it for a while, though. Like, that's something they should have been doing a while back. And you VR sit by anybody. That'd be the way to go, right? VR sit wherever you want to. 100%. All right, I'm liking this fight. Gina Mazzani, Danger, and Young. So NBA does courtside like that, huh? Dang it. I've been talking about this for so long, too. It's crazy. Sherg Zim, how you do, Sherg? I love my version of the fights that I get to My version of what we get to watch for the fights because you get to hear everything. All the... <laughs> all the commentary. You get to hear everybody. We're glitching on camera six. Camera six. Going down. Yo, what up, man? You are broadcasting the battle of Nate and Le What I'm not doing is showing the fight, but I'll be sitting here talking about it. You you work your way on over to ESPN Plus. And for I, how much is it a month, chat? How much is it a month? Exclamation watch is one way that you can do it. Um, the prelims won't come on. I'm watching on ESPN. Is it not popping on? You have to let me know. I'm watching every fight. I'll be sitting here talking about every fight. So getting that ESPN, there you go, six ninety nine a month, six ninety nine a month, and then when you get UFC Fight Pass for just under just nine and change, I'm telling you it's worth it. Fifteen dollars a month, and you just all you do is watching fights all day. What Fight Pass in Canada is eleven dollars. There you go. Oh, I'm from Israel, and I know Nathan Levy personally. He is Israeli pride for me. All right, I, all right, heck yeah, Daniel. All right, all right. Well, I wish we could show it, but we'll still be watching it either way. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Hey, out there, by the way, YouTube. YouTube, I love and appreciate each and every one of you. I'm glad you're in here watching the fights. But remember, I can't see the questions unless you're over here, Twitch TV slash UFC. So if you're at Twitch TV slash UFC, that is the chat that I'm reading. So if you want to do that, whoosh, run on over here, I got you. But either way, love and appreciation. Thank you so much for being here. Can, I, thank you. Love you. So let's roll. We'll have some fun. So I'm not ignoring you. I'm just, I don't see you. <laughs> if that makes sense. If that makes sense. Roden29 within six, nine months. Much love and appreciation. All subs go to support American Cancer Society. Remember, exclamation picks. Join the UFC Twitch channel Pick'em Game, exclusive to UFC subs and followers. Enter here. There's the link. The password Twitch. 
get in there because on Monday we break it down and we see how everybody did. Make sure when you ch you change your name so you're not ESPN fan six seven two four one eight. You're actually your chat name when we're calling it out. You know, you know what I mean. YouTube chat. I'm curious. I'm curious for YouTube chat. My coach is a really good friend of Nathan Levy, and he sponsored us at the uh, Institute, and he brought him to the Institute, and we took pictures, and since then, we are in touch. Very cool. All right, Dan. Well, hey, I'm excited. I'm excited. He'll be up next. He's the next fight. So, yeah, but, if, like, exclamation watch is where you can, hopefully, it'll show you where you can watch the fights. I run over no bets for UFC. Huh? Shannon Young. Shannon Young. These are channel points. Got to be in here. So we just, we're doing it for fun. Mazzani. Too late for picks, I think. They're grayed out for me. Oh, is it? Might be. Might be. Oh, Lord, here we go. I got, remember, I'm all about the timer and the round right now. Remember, we got to get this time. When is Yana's getting here? That's what I'm saying. Amen. I don't know. I can't make the individual show up. I'm just here. Well, I appreciate that, Chunk. Oh, deuce, deuce. Much love and appreciation. Thank you. Shannon Young. All right, here we go. So Shannon's making her way out. I like it. I like it. Dude, I just having fun. I'm having fun. RK, what up, cryptics? How you do? How you do? By the way, Trojan, protect yourself at all times. Are you betting no advice? That's what Fridays are for. Fridays, we're breaking down the fights. We're watching the fights of fighters fighting on Saturday. And we kind of, we tend to, if, if fighter does this, if fighter B does this, they can win, they can do that. I don't tell people what they should or shouldn't vote for, and I'm always looking for the long shots that have the best opportunity anyways. You know what I mean? Yeah, but no, he's not a fumble for getting there on time. He, it's, it's whatever time he can do. It's his time. That's the thing. This is the laid back. Laid back. You know what I mean? Shayna Young, karate black belt, finished two of last three wins by submission. Former king of the cage, bantamweight champion. Yee yee! One man army. Hey, gents, I know you're a big gamer. What's your favorite game and what you playing at the moment? Um, ironically, my favorite game, as much as I try to get away from it, I can't Fortnite. Then they just went no build Fortnite. So now I'm like really stuck in Fortnite because it, the game pisses me off so much that I have to keep playing. I can't walk away. I can't walk away from it. So I, it, it's, I'm a Fortnite freak, to be honest. <laughs> I got to get another game. I got to get another game. You know what I mean? And I actually streamed it. We streamed it right here on the UFC stream the other day. So now maybe Apex, I don't know. We got to get into a shooter game so I can game with some of these here fighters, you know, so we'll figure it out. All right, Linda, how you doing? How you doing? Welcome, Linda. Welcome. Here we go. Four wins by knockout, four first-round finishes, smallest bottom position percentage in UFC Bantamweight history, 3.15% for Gina Mazzani. Yee, yee. Yee, yay. All right, remember, she looks fit. They look ready. She looks ready to go. All right, so what are we at? Five, six, five, seven. Let me move this up one. Sorry about that. Five, six, five, seven, 126, 125. Not bad. Not bad. And who do we got still? We've got, oh, who came over here and dropped a 10? Who dropped a 10? Or Lotz 95. Laws 95. Throwing 10,000 over here on Shannon Young. All right, evened it up. Getting close. Woo! Sure, Zim comes in with 13,000. Ninja does Apex. So, see, if, if Ninja does Apex, I'll jump in. But then we've got 
Yeah, I mean, I haven't played Call of Duty for a minute. A couple of hacks later, and I just walk away. I'm like, ah! You know what I mean? I, the hackers and stuff. It just drives me crazy. Can't watch this live, but I wish you all a great fight night. All right, Laser. Fight. What up, Kiwi? How you doing? Yeah, we haven't played Apex in a minute. I'm down for diving into some Apex. I'd give it a whirl. I love it. I love it. What up, Zadro? What's up? Hello from Russia with love. Much love, Zadro. Go, go. Les, I love it. I love it. All right. I'm about the clock. The clock. It's all that matters at this moment. Look, I love Elliot. He's, look at Elliot's working out over there on the other side of the cage. What up, Rigorous? <laughs> My man. Have have you ever been to a UFC event? Like, what do you mean? Besides fighting in them or just watching them? <laughs> We're good. So I like that feeling out process. I just say, how tall is Mazzani? I like this. She's already looking sharp with that left hand. She's going to try to throw that left hand. See, there we go. We got the open stance. Oh, they're getting married in October. Congratulations. Congratulations. See, now the problem is, right, if you kind of watch it, Gina tries to go in for a body lock, push up against the fence, but the way that she has her push up against the fence, she was punching. It seemed like she was punching from just a little too far out, but, right? But now she's getting in. That's the counter shots for uh, for Young. But now she's got her pushed up against the fence, looking to try to maybe with an over. All right, good break. The wrestling matchup for both of them, though, this is going to be the stand-up fight right now. All right, I'm getting everything worked out. I'm getting loosened up. Temple, how you doing? What up, Stanio? How do you go? How you do? See, again, that body lock from Mazzani. Are you watching chat on YouTube or Twitch? I'm just on Twitch. I can't, like I said, everybody, much love and appreciation to all the YouTube, but I can't see the comments. No, you got to come to Twitch TV slash UFC, and I can see them. You know what I mean? So, again, Mazzani's got her pushed up against the fence, head in the pocket, underhook side, throw some knees to the ties. Oh, really? Well, good luck to you for sure. Good luck, Daniel. I like that. Head in the pocket. Mazzani throwing, trying to throw up the knees high. I like how she's just kind of sitting there holding that hand. She's got to try to push three screens. Isn't have YouTube chat up at the same time? I've got so many things happening in these screens. I wish you could all see. I have three, I'm in a cockpit. I've got screens all around me. And there is... I've got things everywhere. It's nuts. But see, again, Mazzani trying to get inside that counter right hand by Young. She won't throw it. So Mazzani, I, man, right out to the center, pop that jab. She gets in, closes the distance really well. Does a good job. Nice knee. I think she fired a good knee that dropped her leg, made her take a knee. She popped back up, fired the right hand. But that Mazzani, which came in, level change, popped up, grabbed the head through the knee. That was sick. Got the nachos. Don't leave them cage socks. They'll get bludgeoned on. Ketchup, remember? Why do you want... I don't... Look at that. Bork Lesnar, 209. You keep saying the same thing over. That's weirdness. Weirdness. I'm trying to find out the oddness of why you want to repeat that with the camera. What? I love that. Look at, thank you very much. I'm going to smash my opponent with beatings until he begs to stop. I like that. I, that that's a good idea. So you better be in shape. You got to be in shape. That's how you can apply such a, such a thrashing, Daniel. 
All right, so again, I like how Gina's dictate. Look, coming in and out, moving in, sliding in. Sometimes she'll change that level. It's it's definitely froze young up, except for the calf kick that she just threw right there inside calf kick, I guess. They seem like they're standing really far apart from each other. Like they're, they're punching from too far out. They're not really connecting each other, except when Mazzani does finally close the disc. But otherwise, they're shadow boxing out in front of each other. You know what I mean? Welcome to the people of the shadow realm. Love it. So, in it go. But now she seems to slow down a little bit. But again, when you got righty versus lefty, see good right hand? That's a big key, yeah? Using that, trying to throw that jab. I think the one thing I'd like to see with Young, if she could just be a little more aggressive, I think she has the opportunity going there with that jab, counter right hand which when uh, Gina's moving in. But Gina is definitely the aggressor. Yo, how you doing, Sith? Push kick ish by Young. Push kick ish by Young. See, and then that's the one thing. She's waiting for it when Gina moves in. She'll try to throw that counter one, two. But she needs to be throwing a lot. I'd like to see the right hand. I mean, I hate to say it, but that's how you beat a lefty, right? Straight rights. Oi, good job. Even, I guess. Look at the punch stats. You're looking at 30 to 20. Significant strikes. Not bad. Not bad. I'm with you going 10 9 Mazzani. So, how's everybody doing? Everybody doing all right? Oi. I got to get that. I'm just listening to the coaching, the coaching advice. Where are we at here with the 68? So, at the 20K. Oh, Kamikaze Soldier rolls in. Rolls in 20K. Avery, what? 10-9 Mazzani? I'm, I'm in agreement with that one. Sweet shirt? What? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's just JP. Just JP. How'd you see it? Oh, hold on. We forgot one thing. Nope, we got it. Round two. Got it. What's up, YouTube? Next Saturday, Olivia Gaethje, Nama Yunus, Esparza, May 7th. Woo. Woo. All right, here we go. Round two, round two. Moving on around on that monster energy drink symbol in the center. See right there, she's getting busier. Young's getting busier with that jab. I like that. Popping that jab when Gina's closing the distance. She's definitely wanting to throw that left leg. Tug Rose. Tug Rose. Yeah. Playing Dota, drawing a battle plan in the map. Boy. Here we go. Here we go. Moving around. Good afternoon. How you doing, Nemi? Good. Hope you're well. Baka, what's up, man? Can I ask Dana when UFC 5 is coming out? Do you think... Do, I'll guarantee... Do you think he knows? Let's find out who makes the game and ask them. Look at that. All right. These two are scrapping. Trying to get inside. They're just outside of range. See, that's the one thing when Young throwing that jab. Boom. See, I like that right there. Mazzani tried to lunge in with that left hand. But then Young was able to hurt her right there with that counter when she gets in, but then she didn't do anything. See, that's the problem. So she, if you can tell, if you're watching the fight, Mazzani doesn't want to close the distance because Young does have some really good counter punching when she gets inside. Young needs to throw more leg kicks. I wish Young would throw more right hands, to be honest. But look, she's just outside. And then Mazzani, she almost threw that elbow in case she tried to get aggressive. Now the one thing is right here, but see, I just she could probably be a little more aggressive too if she wanted to. Young, that is. She seems to be breaking Mazzani a little bit. She's looking a little more frustrated. 
And now if you notice, she's kind of lunging in with that left hand. And now she's going to go with the body lock right there. And nice throw. Good throw. They're in a good scrambling position. She's going to try to hop onto the back of Young. But Young wrestles it over. Wrestles it over on a head and arm. It's going to and get into the guard. Mazzani's going to try to maybe shoot for a triangle. No can do. Young is going to do a good job. Are you going to pass the knee? Good scramble. Now Young ended up on in side control. She's going to take the back. Standing up. Nice job with the stand-up. GG. Now she's got to push up against the fence. See, that's the problem. Look, again, Mazzani went for the head and arm, but no can do when the hips are lower. It's just not right. She, Young did a great job of sagging back, and it took her over and was in side control, and now it's going to step over. And now it's up to Mazzani to give up her back. She gave up her back. Now Young's going to sprawl her out, has the legs out deep. She's throwing shots to the face. A lot of ground and pound. Mazzani's going to try to move out from underneath her, but she's going to be a hard time. She's only got one leg in, though. Young, that is, has one leg in, still throwing shots, still throwing shots. They're looking to stop it here real soon. She's trying to kick around, but we're going seven, eight deep shots, and we have to call it a day. Winner by the ground and pound. GG on the wrestling. Really good counter wrestling right there. When Mazzani made the mistake of trying to go for that head and arm, she did a really good job again, right? When you have a head and arm position, your hip has to be lower. But on the defensive side, as my hip is lower than yours, I can sag back. Not bad. Nice job. See right here, look. See how the hips were even, and then she was able to sag back and stop her. And she didn't have any of the, she didn't have the, the torque to try to take her over. And she did a good job of sagging back, getting side control, and then stepping over the top. And then we had the mountain. Once she got in there, she was able to throw in one leg and just go nuts. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about out there, YouTube? You good? Hope everybody's well out. Ooh, YouTuber. Make sure, like I said, come on over. Twitch TV slash UFC. And say what's up. Chili Bowl Mullet Man. Huh? I showed my kid your fight with John Lewis. Well, that'll make him go to sleep early. Punching my clown. Punching my clown with six months. Whoop, charity with that. Hey, thank you very much. All subs go to support American Cancer Society. Nice job, nice job. Is it, can you, the glare? As long as I look down, it's only when I look up. Ooh, May 3rd, May 3rd, Team Pena, Team Nunez. The ultimate fighter. Ooh, May 3rd, huh? If I say like this, I should be all right. Three minutes, 11 seconds. TKO. The Shanimal, Shanna Young. Shanimal. What kind of glasses are these? What do you mean? These? I'm not sponsored, but I like them. Every time I flip for that card, I got to look right past my jury card. Gosh! May 3rd is when my 8-year-old son goes to his first jiu-jitsu class. May 4th was my grandfather's birthday. Um, and he passed away. And ironically, my baby girl was born May 5th, May 4th. So now it's Hayden's birthday. So May 4th, Hayden's birthday. The bird. All right, so let me see. Next fight. What?
Here we go. 5.6. Esu. Esu for Nathan Levy. We got 1K from Mutant Hateful over here on the channel points. Jake Collier, I cannot believe the trans, the, the man, my man, he is watching him fight at different weight classes. It's crazy. He likes his heavyweight business. Well, lost a savage, just a straight savage. You know what I mean, I'm younger, I'm bigger. Do not have that as your. That cannot be your motivating factor, right? That cannot be. Matt, when he was the welterweight, then he maneuvered up, right? You want to see Lanisi? That's next. Next will be next will be Gabriel Green, Johan Lanisi. Baloo, Baloo, how you do, Baloo? Baloo, la oof. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing all right? I don't know if I say his name right. Is it Laness? Or do I say Lanisi? I don't know why I got a long E, but I can't help myself. UFC 28. How do you think Orlov's going to go tonight? He's going to go slow, lethargic, and if he can drag, if he can drag Collier into a slow fight, then he'll do, then he'll do just fine. But if Collier decides to push the pace, then Orlovsky will get run over the top of, is my opinion. There it was. I was bummed. That was the fight. Tyro, and I can't say the last name, versus Condolario. That was the first fight that got canceled, Blue Jazz. Thank you. Yeah, that was the first fight that, that just got canceled. I can't complain. I'm, I'm loving life. I'm hanging with all of you. I'm watching fights. You know what I mean? YouTube, YouTube's out there kicking it. We we're out there on, are we on the Book of the Face? And YouTube and Twitter. Are we out there on Twitter as well? All y'all out there, how you doing? Much love and appreciation, but make sure you drop into Twitch TV slash UFC. You know what we do on Monday? Do you on Monday? We actually do interviews. We interview fighters. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What's up, Poison Kilo, huh? Where's Adrian? Yo, Adrian! I don't know. They'll show up when they show up. Did you say it wrong? Tyra. Excuse me. That's why I didn't want to say the last name. You know what I mean? Your title says Adrian is here too. Yeah, they're on their way. Do they have to show up right this second? Stickers. Sticklers. Look at Sid Solo. Are you trying? Are you trying right now? Do you want me to do you want me to remove it for two fights and then add it back in after the second fight? Will that make you feel better since you're going to keep bringing it up? Let me know. Let me know what I can do for you so that I won't do it. Yo! Yeah! First of two lightweight fights. First of two lightweight fights. Awarded UFC contract Dana White's Contender Series Season 4, Week 9. Sorry, sorry, brother. No, you're good. I just, after the, you, yeah, no, you're good. Another Dana White Contender Series, eight wins by knockout. Mike Breeden, eight wins by knockout. Let's go. Yes, you can ask for things. I know a song that I would love. Riggers, you're the reason why we don't even allow songs anymore. You're the reason why we don't get to do a lot of things. You might be the reason why we don't even have a, a, a true UFC discord. I blame you for that as well, Riggers. I blame you for that as well. You know what I'm saying? How's everybody doing? Are everybody doing all right? Keep making your way in. We're waiting for this fight to get out here. 88 Nash, what up? I tend to blame, yeah, Rip Discord, right? That made it a week. Literally, the UFC Discord made it a week. I think Rigorous spearheaded 
the whole dang thing. I, hey, I'm, you know, but it just goes to show. I just can't give my kids nice things because, damn it, y'all just tend to get a little wild, you know. <laughs> It oh it burned bright while it was there yeah it burned bright all right dang it was some <laughs> Woo! that might be the greatest thing I've ever read Jens I have a belly button his name is Peter and he claps when I eat peanut butter <laughs> oh, <man>. oh oh. <laughs> Oh, that is awesome. My man, you start eating peanut butter and he just starts going, yes. Oh, now the question is, do you feed it peanut butter? That's got to be a mess, right? Just jam it in, just feed it. Here, Peter, damn. <laughs> oh, get some. I'm telling you what. Oh, Nate Levy, Mike Breeden. Who do we have over here? 15.5 for Mr. Levy. That was all oh, GTF ref. All right, GT, GFT, man. See, I can't even read. GFT. Actually, you know what? Trey, what up, man? 4.4 over here for Z-Dub. Z-Dub trawl with the 4,000. Nice. I like it. Why I say Mike 160 tree? I don't know. What's a Mike 160 tree? Deep breath, deep breath, yo, for sure. I'm listening to Marlon. Eight days till the bash show. I know it's almost sumo time again, isn't it? 15 days of nonstop streaming. 15 days of just going ham. The bash show. Tedano Fuji and life. Tedano Fuji, you know? Can't wait. Can't wait. Let me make sure I have. Okay, I'm good on Discord. Stuff like that. Huh? Yeah. So they're just, they're taking their time. They're doing a, uh, we got a Vera, a Vera highlight going on that I'm seeing. I'm sure he, 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 we've seen the pick on Twitter. I Maybe. I don't even know if I've seen it or not. At UFC streams on Twitter have been throwing up some really cool clips. Y'all need to be following at you. Uh, by the way, sweeps, exclamation sweeps in chat. Make sure you sign up for International Fight Week. Win, win the trip. Fo yeah, look at at UFC. So exclamation Twitter. Follow you at UFC streams on Twitter to see the best clips from the stream and find out when we go live. Yeet. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's all right. It's all right. You got to make sure you follow at UFC streams. They all right. Exclamation sweeps. Enter to win a VIP trip to UFC 276 in Las Vegas. And enter here, and there is the there is the link. Yeah, no, I think they made weight. I don't know what the 163 is, to be honest. Moderately sized. What up, Jens? In your experience, does getting surgery for your joints to repair tendon ligament damage make it possible to return to peak condition or would that joint ever be the same? I realize there's many variables, but I mean in general. You know, the hardest part is I think it's obviously, right? They, they usually, when it comes to surgery, they, they usually have to take things out or can they repair it, right? Is it something you can repair on your own before before I get cut open, I want to make sure I try to exhaust all options. But if you do decide to get the surgery, I think the hardest part that a lot of people have is the rehab. Yes, it's going to be slow. And yes, it's going to be boring. But you have to do it, right? But there's so many times, oh, no, I feel good. I, no, you know what I mean? You can't. You got to have the patience. to. You got to let it heal. And you have to let it heal correctly. And I think that's usually one of the biggest parts of it when you go through that is, right, is the um, is making sure that you take the time to really allow it to rehab and strengthen, if that makes sense. Huh? 
Casper Rasper 163 is Patty's weight in the minute. Oh, yeah. He was just wrecking Big Mac after his last fight. <laughs> My rotator cuff seems better than before, but I think it I, it had a flaw before. That is why it's messed up. Well, like for me, I was I was. Here's what's ironic: I was on my way to getting back surgery. I was flying to Vegas to get my back fixed when my computer flagged for TNT. Don't ask how. I have no idea. And the all the alarms went off, and. I had to wait. I had to sit there. They had me like they was coming at me with I was all but had to have my clothes. I almost had to be completely naked. Security come running. I had everybody all over me. I'm like, when the alarm went off, I was like, is that bad? She goes, oh, that's bad. I'm like, oh, no can do. So I had to sit there and prove to him I wasn't a terrorist. And it took a while. And I missed my flight. Right. I missed my flight. Well, the doctor had to leave the evening of the next day. So I couldn't get the surgery. The only reason why I say that is my back has never been stronger. Started doing the straight legged overhead. I started working on my core, building it up, and I never had the surgery, and my back is stronger now than it's ever been. Ever. But I made sure at that point I didn't have an I had a I didn't have no other choice. I had to start over. And I literally everything was motion using like a mop handle or a broom handle for overhead squats and building my core, building my core and doing things like that. But I had to start from ground zero, straight legged deadlifts, all that to rebuild it. And now it's never been I've never been stronger. So my point is. It depends on, right? It depends on when, if it's something, if it's torn, then of course it's got to be, you know what I'm saying? But it's not always, surgery is not always the answer, but sometimes it's the only answer. So I guess it's really, you know what I mean? What you're dealing with, what you're going through, and above all, making sure, making sure that you, um, that you uh, take the time to rehab and you got to start over. Start from the beginning. What's that? Inversion table help with core? I don't know. I'll tell you the biggest thing for me, overhead squats with just a, even if you got to use a, 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 a bar, like I said, a broom handle or just the bar and start with overhead squats and straight legged deadlifts, hands down. But then, of course, I squat and all that. But those two things have changed everything, everything for me. Mike Breeden, five first-round finishes, finished eight of ten wins, all knockouts, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu brown belt. Now, here's my question. Are people really coming into the UFC stream asking for illegal illegals? Three crispy. Three crispy with the prime game. Much love and appreciation. All subs go to support the American Cancer Society. When does the fight start? Well, one just walked out, Atomic 1203. One just walked out, Mr. Breeden. Now we're waiting for Mr. Levy. They are shameless. That You know what? I almost want to sing that in my Garth Brooks voice. Because I'm shameless. You know what I mean? Proudly representing Israel. Here he comes. Peaceful. Somber quack. This will be sick, right? Breeden only wins by knockout. Levy only wins by sub. Ooh, sprawling brawl. Oh, do I sing? Oh, I sing all the time. I know you're on a commercial. That's all right. I got you. You know what I mean? What I get to sit there and watch. Like Nathan is standing on our favorite Trojan. Protect yourself at all time. Matt, right now. So, but he's waking. He's about ready to get, get set up. Nathan Levy, three wins by submission. Karate and Kung Fu Black Belt awarded UFC contract on Dana White's Contender Series Season 4. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see. So, 6 1 and 0, 10 and 4. Youngsters. 71 inch reach, 39 inch leg reach. I'm in. Hey, Robinov, stream the fight. How about you just get ESPN Plus? How about you do that? 
get ESPN Plus. You're you're talking to the wrong person. You got to like you do know that you got to go talk to them about streams, not us. There ain't nothing we can do about it. We can't do it, Renat. No, I know. He was asking it a question. That's why I was answering. I wish we could. Maybe, though, if we had like 25,000 people in here at all times, they'd be like, you know what? We're going to give them a Twitch TV. You, we're going to give them a Twitch fight. And then they'll have an entire card made just for Twitch. What? Like I said, help me help you. Help me help you. Five feet, ten inches tall. Ooh, who dropped in the 88,000 on, on Levy? Big Lex money, 87,000 channel points. GG, good luck, everybody. Knives, how you doing? How you doing? See, get ESPN Plus. Fight Pass, follow the UFC Twitch channel and Jens Pulver's channel, and you have fights forever. That's very true. That is true. And sumo. And sumo. I'm watching every fight balling. Ryballing. Yeah, I'm watching them all. Here we go. Here we go. Round one out to the center. Again, another righty versus lefty. I like it. There's no pausing, which can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Nice right leg by Breeden. Breeden is the aggressor. Goes in for a body lock. Trips down. Trips Levy down to the ground. He's going to go into half guard. Ooh, got it pushed up against the fence in a half guard. Here we go. Nice job. Levy wants to work his way up. Possibly try to get up. Now he's going to got to be careful not to give up your back, but he's standing. Pummel back inside. Pummel back inside. I like that, though. Levy's doing a good job. Breeden, I'm sorry. Breeden is doing a good job. Now they're broke. Back to the center. Let's go. Oh, is that a calf? Do we have a calf kick by Levy? I like that. All right, here we go. So now same thing again. See, I like how Breeden's just outside. Levy wants, again, trying to get inside that, trying to find that range, right? Trying to utilize that range. The jab hands by each other, that right leg by Breeden. Now they're back here on the center. Oi, trying to do that. I like that kick. Ooh. Why am I headbutting my mic? I rest on it is what I like to do. I don't know why. I just like resting on it. He went for a high. Levy went for a high kick. Breen tried to pass it by. Levy fell down into a heel hook. He's got a heel hook. Breen trying to fight. You can come up for the calf crusher. Tell me you're going to pop up. Oh, I thought he was going to pop up for it. No can do. Breen worked his way out of it. GG. Why do you want me to? Do, would you? Would it make you feel better if I moved away from the mic? Is that you okay with that? GG. Here we go. We're back on our feet again. Nice inside leg kick there, Levy. I like how Breeden's the aggressor though. Has him out on that warning track, pushed him towards the fence. This is Mike Breeden's first time having a full training camp for the, in two years. Crazy. All right, making his way in. Nice hook. Why are these alarms going off? I got to turn this off. Sorry, my phone. There we go. All right, sorry. I like the the overall aggression by Breeden pushing forward. Levy, we got a, we got a low blow. Oh, 
We gotta do a little breather. Funny to hear Jen's call before the commentators. What do I call? We both do it at the same time. Both do it at the same time. It's accidental. Accidental. So now I feel weird not leaning against my mic. Dang it. I am. I'm just playing. Oh, no. That's not how we do things here. I complain. Huh? I am. I will. Come on. You all know damn good and well. I'm not going to let anybody tell me what to do, but I'm having fun with it. I'm trying to give it a whirl. Go. Oh, I got it on the same. Yeah. All right, here we go. Nice catch. Try to throw it by. Goes in for the takedown. Aggression just missed. All right. Levy's ready to go. Braden pushing forward. Three punch combo. Four punch. Try to go low. Dang. Levy trying to throw upstairs. Braden got out of the way, but woo, those were coming hot. Yeah, I am going to do me. Push, push, push down. I got him taken down. Now he switched right over for that leg again. Nice job, Levy. Going for the heel hook. They're rolling around. He's got it locked up a little better this time. Oh, but look at Breeden getting out of it. GG. All right, here we go. Back on our feet. Big one, two. Big one, two for Levy. Nice. Oh, nice left leg kick. Nice left leg kick by Levy. And I like that idea. Look at that. That one, two. Popping that right hand. Breeden, though, with the aggression, has Levy pushed up against, back towards the fence. Well, I guess on that outside track. You know what I mean, chat? And then he's just standing up, just keep walking him down. I like that. Throwing the combination. There you go. Back and forth on the punches. Oh, good right hand lands on the ear of Breeden. Nice, nice. He throws an inside leg kick, and Breeden throws three punches. Levy drops in for a single, trips him down, takes his, takes his back. Breeden's on all four, going to try to stand up. There you go. Now we're in that, we got that, he's got that position, he's got it locked around the waist. Tripped him down, he's got him tripped down, going to grab an inside wrist control. Nice, Levy's got inside wrist control, throws the knee. I like how he's trying to throw knees on that side. Now they're up against the fence, so he's going to have to go back, go cross body. Short time, short time. He's over on the other side, throwing knees. Breeden's going to try to stand up. Levy's got the wrist. Let's go. Tries to kick him in the face on the release. GG. Nice. Woo! 10-9 Levy for you. You know, I'll tell you what. Shot tray, though. Shot tray. I'm going to call you shot. Yeah, shot tray. Show tray. Shot Ray Ito. I'm going to call you Shot Trey. All right, Shot Trey. I like that. 10 9 for Levy. Do you think at the end he got it? Because I'll tell you what, Breeden was, Breeden was pretty aggressive. But, and here's why you look at the three takedowns, 13 significant strikes. But, ah, you know, with two, mm, yeah, I like it. I like it to Levy. We'll see. They're both throwing, though. It's been a good fight. I'm trying to think of what they could say or do, like why they would be. Breeden, but sometimes, you know, these these judges, they, they've wowed us all. They have wowed us all with some of their uh, big Lex money, 87,000. All right, here we go. Second round. Here we go. And second round. There we are. And everything else, we're good. See, I love it. Watch the fingers. Told you, chin down, hands up, fingers. Chin down, hands up, fingers. Look at Breeden coming in, throwing six, seven punch combination right there. Levy's able to push him off. Oh, look at that. He tried to throw that. I don't know what you call that kick. That karate, that, that, that back whoosh, kind of a kick, but he got countered with three punches after. Oh, he dipped down for a single leg. GG, Levy gets the takedown. Nice. Man, he just changed level right underneath. Breeden was throwing punches underneath, picked up the single, was able to take him down. Nice job. Now they're over against the fence trying to work it off. He's got one leg in, standing up. Now they're just trying to, he's going to try to wrestle him back to the floor. Breeden's doing a good job of trying to get back up, but Levy wrestles him down. Maybe he doesn't throw in a leg. He's just sitting off to the right. 
Got him standing up again. Now they're trying to fight the hands. Levy's going to try to nice little bump down. He's going to try to take his. Is he going to try to go after that neck? Not yet. Not yet. Tell you what, though, Breeden's doing a good job of getting right back up to his feet. So a knees to the thigh, knees to the thigh. I like it. He's just, he's not really doing a whole lot, right? He's just kind of sitting there being heavy, making Breeden. Breeden's got to do all the moving. Levy trips him down, throws in a single. And now Breeden's got to work his way back up. This has got to get tiring, man. He's got to be, like, he's going to stand him up. And then Levy drops him right back down to the floor. It's just, it's got to be horrifying. Spend all that energy to get up. He's trying to fight the hands. Levy's doing a great job on the backside, changing up the grip a little bit, looking to trip him down. Breeden worked his way in, is now facing him, has double underhooks. Now has put Levy up against the fence. Yo, what up, City Funk? How you do? How you do? Now they're sitting at over under position. And that's it. Now he's got that underhook, the head in the pocket. Levy's got good control of the hand. It like keeps away. Nobody's been able to throw any kind of punches. Breeden's going to try to take Levy's back right here, but they're both standing. The fence gets in the way. There we go. Now they're back up. They're both on their feet. I'm I'm serious about the fatigue factor. No. Nice left leg. Levy throws the left leg to Breeden's liver. Blocked. He went in. He took a shot in for like a, a low a double, and then worked his way back up the body. Now they're sitting in over under position. I like it. Got the overhook. See that head though. If you notice, Breen's doing a good job of shoving that head in the pocket. Makes it so uncomfortable. Steps back, rips a couple of punches. Levy tried to throw one left in there, and then. Yeah, that's pretty much how you do it right there. That's pretty much how you get yourself banned right there. Unreal. All right, here we go. Look at Breeden walking forward, throwing the shots. Boom, boom. Oh, who's going to try to put this in? Breeden wants it, but now here comes Levy. Levy's fighting back. Breeden, did that liver shot get him? He did not just try to spin that kick off. Oh, that was crazy. Oh, Breeden, short. did he get him in the liver? Because now Levy's all over him, throwing the shots, throwing a leg in. Breeden looks like he's just run out of gas. Yep, he got hit in the body. My man's like, nope, I'm going to have to come over here. So he's sitting on all fours. He's got to try to recover. Levy's on top, not throwing a leg in, but just keeping that top position, throwing shots. There you go. GG brings him down, throws it, not going to throw in the leg. I like that, though. Every time he stands up, Levy just throws him right back to the floor. It's got to be so tiring. Now he's got a right leg in. He's going to start working on the neck of Breeden. Levy's showing patiently. Breeden is beat up, man. He can't do it. I think he's, look, he worked his way up. He's standing up again. Levy's got the body lock. Going to look to try to trip him down. Oh, now good job. Good job. Breeden still hand fighting. Breeden hand fighting. Going to pummel. Try to pummel in. Get that underhook. Levy's got the head in the pocket. Still has to push up against the fence. Break. Now they're making their way back to the center. Here we go. Now Breeden's starting to come forward, throwing the punches. He tried to throw maybe a, a possible liver shot right there. Tying. GG. GG. What? I missed the first fight. Was the finish good? Yeah. Dominant. It was dominant, I guess. Breeden is done, though. You have to put some power on him and knock him out. Cross is like, you're gonna have to put some power on him. Did you bet on Levy? Oh, there you go. Ah, look at them war. Them war co. GG. We got big points over here. We've got 17 Sherg's sure, input, 17,000 channel points. Over here for Mr. Breeden, we've got 87, 999 Big Lex money. Disrespect him. Disrespect him. I get it. I get what he's saying. All right, here we go. Get ready. Round three. 
Yes, he did. Look at me, effer. Look at me, effer. Disrespect this effer. A lot of F words. See, there it was. Kicked him in the liver. Kicked him in the liver. That's it. That left to the liver, even though it was the foot. That's what Breeden was messed up by right there, right? Boom. Kicked him again. Levy, I think he got through with that kick, but it was more blocked. Here comes the busy hands of Breeden. Oi. Here we go. Those shots, that left leg, though, that he slides in really quick. Busy hands by Breeden, pushing Levy back. Levy goes for a double. Breeden stands him up, says, no can do, partner. Here we go. I like how Breeden's walking straight at him. He's trying to phone booth him. Oh, yeah, Nash. If he takes it down, for sure. Look at that. Nice trip on the foot. GG. That was a sick little trip to knock Breeden off balance. Now he's got the lock, but he's got to make sure he doesn't. He's got to make sure he has the lock, right? You can't force it too much because then you get punched by Breeden can catch you with a kick. But right here. Oi. Look at that. Now they're right there. So now you got busy hands by Breeden going back in and throw. And I love it because Levy's trying to just counter with that straight left. Moving on the outside track along the fence. Throws the right. Breeden's still in his face. Goes in for a single. But Breeden does a great job of sprawling out of it. So Levy tried to sit back. Breeden walked away. Now he comes back in throwing right, left to the body. Breeden's going after the body. But two shots back by Levy. Takes a deep breath. Levy takes a deep old breath. Breeden's going to try to push it. Levy goes in on a single. He's going to sit there. He's going to try to drive and sit on that leg. Breeden kicks away and gets that. That's two failed attempts. That's a lot of conditioning going. That's a lot, man. When you start failing those failed takedowns, it takes a lot out of you. Breeden's right back in his face. Breeden's in. He's giving it all. So that, that pep talk by Kraus must have worked, right? Levy is, Levy is done. He's already looking at the clock. Oh, he leaned right into it. Did that knee get him? It kind of dropped him. Breeden caught him with the knee because Levy's too far apart when he's trying to shoot for this takedown with no kind of set. He's just trying to meld into it. Ran into a knee. He's already wanting to be on the ground and butt scoot. He's dead tired. Breeden has to see this. Get in his face and make it ugly. Push it. Push him, Breeden. Breeden's going to just keep making him throw. Come on. Keep going. Push, push. Body, body. Breeden, Levy tries to grab the head. He peels him off. He is so tired. Levy tried to drop down for a single. It can't do it. You got to just walk him down, Breeden. Stop looking at the clock. Go and tell the bell. Go and tell the bell until he falls. You got to melt him. Look at Breeden. Stare. Levy wants that clock. There you go. One, two. Take a deep breath. Levy tries to throw back. Whoop. Oh, there you go. Body shot. Right, left. Backed him up. Levy's backed up against the fence. Tries to drop down for a single. No can do. Breeden's got the sprawl. Now, you need to stay right there, Breeden, and beat on that body. No can do. He stands up. My man's got his back against the fence again. This is a lot of talking. A lot of talking. Here we go. Boom. Left leg to the head means nothing. Breeden ignored it. Walked in. Look at that. Right to the body. Left to the head. Body, body. Here we go. Oh. No, Levy trying to walk away. We still got a lot of time left. Levy trying to move away. Breeden trying to walk him down. Levy threw one shot. Big elbow by Breeden. Breeden pushed him up against the fence. Ripping body shots. I'll give Levy this, man. My man is reaching into the end, the reserve tank for everything he's got. He is so tired. You want to know? You want to know when time is the slowest? Right now, if you're Levy, I promise you that clock is moving so slow to him. It, this is misery. There he goes. He tries to throw a double jab left hand. Breeden walks right through it, throws an elbow. Good left hand! Good left hand by Levy. Stumbles Breeden and backs him up. Oh, he tries to go for the big kick, but he's too tired to do anything about it. Goes in on a single leg. Has him up against the fence. He needs to try to peel it off. Breeden's going to try to push down on the head. Levy cannot reach across to turn this into a double. He's bent over, pushed up against the fence, doing what he can do to try to kill some time. Oh, he's got the foot up. He's got the single leg up. He's got to try to trip, but he's got no energy. No energy. Yo, Breeden fights it off. Here we go. Short time, short time. Big one, two by Levy. Another left, right, left by Levy. Yo. Oh, deep kick to the belly hole by Levy. Here we go. Breeden, I don't know if Breeden's got it back. It took a lock out of him. They're standing right in the center. Breeden backs up a little bit. Oh, we got, wait, what just happened? All right, now we've got, Breeden's got his back standing up like he ducked underneath him. Ducked underneath him. 
Now he's got to push up against the fence. He tries to break away. Oi! Here we go. They're trying to stay busy. Two combinations, two punches. They're both. Wow! Leave it in the... No! That was nuts! I don't know. I, I would have... That had to go back to Levy, I think, after hurting him. But he is so tired. So tie tie. Oh, my man is done so. Oh, we shall see, chat. We shall see. He couldn't do it at the end, though, right? My man was so tired. He couldn't do it. Buddy, I had him hurting the body one in, in the other round. I mean, it's, we got to be levy, right? We got to be levy. Yeah, that was a great fight by both of them. Breeden was trying to push until he got hurt at the end there. That hook just dropped him. Did you know UFC Fight Night is presented by Modelo? Yeah. Yep. Here we go. Trying to hit that UFC win call. Here we go, chat. Twenty nine twenty eight. Twenty nine twenty eight and thirty twenty seven. So you know it has to go. It has to go to Levy. And at thirty twenty seven, Levy. Levy with the unanimous. Eighty three humble with the prime game. Much love and appreciation. All subs go to support the American Cancer Society. So who is asking for the uh next fight? Next fight, Mr. Green. There we go. This is redemption for the last time. Dustin Poirier followed through on his 20,000 donation to Charles Olivier to support the youth in Brazil. GG. Nice. I decided to wait till next week to get fight night. Wow. I'm just listening to the interview. Selling a fight kit. Yeah, Levy won. Iden. Iden, 17 10. Levy won. Unanimous. Unanimous. I was hurting. I was tired. He looked like he was tired. You know what I'm saying? He looked like he was fatigued. Fatigued. That's the correct decision? I would say it is. Don't You don't think it is? It seems correct to me. GG on the, on the points, especially the big points by Big Lex Money. GG on the channel points, my friend. Oh, dang. How's everybody doing out there? YouTube. YouTube. The book of the Facebook. Twitter. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing all right? Huh? The left hook. That left hook. Oh, but that left right there, that foot got him. Little liver shot. Remember to follow at UFC Streams. All of you out there. Follow at UFC Streams on Twitter to see the best clips. And they're pretty dang good. They haven't disappointed yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and, and to find out when we go live. What? Live. You can watch who every week on YouTube. See, look at that. You see how that goes out the back? That's why I got to have pro backs. So we got a little countdown. We got another the, the font countdown. 
Oh, we're working on it. Look at we're getting it. The mullet's yeah, man. The mullet's happening. Deal with it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, we're in the back. We're partying in the back. It's running. It's running. I just don't like how it bumps out the back of the hat. You know what I'm saying? But my for kicking myself. Ah, you all right, Linda? You got it. You got it. Dude, Simone, Sim, Simon, man, his his mullet is no joke. I'm going back in, and there are things I'm about to do differently to mine after winning. But I got curly hair, so I'm going to have to do something. I need an iron. <laughs> iron it down. Also, can watch on your devices. It's nice. If I need to walk the dog, I can switch from PC to phone and have both. <laughs> Do you get any analysis on this fight right here, gents? What? Do I got any? Only because, no, it just depends. So on Fridays, on Fridays, right, at 6 p.m. Eastern, we break down a lot of the fights of fighters fighting, but they're usually on the main card. So I'm just going into this one especially. I haven't really seen, I haven't seen a lot about either one of them. So this is me getting to watch them right here, right now. Is the first thing, you know what I mean? And then I'll just make an adjustments as I go. You know what I mean? But, like, I'm trying to figure out maybe, like, if we did on Wednesday, we could find some of the undercard fights or something and maybe do more then. You know, there's just so many things. So many things we can do. Or coulda, woulda, shoulda. You know, so what we're doing is, uh, that's, we got it. We'll wrap with the mods. They're pretty good with the ideas, so we'll have to see. Can you do what? Can you do an old-timey voice for the next fight? You know, like the old-timey boxing radio commentaries? Yeah, no. Nah, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. The Real Good Murph. Yee! With the three months, much love and appreciation. To the American Cancer Society. Much love. And then we got all kinds of craziness for the. We got the pay per view coming up next week, so there's going to be madness, and that might be a breakdown. A lot of the breakdowns of the, the fight. See, maybe on Wednesday, so many things. But we got a big one. I don't even know who my my peoples are for the watch along, but so we got a big weekend coming up next weekend too. So um, you need some old time catchphrases. I don't. I can't be messing with no accent though. You know. I don't know. I will have to figure it out. I got to make my own. I mean, I got to just, I got to be evil. I got to be evil, you know? I'm going to go make my way over here real quick and have a gander. So I'm going to use my phone. I'm going to check on the, uh, ooh, we got Twitter. What we got going on with the twi with Twitter? Nice. At UFC streams, making my way downtown. Oh, look at that. We are live. Retweet. See, are you over there at UFC Streams chat? At UFC Streams on Twitter? Then you share it? Well, everybody just needs it. We got to, I want to make this, we got to be, we got to let it ride. We got to get bigger. You know what I'm saying? What? I'll do a watch song with the gents. It can be Jen so-and-so from the UFC and the guy from Oregon. <laughs> well, when I'm in Oregon, we can say what's up. For sure. Love the throwback ping pong tweet, right? I know. They cracked me up. Now we're trying to work on because they got a little, they, we got downtime. I'm trying to find. Let me get to, so I'm going to see what my YouTube chat's doing. I'm not going to read it though. Okay, I might read it, maybe. Speaking of. I have to clean that. Speaking of cooking, cooking, cooking. That's a coming. Huh? Love the throwback ping pong tweet. Yeah. Did, oh, I just seen the, uh, look at that. It is so weird seeing me like that. Here we go. Here we go. Making our way. If you, if you threw car keys at green, he couldn't see nor catch him. He got his eyes fixed. So, Gabriel Green, Johan Lanus, eight no, six wins by knockout, and Green can see. That'd be crazy. How could you fight like that? You know what I mean? Beforehand. That's nuts.
Johan Lanus. I like that. I can say that better. Right? But to be that, that's crazy. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. But now he can see. So I'm up, I'm up for that. All right. There you go. Me looking down looks bad. All right. That's with my phone. We need some. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, we'll find out. We'll find out the debut. So we got a minute. Let's see where we're at. Oh, you know what? And then I do something like this. So let me click. Boom. Let's see where we're at on our predictions. Gabriel Green, 28,000. Natural born thriller throwing 28,000 channel points. Yee-hee! What? All right. G- Look at that. Trey. Trey over here throwing 19,785 channel points. I like it. First ever UFC event on ESPN, ESPN Plus, Brooklyn, New York, Brooklyn. Is Yanez still coming though? I'm sure at some point he might, they might wiggle their way in. You know, we got to see what's happening. Maybe, maybe not. We shall see. How do I, how do I say I don't like watching you do this without saying I don't like watching you do this? Is Yanez? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, he should be around for sure. All right, I got to get something. I'm drinking, though. Drink this water. Y'all have your water? Oh, breaking it down. You got to hydrate. Hydrate. Always have that, that water next to you. I mean, I have my coffee and my water. But you got to have that. Keep that water with you at all times. Got to have that hydration. Got to hydrate, right? We got to do it. Celebrating the 100th UFC fight night. That's crazy. Jens Pulver, what are the perks of becoming a VIP of the Twitch channel? Like if I ever managed to have more than 100,000 channel points and paid for the VIP, is there anything cool for that? Or is it just like, good job, bro? I don't know. I'll let the mods tell you. 100 fight nights. I'm stuck listening to the fact they've had 100 fight nights. 39 cities visited, 53 events at UFC Apex, five UFC championship fights, and countless special moments. How is VIP? I don't even know. Time out. Time out, Anglewood. I like that one. 38, 36,000. Bragging rights. Only one person here on VIP so far. Elite company. There you go. See, you're in bragging rights and you're in elite company. Only one person has done it. You know what I'm saying? Look at this. Boom. Boom. That left hook when Lanise just rickrolled Burleson with that left hook. Boom. Right hand, left hook. Ooh-wee. Pretty much good job, and thank you so much for hanging with us for as long as you have. That's about, that's what I would say it is. Thank you. You know what I mean? Johan Lane is trying to stay undefeated, chat. Johan Gabe Green. Yeah, I know. I'm like, now they're doing an intro, intro. What's that? Oh, wow. It's a long time. They're just chilling, so I just keep rapping with you. Huh? I have my water hiding in my Guinness Extra Stout and my H2O. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I get it. You got to do that. You have your water and your Guinness and your coffee and, you know what I mean? They're just You got to have different cups for each one. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Bradshaw. Yo, Romanoff or Sherman. Who you got, Jens? You know, I like Sherman. I like it as Sherman. And I think he's going to be smaller, too. But we'll have to see. But I like it as Sherman. I like him.
He's making his way out right now. Lanise is making his way out right now. That's, you know. He wants to be undefeated. Sherman win would be nuts. I know. It'd be cool. I like Sherman. He's got to be the smaller one, too, isn't he? Romanoff is massive, but I like Sherman. We'll have to see. What? Now, now if it's bragging rights and a mini desk belt signed by Jens, all right. Johan, undefeated UFC debut, former CFFC welterweight champion, awarded a UFC contract on Dana White Contender Series Season 5, Week 10. Season 5, Week 10. Uh, having a bragging rights, a mini desk belt signed by Jens. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah, I like this bad boy. I like this. I'm going to take that. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to probably put it about right there. And then it's just going to be tattooed. I'm just going to do the whole thing right there. My desktop belt. Twitch TV slash UFC right there. Come in. Give Cejudo his belt back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> is that the belt for the underground preschool? No, that's the uh, what? No, that's the uh, Winston and the rest of the Pomeranians. It's whoever wins gets the belt. They have to have. They got to have scraps in the. We put them in the in the rabbit cage, and they just start. Whoever wins. Easter Jens Pulver the Rabbit and no, I'm just kidding. They actually just sit there and they, they're ridiculous. Both of them. All right, Gabe Green won seven of last eight fights, finished nine of ten wins, three knockouts, six submissions, five first round finishes. UFC looking great. Indian, any Indian fighter, Indian fighter anytime. Man, my teeth will not let me. Indian fighter anytime soon. Like, are they going to be on the card? I only know this card. Then I'll worry about, then I'll think about the next card on what? Probably on Wednesday, we'll start breaking down the card. Monday, we'll, we'll recap everything that happened today, and we'll have an interview. I meant to say Indian, but my, see, my, these braces mess with my teeth so bad, I can't even say Indian. They mess with me. Plus, they like, yeah, it's not bad. And it's getting time to pull them again, to tighten them again. Like I just got, it just started getting settled. And then it's, you know, they're going to have to pull on them. And I'm like, ah, so. Johan Landis is the underdog, undefeated underdog. But we got 22,000 channel points, says otherwise, by Shirk Zim and 48 others. Eight wins, no losses. Six one, one seventy. He's got size. He's got size. Oi. I haven't no, and I don't know. I don't want to bump my teeth. I'm supposed, I'm gonna start wrestling. I'm gonna go to wrestling practice, but yeah, no, I'm not ready to bump my teeth when they're sensitive like that. No can do. Don Chapo, how you do, Chapo? It does hurt. When your teeth are first getting moving around, I'll guarantee it hurts. You bet on the wrong one? Don't start with me on that. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Again, right back to the center. Look at that. I like Green on the outside. He's got faster footwork, kind of moving around, right? Lanise is just kind of sitting there right in the center. 
Ooh, nice right leg. Nice right leg. Yeah, I know. I'm not leaving this earth without straight teeth once. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. We're doing great. Look at that. See, now we got righty versus lefty all day. I mean, we've had righty versus lefty almost every fight. I think every fight has been a righty versus lefty. It's good to see so many. I am on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. What's up? How's everybody doing? See, now he said his depth perception is different. It's crazy. I don't see the YouTube chat, though. That's the problem. So that's why they need to come over here, Twitch TV slash UFC, and jump on in. The water's fine. It'll be good. I mean, or you can stay there, but you just can't see what you're saying. So here we go. I like the quick the quick feet by, by Green. Moving on the outside, trying to move around. But Lannis is just throwing kick, a lot of kicks, right? Double jab from the end. Both trying to figure out how they're going to get inside. They're trying to figure out that range, right? Dang it. Sorry. Sorry about that. There's your stats. My fat. My fault. I like, you know, the thing is, oh, he just rushed at him. Big right hand, then a left hook by Lenise. Then he throws the right leg. He ran right at him. Dang, this guy, he's like, I'm going to just go ahead and go right after you for these shots real quick. Took a deep breath. But I like the movement of Green. I like how he's moving out here. See, it's like, look at that. Lanise just loads up and runs at you. Ah, and then just fires that right hand left hook. Coming back at him again. And then he, now he's going to sit back and wait. Then he changes up his stance a little bit. Throws the right leg. Green's out of the way. But it's funny, man, when, when Lanise decides he's going to run and hit you with that right hand. He just runs at you like the club. Ah. Goes right at him. But I like the movement of Green. He's just got to figure out. He's doing a lot of side to side, which is great. Try to figure out how to get inside and get in range so he can land something. You know, but again, look at that. That right hand to the belly hole by Lanise. Teep kick. And then here comes Green chasing after him. Lanise grabbed the back of that head for me. Like, get over here. I want to have that snap down. Leg kick by Green. Conditioning is so important. Yeah, no, it's the most. Yeah, it's the most important thing out there. Period. Oh, look at that. I like them. That's what I'm saying. That's why I like the movements of Green. He's doing a good job. He's all over. On the outside, Lanise goes in for a double leg, push him up against the fence, slams him down, gets the takedown. Now he's gonna pass the guard. We got half guard. Lanise just said, "Forget it," and just in man with power. Just pushed him against the fence, lifted him up, took him down, got him in half guard. That's the one thing I noticed. When Lanise, when Lanise decides he's going forward, he just, he'll just club you with the hand or the way he just powered that takedown. That was something. Now he's going to lock up a guillotine. We're going to lock up a guillotine. I just jumped from the YouTube, and that stressed grad is why I love you. That is why I love you, stressed grad. I appreciate you being on the YouTube as well. No shame in the game, but good to have you. Welcome. <laughs> Love it. Hi. We're on here all the time. 6 p.m. Eastern. All right, here we go. So now we're back to the center doing this again. See, I love that. I mean, boy, when he loads up Lanise, man, you can't run from him mentally. Lanise is throwing big shots, Nash. And that's the one thing I like about it. But again, you've got Green. He's, he's not bouncing as much. He's kind of standing in front, but I would be worried too. Like he's throwing the lighter punches. He'll throw six or seven light shots and Lanise will just throw one massive hammer. Like that big lunging lead hook, that huge right hand he just threw, the teep kick. He's, I mean, and that's like, he's like, he's that, he's that, that, uh, that monster truck just in, in that granny low, just moving, uh, just powering through everything. I like that. Nice lead hook, taking a deep breath. Did you see that? Deep breath solo. And here we go. Green's pushing it, though, because that's the one thing I like about Green is he's right in his face, but those power, those bigger shots by Lanise. Short time, short time. Oh, hey, look at looking. Good round, good round. Who's got 50K over here on Mr. Green? Natural born chiller with the 50,000, 50,000. 
What up, man? How you do, Kaizen FT Dub? Kaizen. Hopefully I said it right. Yo, what up, Jack? Since when you got braces? Huh? Good on you, Jens. Rocking the Frank Shamrock look right there? No, I'm rocking the Jens Pulver look. I ain't trying to... I'm nobody. I'm me, man, period. What a full-time show. But, yeah, no, I had I got braces because I'm not... Um, I'm not... Uh, I'm not leaving this earth without having straight teeth once. I just decided to wait till after I was fighting, right? And now I'm gonna get him. Now I'm gonna get him cleaned up. But yeah, no, I wanted to have straight teeth once in my life. I'm not gonna get that middle tooth fixed. I want to keep that broken because that's a the story is just way too awesome. So, but other than that, yes. Now much love, Jack. I hope you well. Um, but yeah, no, I wanted to get my teeth fixed. Had to happen. I'm shooting for 215 pounds. I'm going to get as muscular as possible, a mullet, and braces. What? Here we go. Every week is fight week on UFC Fight Pass. That's what I said. Nice. All right, here we go. Green's coming after him. Yo, Lanise has got the power punches. What? You can still tell the story after you fix the tooth? No way. Why? Nobody would ask. No one's going to ask, why is, why is your tooth broken? And that's when the smile. Well, that'd be like telling me to get my ears fixed. No way. There we go. Look at Green, though, pushing forward. See, Green with the busier hands. He's got it. See, you notice how after he kind of gets in, he waits because he knows those big punches of Lanise are coming. Lanise tried to get a takedown, but Green pulled him up. Now he went for a bylock. Green is starting to take over. Lanise is starting to fold a little bit, in my opinion. Except with that huge right hand that he just threw. What a monster right hand that dropped Green. Now Lanise is going to go ahead and try to... Counter up. Green is going to try to get his guard. Lanise is in side control. Did you see how hard he threw that? My man, like he was throwing a baseball. Good Lord, that shot was nuts. And that is why Green is nervous about getting inside and exchanging with Lanise because Lanise is bringing massive, massive, big power shots. And Green is trying to do more of the BB gun. And my man Lanise is firing a cannon, if that makes sense. So, but he's back on his feet. Here we go. We're back up. We're moving around. That was a pitch. That, that was literally, I mean, my man fired that thing Nash so hard. That was a straight pitch that he landed. That was crazy. And it dropped Green to the floor. There we go. Now he's trying to spin off an elbow. But see, so Green's got to make sure he keeps moving. And he's got to, if he's going to have the busier hand, but he's got to make sure he gets out of the way. After he throws his punches and get out of there. Now Lanise is trying to throw, shoot him for a takedown. Failed. Green tried to spin around behind. No can do because my man Lanise blocked it. But Green went for a Kimura. And now we got north-south position. Lanise on top. Lanise is just the strong. seems to be the more powerful fighter. Just in general. Just seems to be the more powerful fighter. He can like he's just able to muscle. He's muscling Green over. And... You know, that's the one thing is Green was, Green was, this was the problem. Lanise was struggling and really needed a takedown. Green just messed this up by trying to go around his back, but he reached out and caught him. You got to make sure you peel that hand down. Now Lanise has got his back. Nice transition. Green gave it up, gave up the mount, went into half guard. Going to try and peel it off. He's going to get back to his feet. This is going to be a fun scramble. They're up. Now we'll see. Lanise has got to be melted. Got to be melted right now. Oh, big right hand. Lanise taking a deep breath. Green, you got to push it. You got to push it. You got him tired. Look at it. But man, that boy can throw. Lanise throws just nothing but a heavy shot. Man, even his jab, he throws everything with it. That's crazy. Green is trying to go in there, get side to side. Stay in his face. Stay in his face. Deep kick to the belly hole. Look at deep breath. All Lanise wants to do is take a deep breath. Green, you got to push this. Oh, let's, man, I can't believe how heavy Lanise punches are. It's just ridiculous. Nice jump knee by Green. Move around. Oh, now you got to kick. See, now you got to make him capitalize when he misses Green. You got to do when he's tired. Look at nice combination. There you go. Punches and bunches. Body shot, body shot, body shot by Green. Pushes Lanise off. Put him over against Vince. Another right to the body. Dropped him. Sitting on top of him. My man's curled up. Curled up, folded. He's 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 fetaled, fetaled against the fence. Big shots by Green. Put him down. Somebody has a conditioning issue. 
Nice job, Green. Way to push it. Had to push it. But I'll tell you what, man. The problem about Lanise and that power, could you imagine if he actually had the cardio, if he had the gas for that kid to, to roll that for to roll that bus? Good lord. Kid's a battle bus. Yeah, I'm throwing a Fortnite in there. You know what I mean? But look at he just teed off on a ripping body shots. Right, right, right. Boom. Green just put the work on him. But you know what I mean? That's the one thing about conditioning. Conditioning beat wins everything. It's conditioning no matter what. And that was the thing. He just had to. Yeah, he finished him. He finished him, brower. Just he look, he pushed his face up against the against the cage. It was just ripping body shots. Bam! You know what I mean? Nah, he's not. You know, Nick, here's the thing. He's not he, he's not, you know what I mean? Here's here's his issue. One, he's in the UFC. I don't care what you say. That's going to take a toll on your cardio. It's just going to, the nerves, right, Ty guy? The nerves and everything like that. That's just going to get a hold of you. And, yeah, those are kidney shots on that right side. Right hand to the kidney, just blasting it. But the other thing is, was he, was, he threw those heavy shots, really, really heavy punches. But, right, but... And he almost, he, when he threw that baseball, he had him, but just conditioning. And maybe this could have been all nerves. Like you said, Drek, those octagon jitters, maybe. But that's why you just got to be in super, super, super shape. Super shape. Um, green, green finished him. Green finished him. Dropped him. Put him against the fence and just mounted up and blasted him. Saturday, Olivieta and Gaethje. Nama Yunus, Esparza, 2, Saturday, May 7th, 10 p.m. Eastern. What do we also got? gonna be a heck of a card heck of a card 155 pounder with the 150 the godfather watching and breaking them down i love it when it's a lightweight when it's a lightweight main event tko look how tired lanice is so tired so tired nice job green um and then, well, that's the other thing, Nash. The other thing what happens is when you've got a limited gas tank and then you start wrestling and you start adding that into it and you start squeezing on submissions and you start, you know what I mean, squeezing and that, well, I'm going to, I can't say it because there's too many experts in here, but the lactic acid that gets in there and really starts to, that's the conditioning that doesn't come back. The cardio, you can take a rest for a minute, slow it down and bring it back up. But when you get those muscles dead tired and you start bringing in the wrestling aspect of it, that's a different kind of right in the video game world. That's that that stamina bar, like the white part that moves in and out and always recovers. But the stamina bar, when it gets half, that's all that wrestling, right? And that's what happened. He just was done. I can't believe it. My man picked it up at the right time. That was beautiful. Beautiful. Just pounding on him, pounding on him. Now we've got... He's got 20-20 vision. So here we go. Look at this. This kid is the... This Lacerda... Is 01 and 0, and the sniper Francisco Figueiredo. Both 5'6, 125s. I like he can see, which is cool. My man was fighting without being able to see. Get out of here. And see, that's the one thing when it comes to the main card that I love is. Um, because we broke down all those fights. So I'm like, oh, Jotko, Mearshart, yay. You know what I mean? Yep, so we got Daniel Lacerda, Francisco Figueiredo, Alexander Romanov, Chase Sherman. Thirty-eighth UFC appearance. Orlovsky. Good lord. Orlovsky. Jared Flash Gordon and Grant Dawson. Jared's won three in a row. So we've got Jared Gordon winning three in a row. You know what I mean? Um, what? 
Did his opponent come in with a cartwheel at the weigh-in? Oh, I don't know. I didn't watch it, that. What is that? Hold on. Above. Above all. What? Word is Romanov wins via first round. TKO, KO, sub. What? Oh, yeah? Huh. I heart doggies. What? You are really good at this chance? Oh, get out of here. Your pronunciations are awesome as well. Well, if you're being serious, then thank you very much. I appreciate that. And no, I love what I'm doing. I have a blast hanging in here with all of you. It's, it's cool. But these braces tend to mess me up sometimes. Like, I got to make sure I... You know. <laughs> Where's Adrian? You can yell in your Rocky voice, Yo, Adrian! Right? I don't know. I can't. I can't. I can't. You see what I'm doing? I'm sitting right here. I can't. I can try to hunt them down. <laughs> I'm sure they got things going on. Maybe they'll show up at the last part of the the last part of the card. I don't know. Hey man, you can take the horse to water. You just can't make him drink. I ain't nothing I can do. You know, but that's one thing. So tied second la latest finish in UFC history, round three, four fifty nine for Santos. You remember that with one second left in the fight, he got the sub. That is sick. Huh? Don't do that. See, he'll be in soon. Like, I'm probably just supposed to be the one. Like, I wouldn't even get up to go to the bathroom. Because I'm like, oh, I don't want y'all to sit here. So I'll wait. Very happy that he made this move. What move did he make? O A T T. Now he's A T T. I like it. You have a, a unique style with serious understanding. Thanks for doing it. No, thank you. Like I said, thank all of you for being here with me. I love it. I enjoy this stuff. I just got to mute. I mute the the fights and just watch them in silence, and off we go. Oh, and one, what the heck is that record? He lost his first fight in the UFC is probably what it means. Or is that his record in general? Well, no, because Fran Francisco Figueroa, he's 12-4 and one. He hasn't fought that many times in the UFC. He's 11 and two. All right. Is it that this other one's been fighting? That he's had that many fights. Dang. What's that? You can still watch with sound. No, I don't listen to the uh, commentators. So I just I listen to I just watch it in silence. They're gonna they, it'll mess me up. Yo, Chevelle, do I read chat, YouTube comments? Pissed as f right now. Why are they mad? What's YouTube mad about? YouTube, why are you mad? But it's not logical. They put Figueiredo all-time record. Yeah, okay, see, so that's why. <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that. Um, but you know what I'm saying? So I don't, yeah, I know. YouTube, YouTuber! They're all, they're mad though. But, but I told you what you gotta do. Come over here. Twitch TV slash UFC. Twitch TV slash UFC. Drop in and start chatting. I'll be like, yo, what's up? How you do? But otherwise, I have to be, I'm here. And I appreciate all of you watching. But you also need to. Huh? What's that? Oh. <laughs> Because I love YouTube chat, but I'm afraid of YouTube chat. See, that's the biggest thing. I'm afraid of YouTube chat. YouTube chat scares me. I can handle I can handle Twitch chat, but YouTube chat, they scare me. That's why you've never seen me go live. Oh, look at that Jens Pover MMA on YouTube. Mm -hmm, scared to death. Hell no, I'm scared of y'all. I can do it here. Y'all, y'all, I'll tell you, like, do you know back in the day, 
I used to have like, oh man, I had over almost, I don't even know, 200, 100, well over 200, I think 200,000, close, something on Instagram and stuff. And I deleted it and I got, I was banned off, off Twitter for a long time. And I was, I'm not even allowed to be near Facebook. Facebook isn't even, I'm not even allowed. In fact, I still probably, I don't even know why I don't delete Facebook in general. And because I had a hard time when it came to um, uh, comments, I like, it would really mess me up. So it, it is weird that I managed to come back into Twitch streaming of all things. And only because 8K Snoo pushed it. I said, all right, fine, fine, I'll do it. But you got to be my bodyguard. So 8K Snoo is my is my bodyguard, and uh, so then I started learning how to deal with it. Cause I used to have it like I used to have an issue. I wanted to, I wanted to literally, I wanted addresses, and that's how bad it was at one point. I wanted everybody that said something negative. I wanted addresses. I wanted to show up. It was it was nuts, man. And then the problem is like I'll still let one negative comment just completely ruin this kick ass who have all this cool stuff going on and that one negative will be the one and you're like man you know and it just shit in my cheerios and it <laughs> so but i've learned a lot i've learned a lot since then and it's i love it um yeah yeah you remember that jack all right but so it was a lot of fun but i used to be like horrified i just scared of it scared of it but I'll keep an eye on, look, I'll keep an eye on the YouTube chat. I lo hey, I love you. I love you. Let's go. But this Twitch chat? Mm. Well, you know what it is, stressed grad? Here's what I did realize, and this is what stopped me a long time ago, is I'm pretty, I'm pretty quote-unquote popular, I guess. I would say fame. I don't know, fame, whatever. Point is, I've met a lot of people, a lot of people. And of all the hundreds of thousands of people I have met, I've never had anybody say it to my face. And I don't say that because, ooh, you're tough. Ooh, you're, that's not my point. My point is, I've never had anybody say it to my face. So what people have said, the negative things that people say in chat, doesn't carry over into the real world. And I wish, because there are a lot of youngsters out there that they do allow things that are said to them in those social media worlds to affect them. And that's the biggest message I could ever get is don't let it, don't let that, don't let it get to you. Because the reality is all the traveling I've done, I've never met any one of them ever walk up to my face and say the same thing, which just goes to show you, you know what I'm saying? There he is. Top plumber 619 just came from YouTube. And that's why I love you. And that's why I love YouTube. And that's why I love this stream. There it is. Welcome. How you doing? See, the water's fine. I got you. I got you, chat. Look, we got a lot of downtime. There's no fight coming up, so now I get to talk to you, and this is me rapping with chat. You know what I'm saying? But my point is, so don't let that stuff get to you. You know what I'm saying? Take it all with a grain of salt. Learn how to be your own best friend. Put a smile on your face and have a damn good day no matter what somebody writes in chat. <laughs> San Diego on, right? San Diego on. So in 51 minutes, so they are trying to slow it down because we've got two fights left and we've got 51 minutes. On our left, take this nerd of my telly number two. Yo. <laughs> here we go, here we go. I know, see, they're trying to slow it down. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, me and, me and Sugar, me and the Sugar, we did it once. Ooh, I got time. Like, I could do it right now as, he, as they're popping in. I mean, I think it's set. Yeah, do you want to pop in? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, chat, we're going to BRB one second, and I'm going to bring in a guest assist. So give me one sec, and hang out, hang out. Go ahead, do you.
Younger brother of UFC flyweight champion Davison Figueredo. I didn't know that. Finished 10 of 12 wins, 7 submissions. Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. That's the younger brother. Let's go. Be right back, though. unmuted and so we've got all right mr yanez see i told you all everybody kept asking where's where's yanez where's yanez i'm like he's gonna be here sometime he should be on his way making his way in there's chat adrian yanez twitch adrian yanez twitch tv slash ninja yanez mma hey by the way what game apex oh, apex Legends. okay so i'm gonna get i'm gonna get my apex going today so we can no, I definitely had to download. Uh, I de definitely had to download Fortnite because I've been talking to our good friend and pal of ours. You know, I can't say the promotion's name. But yeah, you can. It's it's champ. Uh, no. Rafion Stads. You know, I, he he said he's down to play some Fortnite with us as well too. So he's he's hundred percent down. Okay, I mean, is that better on the volume? So, by the way, real quick, Daniel De Silva won three of the last four fights, 100% finish rate, five knockouts, six submissions, 10 first-round finishes. Um, yeah, so, no, I'm down. So, yeah, to get with get Rafi on in there, we got to do, we got to do, for sure. Top plumber, Warzone, then Apex, then Fortnite. See, I've flipped that around. Fortnite, Warzone, then Apex. Oh, I'm down. I am 100% down, man. Yeah, yeah. Man, I've been wanting ever, ever since you uh, I got invited to play Fortnite with you. I was like, I am 100% down. I I literally made more space in my computer so I can download <laughs> Fortnite. I'll be, so I can make and sure then I we got to get the we got to and I have to say it only because he is my little brother, the Bellator Bantamweight World Champion, the newly Let's crowned go. Bellator Bellator World Champion Rafion Stotts will be gaming with us, but that's family, so I have to, you know, I mean, plus you guys train together and you know, that's the one thing. So it's, it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it, it does my, it does the old heart proud to, but we'll have to definitely get some games in. Oh, a hundred percent. Ooh. Yeah. Up more. Man. I have a set. We're both tied. If that works. Say something again, Giannis. Hello. Can you hear me? How is that chat? Is that better? Oh, good now? Good now? Okay. All right. Good enough. All right. I got it. I love it. All right. Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. All right. Here you go. So have you watched these two yet? Have you, do you have any idea of these two, Yanez? Uh, uh, no, not, not, not necessarily. Uh, uh, the 25 is not like with the the fights I usually look at. I'm usually always looking at the uh, 35ers. I'm just with, usually always with fights in general. I didn't realize it is Figueredo's little brother, which is crazy. And then Daniel, see Daniel De Silva. Let me get this moved over. We're getting ready to go with first round. There we go. All right. Well, here we go. Let's find out. Let's see what they do right off the bat. Making our way back to the center and. Like I said, just jump in and feel free to wrap anytime, Yanez. I'll be passing everything towards you, but, you know, it's just kind of, again, feeling out process. This is definitely a lot more laid back than, you know, the pay-per-views and stuff that we're doing. Spend more time rapping with chat, because normally it's just me rapping with them anyway. So, but you and I watch this fight. Ooh, nice spin to the chest. Nice spin to the chest by De Silva. Oh, man, yeah. And I... And just even just now, they're both kind of pretty relaxed. Uh, just both look still looking to gauge on everything. So, uh, I'm liking it. I, I honestly, I a lot of people don't don't like it, but I love the uh, 
the calmness that they both have, you know, instead of just going crazy. And nice little takedown. Nice takedown from De Silva. I like that. And that no, and that's it. I like that feeling out process again. It's because, again, they're what? They're trying to utilize their game plans. And I love that that thinking as they're going through the, the issue is real quick. Let me fix this and see these predictions. But as they're trying to figure out each other out, I like the game plans, right? And that's kind of that one thing when you're going, you're playing chess right off the bat, right? And you got to go out there and try to figure out what they're going to do and utilize your own game plan. As these two start rolling around, he rolled ooh, right into a knee oh, bar. Nice. How in the heck? The Silva rolled his way into a knee bar. Wow. Figueredo caught the leg in mid-conversation. I thought he was out. He rolled himself into a knee bar, and in a minute he had that leg. Figueredo said, no, can do. You're not getting his back. And Damn. Okay. Wow. All right. Good. <laughs> Shirk Zim, I apologize. Dropping 80,000 channel points on the and ah, but who over here with the 29? F Society 7 2. Look, he goes in on a double. Great takedown right here, right, Yanez? And oh, then yeah, perfect takedown. He's in the guard. Everything's legit. Right there, he tried to pass the leg by, but then he refused to let it and he muscled it over. Okay, so I got to take that back. So, did you see how Figueredo, he okay, he tried to throw the leg by. Figueredo said no, kicked him back by, thus leaving his leg behind. And he got the knee bar. That makes sense how that worked. But that is crazy because the way that De Silva was up, chat, he was postured up. He was going to throw the leg by. My man said no and kicked him back the other direction. And then there was the knee bar. That's power. Little Figueredo let it ride. Man, yeah. And actually, I do that a lot in training. I, I do the leg throw by. So that's actually something I had to take into, into account now because, man, the way he did it on that leg throw by, he let he let it almost pretty much let it ride and just kept riding on underneath him to grab that leg. Yeah, man. Now was he? Was, did he have? Now the one thing is, was he stepped over? That'd be the only thing. I, how did the one leg get into the guard? You see what I'm saying? How did he get the one yeah. leg in? Was he already stepped in? And he was. I don't know why he would throw it by. So he must have somehow scooped up that leg and kicked him by, at the exact same time he was trying to muscle him by. Yeah, hey, hey, that's that was impressive. Impressive. Oh, oh yeah. No, that that it, it came it came really quick too. As soon as he snapped, he he grabbed the lock. It was just immediately over with. So man, I'm super impressed with that. The way that it, yeah, when he clinched down on the knee, there was no he didn't get one second to fight out of that thing, did he? No, he was immediate. <laughs> he, he knew immediately. So <laughs> he fell right into it. And that was all she wrote. It was done. That was crazy. But yeah, it's the way it's it's how he turned into it. But the way that he was turned into it was because Figgy, Figgy kicked him that direction. So it was unbelievable the way he got that submission. So now, as we're making our way up, so the fight that was supposed to happen a while back. Now, with this one being, so here's what's gonna happen. There's gonna be a lot of downtime. A lot of downtime. If we're 51 minutes for this card, and then Figueredo just had to go in there and end this thing in a quick second. So, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? So look at like on our left is, um, Giannis, what would be your game plan against Piotr? Honestly, like I, just because I think the fans would love it a lot. Like I would just want to take the center. Like it, 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 that for me, that fight would be a war anyways, just because we both have very similar, uh, similar, similar styles different in in uh there's there's differences but overall our base our base game is most likely the same and i see a lot of uh like the high guard that he does i love i love to fight against people who have high guards so to me i would try to tap high go low and i know he likes to counter when people go to the body with the uh, with their hands so he likes to come over top so i wouldn't really necessarily commit to the body and i would wait for i would wait to counter his my shot to the body to counter his uh reply if that makes sense i would want to counter the counter if that makes sense it does not so would you try to would you try to force him to get uncomfortable because you know how he, he keeps those hands up high and he's real good he rolls rolls with the punches but then comes right back with the counter so then you want to come back and create that counter and just keep him scrambling would you do anything offensively would you mess with the ground at all because one thing i'm stunned when it come to aljo was when he stepped in there it, it was crazy because his takedown defense was so sharp the first time they fought but this time it's like 
he got stumbled up and it happened in two rounds in a row. But do you see how, I mean, very patient, but he got his back twice. You know what I mean? Would that push oh, you yeah. into the ground at all or no? Uh, no, cause just because I know how good Aljo's Aljo's wrestling and his ground game is, and I know there's there's levels to that. And then, uh, cause I cause I was there whenever I was training with Aljo, he was actually pulling that single to the high pull to hide the ankle and the armpit type of deal. And then like it it would make me turn because I didn't want to necessarily do the whole boot thing on him, like like put the boot on and like uh what i mean by that is whenever he has that high single ankle and ankle in the armpit yeah i didn't want to pull him closer to me i was trying to get away from him because i know essentially if i pull myself into him i had to re-wrestle with him and that's not one thing i wanted to do and i'm pretty sure that's what peter yawn in that moment didn't want to do either so he was trying to turn away and then on that turn gives up the back and then from there it's just for aljo it's just it's his world every single time every single time that's okay so that is so sick. Hold on. No, I, I don't mean to cut you off. Okay, so chat. Let me, like, to explain what, what, what Adrian is saying right now, which is unbelievable, is he'll pick up the foot to a level that if you want out of it, you either have to jump up high and try to, like, kick the foot and control the hand, like, really hard, jump up on him, or you turn, you turn your way and you kick, right? And you try to pull your knee and pull your, and you pull it out. And that's why he kept giving up his back. It's, and But that's why that he jumped right on top of it both times so fast because he was actually expecting him. See, now that right there takes it, look at that, yeah, that takes it to another level that I'm going to pick it up to this level because I know he's going to turn away and try to kick his leg out. And that's why the second he did, he pounced on him. And that's, I was like, why is he, you know what I mean? He's getting knocked over. And that was why, because he was set up from the minute he picked it up high rather than take it low. Man, I love rapping with you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's tight. Oh, that's yeah, tight. And, yeah, no, and it took me a second to, to figure that out because the first time, because he had the same game plan uh, back whenever he was supposed to fight him in October, but the doctors had pulled him out and everything. Uh, so, but he had that same game plan. So to me, whenever I, I was going there, I had, I made the readjustment, so we had to. I had to do a little bit more the uh, second time around. Uh, I trained with him, so he got better at actually like I as I got better defending that. He got better at you know moving around, moving around it because I wasn't necessarily giving him my back anymore. I wasn't necessarily giving up that sing that high pitch single anymore. So he was ha having to work around it. So, and I know in that third round he was at, he he chained it. He chained a couple. Uh, he chained it a couple times and actually. One thing that he did do in that uh, that fight a little bit more was uh, you remember when he was going for those low ink like low low pulls and then yep. come back up with the elbow or come back with yep. the punches. Yeah, he, he had added that that second train in that second training sessions that we would do like the second time I went around to New York, and I had saw that and it made me weary and it actually ended up making me want to give up that single so he wouldn't come back up with the punches. So I was actually That's trying crazy. to counter. I was actually trying to counter his leg pull with punches and then next thing you know i'd get popped in the face i'm like oh crap so it made me think so in the same time while he was doing that to peter a little bit in the in the first in the second uh in the second fight in the first round kind of almost set up those uh almost kind of set up those uh ankle picks to the high to the high rise single and all that stuff so it was it, it was a lot, was it tight. Was a lot. <laughs> I like yeah hey so real quick on the uh snoo if you can hear me um on this clip, do I? You want me to do it in the big scene, like we were gonna? We'll do the, the, the other one. Does that make sense? What I'm saying. Show it that way on the big screen. I don't know if I have him. I want to show this clip, but. Okay, so do it the big. All right, so I'm gonna show a clip real quick of that knee bar. Uh, one sec, and check this out. Look at that. I like it. One second. You won't be able to see these. Oh, no. I, 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 I have it on my phone just to make sure. I have it on my phone just to make sure. Okay. But you see how fast? Now, watch. Look at this right here. Like, this, like, he's going to jump by right here, and he just, the way that he spun around behind right here, like, he kicked this head forward, and then he tried to spin, and he's like, I'm going to, nope, no, you're not, and boom, he just, he got all tangled up, and that's all he could do, and this thing was so fast. Boom, look at it, instant, instant. 
I mean, he just got into this scramble. Look, he was good. Look how fast he caught that other foot, man. It's crazy. Boom. Boom. Instantly. Instantly. He was just like, oh, no, I had to. That first, that first punch was the tap. That first punch that he tried to throw was the tap. Yeah. I mean, that was, man, I could watch this all day. It's And, again, it's the way that, see, right here, and this is how he, see how he's holding him? He's kind of pushing him forward. You see how he's, he's trying to knock the Silva forward. And then right there, he's like, oh, I fumbled down. But see the way he holds on to this foot over here? Yeah. He's holding on. See how he's holding on to that foot? And he's like, all right, I'm going to kick that. And he's trying to kick him forward. It's crazy because my man, look, he had no idea. See, he's worried about this foot. Doesn't even think about this one. Kicked it in. Look how he just nonchalantly switches. He catches this, but he doesn't do anything too deadly. And then, boom, he just let the foot go, rotates Ooh. over, and it's done. That was nasty. That was nasty. Oh, super deep. It was so deep that, like, the second the second he actually just locked it in. Yeah, I mean, see, you look right see though, right here, AJ. See how, now right here when he's, boom. See, even here, but it's not a knee bar yet. So he's not worried because that other leg isn't around. And then right there. That nonchalant, look at that, right? He, he slides that little leg in real quick, right? He slides Ooh. it in, and boom, done. And he's like, all right, I'm done with this leg. I'm going to switch over to this one, and it is instant. Instant. That was something. Oh, man, yeah. That was nasty. I liked it. I liked it. That was impressive. That was, yeah, that was nice. Very the cool. The misdirection was just beautiful. I love it. So now they're going to be killing some time with these guys. That's another. One. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm going to move us back to the boom. There we are. We're back to this one. So where are we at with Romanov? So we've got 150. Oh, Nas 18 throwing down 150,000 channel points. 150,000 for Romanov over here. We've got Gamer Amnesia. Gamer Amnesia. 28,423 channel points. Good luck, GG. I like it. Remember, YouTuber out there, man, drop on in. Check it out. Facebook, Facebook. Hope you all are doing well. Um, Yeah, I like that. That was really cool. Good knee bar. Good knee bar. So now, because time, time, and time. So what's been going on, man? What have you been doing training-wise? What's happening? How you been? How you feeling? Oh, man, I'm feeling great. Feeling good. Uh, been training, doing, been uh, actually been able to do uh, twi two a days and three days at times. So, like, I'm training like I'm in a training camp, and I'm just, I just got to make sure I just keep consistent because I don't have anything lined up. So, I'm just trying to find, uh, trying to find actually, like, just like, how can I say it? Like, not find a goal motivation just, motivating but, reasons to push as hard as you want to push yeah like, <laughs> I, I can i can find myself like just training and just having fun but like I, i'll i'll start having a little bit too much fun where i start slacking off and be like oh i'll start dropping my hands and i don't want to create those bad habits so i i'm consistently just trying to make sure that i'm staying sharp that's why i started working with uh i am now about to start working with a a, a muay thai coach uh a Muay Thai coach uh, and uh, Michael Chase Corley, and also another coach who I'm adding to my uh, uh, behind me is uh, Eve Edwards. He's oh, you got Eve. So, All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty much, I kind of just made it official. I'm gonna start working with him from uh, from here, here on out. Him and uh, Michael Chase Corley. So just help out my overall MMA game overall. Nice, nice. Justin, your boy here says, "What does he eat on his cheat days?" Oh. Anything and everything. It doesn't <laughs> matter. It does not matter at all. Like actually today is Saturday is usually my biggest cheat day. So I'll have like my Dr. Pepper. I'll have everything. He uh, said Dr. Like, Pepper. Oh bro. He like, said Dr. Like, Pepper. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Absolutely. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I said Saturday is my cheat day. <laughs> he pulled out a Dr. Pepper and started crying. <laughs> This is not an advertising plug, but oh, that is all. I love it. it AJ's no, a Dr. Pepper dang. fiend. Yeah, no, that's crazy. <laughs> that's so. Wait, Dr. Pepper is. Wait, what is it? It's just a soda. It's no, a soda, no, no, yeah. no, no. But it's root beer, and is it if you took Coca Cola and root beer? 
Yeah, I believe that's Dr. Together. Pepper, right? That's Dr. Pepper. That's yeah. Dr. Pepper. I remember it's now I, I hate to say this, but I believe it was on TikTok. I think I learned something with TikTok. I believe it was if you mix Coke and root beer, it's Dr. Pepper. It's like, no way, what? And then they mix it together and he's like, son of a buck. It really is. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Hey, but look, that's what makes it special because it needs two great things to make something greater. But you pull them apart, they're just okay, you know? <laughs> I love how he brings that out. I love how he makes that make sense. And then you got AK over here, Dr. Pepper and, uh, huh? And Word. Oh, Dr. Pepper on Wordle, bro. Wordle? Oh, yeah, I be hitting Wordles. Yeah, it's a, uh, I be playing uh, the, this game on, uh, it's a, you get one every day, and it's pretty much a five letter word. <laughs> and, it's a five letter word and you get like six, seven tries. Uh, and which each try, if you get one of the letters correct, it'll either pop up as a green or an orange. The green means it's like it's in the same, it's in the same spot the whole entire time. And I, I've been on it every single day. And yeah, like that's <laughs> like it's been nonstop. I might get it at at, at eleven fifty nine, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get it. That is crazy. What my favorite knockoff soda is Dr. Perky, Doctor Perky. <laughs> what? What is your favorite? Oh, they have, Go they ahead. Have, uh, they have they have so many knockoff Doctor Peppers. They See? have like Doctor Dazzle, uh, Mister Doctor, <laughs> Mister <laughs> I don't. Like, oh my lord! So Jen, because someone asked Jens, what is your favorite knockoff soda name? I don't um knockoff soda name. I didn't even know. I don't really pay that. No, I have no idea. I don't even know the difference. I don't pay. I don't even. What? Look at this. But there's one out there called the physicist. Ooh, what? <laughs> Fanta, Fanta, Doctor Disrespect. <laughs> Get out! No, I do. Like, yeah, no, I don't even mess with it. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to figure it out. Especially if we're looking for alternative. The alternative sodas. I don't know. There's one. Man, the the ones I get at the Asian store, but it's it's weird because it's got this glass ball in it, and it's like it only allows so much to drink, and then it caps it off. I'd have to get one and show you. It, oh. It's it's wild. So yeah, but it's got this little metal ball, so it like it's basically got it measured out. And when you go to drink it, it boom, it'll like give you just like a literally a shot of it, and then it plugs it, and then you have to drop it and do it again. But you can't just pound it if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh wow! All right, I, I definitely got to try something like that. Yeah, I'll have to. I'll show it to y'all. This is my first time. How's everything? Oh, what up, Cub Junior Bones? How you doing, man? Nice job, first time. So, what our next fight is? Um, the next fight up, we have. Oh wait, huh? What's the main event tonight? You talking about with Font and Vera? Font and Vera um, will be the main event. Right now, we've got Romanov and Chase Sherman. This has been. Um, they didn't get this fight. What was it, two weeks ago? And then they switched it over. And then we go from there, I believe. So this is the one. I have Alexander Romanov. I don't know if he's like, we got over here. Let me see. Romanov's got 250,000 from the Natural Born Thriller, throwing in 250,000 channel points. <laughs> Jay Sherman, gamer amnesia with the 24. But I don't know why. I like Chase Sherman. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe. Look at this one. Yeah. Aim Nabucodonosor. Aim. What up, Aim? Hi from Italy. How you doing, Aim? You good? El Perfecto. What is most likely knockout or submission by Romanov? Romanov submissions. It's kind of what he does, right? Get it to the ground. Go after it. I'm going with the look of shame of Sherman. And I don't know. Who do you got in this match, Yanez? Oh, man. Hon honestly, I kind of want to go with the underdog, Chase Sherman. That's what I, I do. Kinda want, I, I kind of, I kind, I kind of want to go with the underdog. I, I like he's, the he's chase. A, he has, he has the, uh, like his hands are so good. He fight, like he fight on the, he fights on the inside pretty, pretty well. So I don't know. I just have, a, I, I just have a thing for guys who just like to throw hands very deadly. So, you know, and he wants to hurt you and put you down, and that's the one thing. So Chase Sherman, he's finished four. Speaking of fourteen of fifteen wins, all knockouts, fourth highest significant strike rate in UFC heavyweight history, six point one nine per minute. Eighth most significant strikes in UFC heavyweight history. See, and that's what I like about him is he goes out there to try to, he tries to knock you out, he tries to concuss you. And that's, I mean, 14 of 15 by knockout. So this will be, I don't necessarily know if Romanoff wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, but I am surprised 
How big of an underdog is he right now? He's because he's coming off. I think his last fight was a loss, so that might be the reason. I don't know, but yeah, he looks ready to go, and we'll have to see. I like Sherman, but I, this is one that I'm actually, yeah, I'm kind of picking, I guess. UFC, where in the world would Giannis like to fight at? Oh, man, where in the world would, would Giannis like to fight at? All right, so I got a couple places, but first and foremost, I have to fight in Houston. I have to fight at home, and then after that, I would like to start expanding. I would like to fight. Honestly, I would like to fight in Japan. I Ooh, think that'd be fun. A lot I would of actually fun. like to fight in Japan, 100%. Be- I, I just feel like every time like I think of Japan, I think of like the pride stuff, and I think about like the just like – the the bushido the bushido way if that makes sense like yeah like, yeah everybody's like just so like like the stories that i hear like it's just being dead silent just the claps whenever like something happens or like wimbledon war. yeah i love it like i love it that's what i that's what i want i can't wait to hear that you know and it's something like i said the tradition behind it they understood it a long time ago in fact the, the smaller pride weight it was called pride bushido and that was for the smaller weights, right? And we had those tournaments. But the way that you'd have so many people, just the way they understand the game was something. Real quick, though, undefeated 15-0, and 0, Alexander Romanov, fourth longest active win streak in UFC heavyweight division with four. One of five forearm choke submissions in UFC history. Now, having that played, played that out, the one thing is he is the smaller fighter, I believe, against... Sherman, can he get that forearm smash on Sherman? We'll have to find out. Piotr Jan versus Corey Sandhagen, highest skill level fight in the history of mankind. I'm not going to argue with you, abuser. I I, I don't think I'll, I think uh, Ramusa, Ramus, Ramus abuser 7-2. Yeah. That, I would like to see that fight again, honestly. One more I would time. Like to see that fight again, yeah. A lot of technical sides of it, but there's been a lot of technical fights. It just depends what you're looking for on the ground, standing. Now, if you want to see, to me, the most technical fight with clinching and grappling, not so much jujitsu, but in grappling, again, Makachev and Sarukian. It's one of my Sarukian is my favorite fighter. In, you know, I mean, one of my favorite fighters that just in the weight class, especially the way that he fights and the way that we we consider that a win, that fight was so impressive with all of the wrestling, scrambling from the bottom, top, and everything in between. It was crazy. What, James, did you know that this is the biggest UFC favorite of all time? Which one? Weighing in at 247 pounds. What are the odds on this fight? I can't see him. This fight? I think I think uh, Chase Sherman is a plus 1,100. Romanoff is a negative 2,200 skeet skeet? Oh, my Jeez. Lord. Okay, so if you're going long dog, I would have to do a Chase Sherman long dog. It'd be worth it, right? Like, he oh, has 100%. to have a chance. Is he going to just get mowed over? Giannis, is he going to just get mowed over? Or is he going to – he's got a chance, right? At, I, I believe he has a chance. Every every dog has a fight, so I think I at think, plus uh, eleven hundred, does he have a chance to win? He's got he's knocked out fourteen of fifteen. He's got to maybe land something. This is oh, it. Okay. I, oh, hold on. Right, let's see this clock. Clock. Are we touching gloves? Chase wants to know. Here we go. All right, here we go. Well, right off the bat, they tap hands, and they're sitting right there in the middle. But look at the movements of Sherman Romanoff kind of standing there. And, you know, again, that feeling out right off the bat, he shoots it on a double. Now, this will be the key right here, Adrian. Yep, and he does. And Powers him up, gets him down, but he puts his back up against the cage. Jump in. Oh, yeah, immediately looking to push the head down. Ooh. He okay. just he just threw him Lifted for a belly to back, touched his shoulders five. He just hit him with the five point throw, belly to back suplex. Now he's got him in side control, and this is going to boil down to right now. What is it that Sherman? Now see, this is if you look and you see how Romanov moved him over to the cage, put his head up against the fence, and now he's going to start going to work in half guard. And the way they start working, see, this is where 
You get nervous. He's going to start throwing shots. What can Chase Sherman do from here? Uh, he needs to start be, uh, needs to start creating frames and like start using it to get his back back on the fence. Uh, and then, yeah, he's actually doing exactly what it is. I was going to say, get on that underhook and get up from that underhook side, but see Romanoff goes in on that single leg, brings him right back down. Now, here's the downfall as he's in complete side control. This is going to be the problem. Is This is a lot of weight and a lot of pushing that, that, that um, Sherman's going to have to do right now. Romanoff is sitting in perfect side control and just kind of flattening him out as he steps Ooh, right yeah. into the mount, and he's doing it so easily right now. That's oh, the problem. And he's walking him back to the fence. Heading the fence in mount is not the place you want to be. It's not the place you want to be. He's he's already uh Romanov's already on top. Uh yeah. Already trying to push his face away, trying to posture up, and it's not looking good for Sherman is right now. No, and the thing that makes me Ooh. nervous and he's doing a lot of missing, a lot of missing is now he's got to give up the side. He's got to push on a leg, but it's just the dominance of what Romanov is doing. Again, Sherman's going to have to, he knows he's going to have to get punched a couple times by man trying to do the big brother. He's going to go for the key lock. Ooh. Those make me nervous. And he got him. Yeah, he submitted he him. It. He just did that with such ease. So that would be the reason why he was negative 2,200 because he just did that with 100% text foot ease, with ease. I would have I lost 100. <laughs> right? I mean, I yeah. would have bet on the long shot, but now he's, but now look, he's listening. He wants it, but that's, dude, he just big brother to Badam out, ragdolled him. The way that he took him down, yo, Pennywise, what up? He took him down, and the way he reached underneath. Yanez grabbed that wrist and was going to big brother punch him in the face. And then when he said no, then he just switched over kind of that key lock. Uh, I don't know what else you would call that because you just paint the fence with the hand and boom and lift up the elbow. And see, how look at that. He locks that up right there, the key lock. Now you want to keep it nice and tight, elbow to the side. He just, look, he just cranks and just starts turning that hand. And then it starts to straighten out. But he just did it with money. The problem was, and what I was really wanting to find out is, could he do any kind of movement? How heavy must Romanov be when he gets on top, right? We're always talking about the wrestler, how the wrestler can, they, they feel like they're a thousand pounds. You know what I'm saying? They can go from being 155 to just, Super heavy, and that must have been it because Sherman couldn't even move him at all. Man, and he just got his brown belt, I think. Yeah, I think that's the I think that's his brown belt. Yeah. Yeah, they just gave him his brown belt, which is cheesy. Wait, so that guy was a purple belt just whenever he, right before this fight. So oh man. All right. Made it look made it look super easy. And when you look at the thing that what really impressed me is the size of Sherman, the strength of Sherman. I didn't expect him to get little brothered like that. I mean, literally, that's what you would do to your little brother. Just kind of pin him down, hold his hand down, look at his head, start poking on his forehead. And you know what I mean? Little things like that. And that's. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't know that, Jims, because I am the little brother. <laughs> oh, but you the bad. Okay. Well, you lucky did. All right. You lucky. You, you the sound. Okay. So I guess you big brothered him. You little oh, brother, no, I, that's a oh, good no, thing. I am, I am the little You're brother. You're the little brother, I'm saying. So do you, you pick on the bigger brother? I'd pick on my bigger brother. Yeah. I'd pick on my bigger brother. Oh. Nah, he's still he's still bigger than me. All and right. He's done so jiu-jitsu before, so he's... <laughs> <laughs> well, my little brother, he helpless. He can try to scrap as much as he wants, but I'm still going to pin him down. Back when we were younger, at least, right? When we were little. I can't mess with him so much nowadays, but <laughs> back in the day, it had to happen. I love it. I love it. Look, he's still undefeated, though. That guy, is, he's a beast. Run yeah. from King Kong, man. This guy. Jeez. That is impressive. So now we've got, we're going to move on. We'll have the main card here coming up shortly. I'm telling you what, man. Jotko and Mearshart. I'm pumped, man, with Elkins and Connolly is another one. Jared Gordon and Dawson, Feely and Brito. And then, of course, the, the man that never, Andre Orlovsky, still the timeless, the timeless warrior going in there. Jensen Yanez, your favorite performance of Tony Ferguson until now? My favorite performance of Tony Ferguson. Man, you know what? I, I would have to say it would probably be the uh, Lando Venata fight because... He showed, like, at that point in time, like, I had never seen him that hurt, and he got hit with the head kick. Still came back and not, and, and finished him off with the darts, and it was just, like, it was beautiful. Like, 
like a lot of Ronaldo was doing a lot, a lot of good things in that fight. It just made it very difficult, even though it was a short nose fight for for Ronaldo. But the fact that he was able to weather the storm and getting head kicked, and then all of a sudden just like being able to to time the bomb and weave of Lando Venata and catching a head and arm. Like, that, to me, was amazing. So definitely <laughs> had to go to that. Definitely had, had to be one of my favorites. With the fight now, see, I can't go with the favorite what he has now, but I'm really, really excited to see him fight with Chandler. I just I want to see if he's still what he has left and what is – is he too beat up? I, I, it's hard to say it like that because, I mean, I don't know. A lot was taken out of him with that fight with, like, Gaethje and stuff like that. And then I don't know if people truly appreciate the bombs that Chandler can throw and with the wrestling. But it's like, are people witnessing that the, the, the Ferguson that used to be, is it gone? You know what I mean? And the sad and the suck part of that is he's too damn tough. If that makes sense, he's too damn tough for his own style. And, oh, and, yeah. and, you know what I mean? And you would just, and now you'd be taking, I, does that make sense? If, if, if it's on the other side and they're just dishing the punishment, he doesn't ever, it doesn't ever fade him. So he's too damn tough for that style anymore. If that makes sense, harder to recover, harder to get it figured out. And that's something that, you know, I want to see with Chandler is, you know, what he can do against Chandler. If that old Tony, like you said, that like with Venata or something where you look like you're in trouble and he's just one, he just would power through it. He was almost like that zombie-ish style of fighter that just walked through everything that you did and just was just too much for you, right? And I don't know if he can do that with Chandler, but we'll have to find out. Who was your favorite fighter from the Pride FC era? Um, you mean besides myself who fought in Pride FC or... You know what I mean? Uh, no, it, it, the Crow Copter. Man, I, Crow Cop, of course, Rampage. Um, man, I, just a lot of fighters in general. I just loved them all. Pride was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to watch. I think with the heavier fighters, it definitely was really cool. Uh, but Crow Cop, I think he was just such a devastator, you know, with, back then. And, and, you know, to be honest, Vanderlei Silva. Pride Vanderlei was something, Was he was something. When he was allowed to, uh, how does that work? <laughs> he had a lot of he had a lot of um, vitamins and minerals. Like he was allowed to, to to, you know, he was a beast. He was very big, and very powerful. And his knees, he just would a lot of vitamins, and he would just. He was something. He was a devastator with those knees. If if that, you know what I mean? Who was uh Yanez's favorite fighter from the Pride FC era? Ooh, yeah, that's that's a good one. Honestly, it it would probably have to be someone like Shogun. Shogun was very like There's in the sea. Yeah, when he was on his terror too, right? Oh, oh yeah. Shogun Shogun was a monster. And then, yeah, like of course I can always go back to be and go back and be like, yeah, Fedor, you know, uh Minotaur Nogueras and all that stuff. But I'm like, ah, no, Shogun was that guy for me. He, you know, I I really appreciated his style. You know, and that's the one thing. That's again why I like with Vandal, because there was a time, I mean, the way he was just gonna go out there and plumb that head and just throw knees. And the way that he would just put his back against the fence and just start letting him just swing it. And that's one of those things. Same thing with Crow Cop because it was so much fun because you just knew, right? You know, if he kicked you, oof, it was. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I, it, see, 88 Nash, that's a setup. Can't, that's a setup. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, that's a setup. It's it's super, it, we we could both answer very easily. We we were we were already talking about him. We were already talking about him, and it, it's like I, it, you already know it. You know what I mean? And I love that kid more than anything. He's yeah. I'm glad he's in a great place, and it's a lot of fun to see what he does. And I just can't wait, you know, for him to get that to get that opportunity to unify the oh, title. Yeah. So it'll be. I don't. You know. It yeah. It'll be something, but. And that was it. So let me see. We got with the links here. So now we've got a little bit of downtime before we get to the main, the main card. Now is your Q and A time, chat. Now is the time. Oh, or I'm gonna start pulling out Fortnite. It just works. No, 
Hamzat Tree, you know. <laughs> Remember this? I'm the best boxer in the UFC, baby. Oh, I want to oh. see this. This thing is tight. Oh, what? See, the, what is this? You all don't get to see this. But by the way, exclamation sweeps. Enter to win a VIP trip to UFC 276 in Las Vegas, which, by the way, I am going to be there. I'm going to be running around, running amok on International Fight Week. Have to do it. I'm going to be, yeah, I got to go. I'm going to be turning it up. I want to hang out, and we're going to be doing a lot of streaming, a lot of streaming um, from this. So it's going to be really cool. Met Adrian in Houston after 265. Stand up guy will always ride with him. All right, Mr. Hey. Spanky, Mr. Spanky TTV. Hey, man. Hey, thank you for, for recognizing me, man. Uh, that, that's, that's super dope. That's super dope, man. Thank you so much. Was it at the uh, was at the uh, Howlerhead meeting or was it just like uh, meeting meeting me at the Toyota Center? I'll wait for the answer. Right, and then we'll wait for the answer. <laughs> we'll, wait for the, we'll wait for it. But um, see, that's the one thing. Now I'm watching these two rap about it, Dean and Art. Fights got elevated, but does GM three have a path to victory other than sub in his fight? What are they talking about? Why are they talking about Cater and Holloway? You know, like curious. What are they? Is Max coming back? See, I must have missed why they were showing all that. But um, the one thing I can't this fight with Elkins and Connolly, that one's going to be impressive. The way that they push, push, push each other will be nuts. But I'm excited. Oh, do we have? Are the predictions already up for the other side? Let me see real quick. Okay, so we do have it. All right. Oh, Big Lex money. 127. Ooh. Do you see that spinning kick by um that oh, was nasty. Yeah. How was that for Jotko? 127,000 channel points for Jotko. GG. We've got 10,000 over here for Mirshart from Shurg Zim. Love it. Love it. I think Jotko is going to win, but I can't turn down these odds. I hear you. I hear you. You know, I'm curious. I'm, I get sucked listening to what they're doing. Elkins went three rounds with Volk. I'm going with Elkins. I would. I mean, it'll be different. Like, here, we'll stump to it real quick. With Tristan Connolly. Watching Tristan, I like, again, push, 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 the way he pushes his pace. It's hard. I don't necessarily know if it's anybody's. I don't know about sleeping on Mearshart. It's just, I don't know. What? What's your guys' game plan against Max Hall Holloway if you if you if you matched up with him? Ooh. Conditioning. Had, uh, yeah, you'd have to definitely use every everything in your arsenal against someone like uh, Max Holloway. You had to shoot. You had to kick. You had to punch. You had to clinch. Right. You had to do everything. You can't just keep it. If you just try to box up Max, he's gonna he's he's gonna figure it out and not work you. If you try to wrestle the max, he's gonna figure it out and not work you. <laughs> he, he's just that he's just that guy. So you'd have to use everything and you have to keep switching it up. And if you don't switch it up, he's gonna figure it out pretty soon and outwork you. You know, that's just that's just how it is. You know, that's just his style too. He's gonna push, he's gonna put like I, I always say whenever uh uh whenever I spar, I tell my training partners, I'm about to put up Max Holloway type numbers. And <laughs> like, I'm going to put up like 300 punches on you. So it's just a little thing that I like to say. But yeah, it's just it's just Max Holloway by now. He figures you out and then he puts the numbers on you. That's all. Okay, so Calvin Cater is getting ready to take on Josh Emmett. That's right in June in Texas. You know, and that's the one thing. So what I would do, to be honest, and what I would bring back is the lost art of dirty boxing that is gone. And it is something that you would have to do with Max to this the only way to truly slow him down but make him work at the same time. I would want to bring that back. Dirty boxing. Heavy on the head. A lot of shots. Don't shoot takedowns. Avoid the takedowns. Control the body locks. Control the, the, the arm drags. Snap downs. Front headlock. Sit out in front. Sit there. Hang out. Don't move. And make them start to work. And that's something that you would have to do. I think it's, a, it's the missing art right now in general we've got our distance fights we've got our on the ground submission fights but we don't have any of that dirty boxing anymore it's gone 
And that would be something that I think when people start doing that now, it'll really change up. It'll change up the game again, right? That one part, because you're making them constantly work, constantly work underneath, pummel, throwing shot, shot, come back underneath, heavy on the head, grabbing that bicep, not getting it, making them carry you. Hit that old man backpack style, so to speak, and that might be the best chance you have against somebody like Max. Like what Adrian was saying, that's the one part that – you got to keep them uncomfortable. Trip them, let them hit the floor, and as they're working their way up, you grab the front headlock, and you just sit there, and you don't move. You got nowhere to go. Make them work, right? Instead of You can't be too aggressive because if you get into those scrambles, you're playing into Max's world. It's like what Adrian said. If I start trying to throw punches with him, and he comes back with punches, I hit him too. He's going to hit four. I'm going to hit six. He's going to hit 12. I try to hit him with that, and then he's just going to outdo me, right? Or same thing on the ground, same position. You try to out with them right so that's the one thing is you just got to keep the you got to keep them guessing and just keep make him work and what would drive him nuts and there's a lot of fighters that this works to drive them nuts is stop them from moving and then watch them have to panic to push their way out of it right push their way out of it to then if if they want to have that high output, they've got to have to get past you first. So you got to take out, you got to you got to cancel them out and make them bust their ass if they want. You, does that if that makes sense? That's the one thing that I'd want to be doing to a lot of these fighters because the slowing it down would just crush them, and they they just it would crush them. You know what I mean? You might get a couple oh, yeah. of boos, but. Right, Gaethje is really dirty. The difference with Ga- Gaethje is, is about as close to it gets to dirty boxing. He really gets in there, and Gaethje does it a lot. Trips you down, but does that make sense? Like when I trip you down, I'm gonna stay out on that front headlock. I'm not gonna move. I'm gonna stay on the front headlock, rip body shots, and make you move. You kick to the guard. I'm gonna stand up. We we'll start over. I'm gonna come inside. I'm gonna grab the back of that cow lick. I'm gonna get that underhook. I'm gonna put my head in there, and I'm gonna stay inside her, and I'm gonna throw light shots to the body, light shots to the head, and now you got to move. You got to pummel, and I'm going to pummel, 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 snap down. You know what I mean? See? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. (laughs) Like, getting like a little, getting them on the fence, get get the slight takedown. They go on all fours in the turtle position. You hit the little soft ride. You start punching them in the face. They start trying to work their way up. On the way up, they leave that leg behind. You hit that trip. Automatically, you're on top. You start hit, hitting a couple little elbows. They start working their way up. And the whole entire time, you're soft riding them. Like yep. The whole entire time. You're never really holding for a position. You'll let them work up while on their way to get up. You just throw a couple shots. You only had to throw them very, very hard. Like, man, there's a lot of times where people have gotten knocked out, like, working their way up but the other guy just started throwing shots it wasn't the heaviest shots but it was just a shot that would be put put in the right place so you know, opening opening oh, opening, opening I mean, shots. well because the other thing is when you, you tend to create enough space which gives them a scrambling spot right to pop up and move out of the way so you want to stay heavy again the black belt in jujitsu right the boa constrictor they're not giving you space they're constantly just wrapping it up tighter and tighter, and they'll do little setups, little shots to just make you move up, and they take that much more space. So, but like you said, I'm not holding it to, I'm not trying to hold it for the round, but if I stand on that front headlock, I'm just staying there being real heavy because I need you now to work, and I got to go after, I'm, basically, I'm going after your conditioning. I'm going after the, your gas tank, and that's what I, I want your stamina bar, and that's what we're after. When you work on that single leg, just get in a position, and you just just hold them. You'll move from it when, but you just don't, like most of the time, we'll pop away, start over, get free space. Take the space away and make them, if they want to get away, if they want free space, they got to work for it. And everything they do, right? Everything they do, they have to work for it. And that's how you really wear somebody out. But it takes a lot. It takes a lot of conditioning. You know what I mean? It takes a lot, but it's a phenomenal plan, but it's really hard to do in a lot of ways. And a Khabib was really good at that same thing. Just in the positions that he sat in, they sit off to the side, they get that wrist control, and it's just left hands. And now you have to either, I got to block these punches or I have to push down because I have to get up. He's not going too hard. He's just staying in one spot and he's just blasting. And then he waits for you to spend all of your energy to move and then he just slides over to the side and there you are now. And he just starts blasting. And he's like, ah, where I learned it from was having to go against Matt Hughes all the time. And the reason why I say that is because Matt was so strong that it was like, 
what throws people off is even though he's 170, he's so strong, he feels like he's 250 pounds, right? And you end up, what happens is just to move him, you burn so much energy that you weren't ready to burn because you have to just do so much more because you're not used to it. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's yeah. when you just got to pick the right times to be heavy. And you learned that in the wrestling room to how to hunker down on somebody, but you're not moving, but you're, you, you, you're taking it away. But you, you know what I mean? It, you just become a rock, right? Oh, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, and going with those guys are super annoying, especially whenever yeah. you're the guy that's having to work. <laughs> work your way like, damn it. When they, especially when you have to do, like, you're going, you're working between three of them and you, it's your time to fight. So uh, you're going through the shark tank and they're diving on you. And it's literally everything. It's like, I can't get them off me. And they're yeah. just laying there. They're not even sweating. They're not even heavy. They're just uh, laying there and they're just smothering. And you're like, I hate you so much yeah, right now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah. There's this one training partner that that I had, and I have. He's probably like around 170. Where every time I go with him, he's just so strong, and he just knows how to use every bit of his like weight and just hold. It like it gets so annoying. I start pulling out the like I'm putting my forearm right in your nose, bro. Yeah, right in your nose. Yeah, trying to get all the way up. Use whatever I can to get up. All yeah, the little it, cheat moves, like you'll rest this, like right here, chat. You'll put it on their face, so you just make it uncomfortable. And all they're doing is they're not they're not overexerting themselves. They're just that farm boy strength that just and they squeeze, and you're just like you notice it. You notice it instantly. You're just uh, like, oh, this like like I said, one time Matt did it to me. He grabbed both my wrists and he had to hold them, and he put his knees right in my chest, and he was pulling on my hands, and I'm like. And I finally I rolled out one time and I get out of there and I get the knees and then boom he grabs it again and I was like <laughs> and I put my head down and I tapped I tapped he goes what are you doing I go I can't get out he says what I go I can't get out I go I don't even know I'm an umpteen time uh, freestyle and Greco All American and I wrestled in college as a junior college All American I go I can't get out what do you mean I go your grip is too strong. And he's like, but I go, I can't do it. Now, the next day I made him pay in striking and I, and I, and I, and I, I tapped that liver, but on the ground. So yeah. my point is, but you learn really quick. You learn how to, how to utilize your energy and not panic and deal with those rocks that get on top of you. You know what I mean? And you learn how to, how to maneuver and get things out of the way without just completely burning the tank dry. But to go back, long story longer, to go back with someone like Matt Hughes, that's usually what happens the first time. You're like, dang, I'm just spent because I had to spend so much energy just to just to push you off that it just it was too much. You know what I mean? So you got to get used to it. Ooh. Those wrestlers, those wrestlers. Font versus Vera. So now we're making our way to the main card. A little bit of downtime chat. How's everybody doing out there? By the way, YouTube. What's up, YouTube? You know, I love you. Make sure you switch on, check on over here. Come over here and check out Twitch TV slash UFC, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. This is where we're at. And I can see those. I understand I can't see those other chats because. But if you roll on over, the water's fine. You'll love it. Hit that follow button. We're on here. Me, personally, I'm on here Friday, Saturday, Monday, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern. We're watching fights, breaking fights down. Monday, we're recapping the fights that happened. And then based on the theme, we do an interview. And then off we go. We're watching fights Wednesday. Weck Wednesday turned into who knows what days. Want to start playing some games? Hop on Apex with Adrian. I will get Apex rolling ASAP. I don't want to embarrass myself. or But I already might be doing Fortnite. Fortnite no Fortnite no builds. Ooh yeah. Oh no, I might have to get on that too. Ah, uh, all right. Fortnite no builds. I'm down. All right, I'm in. I'm in. Does Janez even affliction? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I'm too much of a casual for that. <laughs> is there even what is? Are there even is even affliction even? Did it like switch into something else or? I think they have uh, a. I think it's a T-shirt company now. No, I think well, no. Affliction was. Shirt. They still have T-shirts, or I haven't seen one in a long time. It, there's, there's one in the mall that uh, that that's near where I live, and it's just like, like, 
yeah it, it's still weird like they still have like fight shirts weird too like it's just like just fight shirts they say fight but everything else has like rip, tattered blue jeans and all that stuff and i'm like oh it's that type of place now okay i guess you know. <laughs> no so wait you still have a mall yeah the, the people yeah, go to it yeah, yeah people, people go, go to it yeah oh yeah that is one thing. It's like there's still a mall where we're at, but, um, you know, the one thing is, is there any working streaming site to catch the fight? Yeah, it's ESPN Plus. <laughs> ESPN Plus. <laughs> Yo, King of the North. The shirts are just birds. The shirts are just birds. King of the North. What's up? What's up? How you doing? Um, no, like the, the malls, like, yeah, like there's a couple of stores in there now. It is crazy the way that, Everything is life has completely changed. Can you does anybody remember what life was like two years ago? Like we were just uh, talking about it with the plane. Do you remember this one? Back in the day on an airplane, you could wait for them actually at the gate of your flight. How long ago was that? Where you could like, do you ever remember that when you would fly? Like I was I'd be a youngster and you fly and the, the people would be waiting for you right at the gate. They could walk you up to the gate of your flight. And then it became you can't even go into the airport unless you are on a flight. You know what I mean? It's crazy how much things have changed. And now it, it's the same kind of thing. Yeah, what? The mall is empty with tumbleweeds. It's it's weird, right? Everybody just orders online and Amazon just oh. come out like a boss. <laughs> oh man, our our malls still be packed, man. It's Is it? weird. It, well, it's Texas. It's Texas. I love it. I, I like, love everybody, it. Everybody, everybody doesn't. Everybody doesn't care. Yeah. Like I just, I just, uh, I just came from uh, one of my uh, my my significant others. Uh, her sister is in a beauty pageant, and like I went to the little festival where they were having it. If it's packed. Hey, it is packed, man. So I was like, yeah, yeah it's Texas is still going to Texas, and I love it. Okay. Iowa is still Iowa. So we don't have much of an issue or anything like that. But it is weird because back when, there for a little while, when you had to do the malls, and it kind of just did, you know what I mean? It, it, they kind of did this thing. We've never had the mandates or anything, but won't get too wild into it. But it's just weird how just things change and how they become a routine so fast without even really, re without, you know what I mean? For, it's weird. It's just like, there was a time, you know, go to the mall and, and all that. Now it's just like, there's nothing. There's nothing. I try not to leave my house as much as possible. Well, that kingdom of, King of the North, that's kind of all of us. You know what I mean? At least, I mean, I'll go out, I'll do my travel, and then I just couldn't wait to get back. And that's why I have all my games and setups and thus the whole idea of gaming online. And then you you bring me a Twitch and we've got a stream and I get to do all my interacting, right, Adrian? We get to do all, everything oh, I need yeah. is right here hanging with all of you. We're watching fights. We're communicating. We're hanging out, playing games. Dang. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I love it, man. I absolutely love it, man, because... Well, I don't, I, I don't like going out as much as I used to. Like I, I used to love me. Like, hey, let's go to the mall. Let's do this, do that. And I'm like, eh. Now I'm just like, ah, right, you know, I, I like, I like my house. Yeah, I, <laughs> I like my house. Yeah. I think it's cool here. It's really, really nice. Yep, I'll go ahead and I'll I'll go online. I'll chat. I'll mess with AK Snoop. We'll play some games, you know. And it's just like I'm I'm good. I'm good here. Every now and then, you know, maybe some people. But I'm like, ah, no, you know, no, I'm good. <laughs> Plus, we have a weird one. I'm always we're working on the, and that's another one is we've got a lot of free time during the week. Our weekends are usually busy, come fight time and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But that's the one thing for me is it's like the weekends are work my wife working at the hospital and then i have the weekdays off so it's easier time for me so it's always been we've always had a different schedule right your gym times and then you got the middle of the day off and most people are working i'm like well what am i doing i got I man i gotta find somebody you know <laughs> who am i hanging out with and there'd be a lot of golf get a little golf in some fishing something like that <laughs> oh man I, I i am now starting to uh I'm now starting to s split that time from like training session to training session with streaming on Twitch. That's exactly what I've just been doing. I'm like, all right. Uh, as of late, it's been a little bit hard for me lately, but I I've, I've been getting back to it. I'm getting what back time? To it. What time do you start? I usually try to do uh 1 p.m. Central to 3:30 p.m. Central. That's that's the time that I'm usually like that I usually do like Mondays and Wednesdays, but I'm trying to make it a daily routine where I'm able to get on and cons be consistent. Cause, man, yeah. What time like, you gotta be back at the gym? Five six. 
yeah, I got to be back at the uh, at the gym at six. But with how traffic is in Houston, I had to leave my house at four thirty just to even get there by five forty five. So Oof. yeah. Yeah, that's that's the worst part. That's why that's why I stopped my stream at three thirty so I can make sure I get everything ready right before I go. King of the North, does Adrian have a new fight announcement or is he focusing more on coaching? No, I I I'm waiting for a fight announcement. I, I've been waiting for uh, I've been waiting to hear something back. It's uh, these past couple of weeks. It's just been like uh, I'll get back to you this week. And every Monday, it's always been I'll get back to you this week. And yeah, so that's that's the position I'm in. I'm in right now. So. Uh, I'm trying to get on that UFC, uh, the UFC Austin, just so I can fight in my home state. And then after, there's a there's a nice little river uh, called the Guadalupe River that I wouldn't mind going to on Sunday or Canyon Lake right there. That's like about 30 minutes away from Austin. I can just sit, relax with my family after a good win and a knockout bonus that I feel like would be fun. This guy. Out there. Oh, bro, I, I'm already picturing. You got me head. sold. I want to come visit. I'm coming down. <laughs> I'm coming down right now. That's what? Amazing. Oh. I'll get on a plane. I'm coming down to visit. <laughs> it's happening. I'll be down. We got to figure out as long as I can, as long as I can get some internet signed. Hey, you've got the setup, so I can just stream. I'm gonna have to stream from somewhere real quick though. Gerald Mershon, fourth longest active win streak in UFC middleweight division with three tied longest active UFC submission streak, three second most finishes in UFC middleweight history, nine tied second, and 15 first round finishes. By Mr. Mershart. Can you tube along the Guadalupe? Oh yeah, yeah. We got, we got. I think there's a, a three hour and a four hour. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, got, I'm coming uh, down. Oh, bro, I'm I, down. I love it. We even get our own. We even get our own uh, tube for our cooler with all with all the adult refreshments, <laughs> all the beverages, all, all the refreshments. Oh Lord. <laughs> are there cliffs? It's, okay, here's the question. Are there any cliffs along the way to jump off of? Uh, they're, they're oh, I'm telling you. So when, when, when we're tubing, there's people that have houses and those people that have houses, a lot of times they put up rope swings and they let Ooh. anybody go, go off their rope swing. So, Oh yeah. I love it. I love it so much. And then there's a, it's 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 super beautiful because it's like the hill country of uh of of texas around that area yeah. so as you're going down the tube tubing having a great time you get to see like just like the the little bit of hills and like how it cuts through the uh the hills and everything. it's so beautiful it's it's amazing it, i gotta do it there's one spot where we always stop just to have just start just to chill feet in the water eat our sandwiches when we pack it up because it's like a, about a four hour a four hour two two process you're swimming and going in there so you know two hours in you get hungry sit back take more drinks and then uh, I love you it. go back down your way uh, what jay has jen have me tubing no i lived in seattle one i had three rivers to choose from one by the house we tubed all the time but then we also had the green river gorge where we do all of our cliff jumping and stuff like that out of and then in idaho i had the boise river i had we had a bunch of different rivers that we would do with all the we had boise state universities right on right on the boise river so we'd go up top and drop down in and off we go and um what yeah no I, what do you mean crocs right here bam um <laughs> but yeah no nah, so i did a lot of tubing a lot of tubing and um yeah. But yeah, I just out here in Iowa, I'm not getting in that Mississippi River. I won't even touch it on accident. I won't touch it. <laughs> I won't, I won't uh, touch it. I got no reason to be anywhere near it. I got to find some side poodles, some side puddles, I meant to say, you know, and do something like that. But I won't. Yeah, I'm not messing with that bad boy. Oh, yeah. no. I, I'm uh, afraid we, a hand is going to grab me or something. Don, it, it, like, that, I'm not playing with you. Like that dank water, like a hand's going to just come down and boop, and it's going to grab my leg or something. They're like carcasses are in there or something. Yeah. Nope. Uh, oh, man. 22 years of living here. No can do. We are live. Look at that jacket. Oh, I like that jacket, Mr. Buffer. What's that? Business in the front, party in the back, and Crocs in sport mode. Yes. No, they're not in sport mode. No, they're they're in leisure mode. They're in the front. If if you say something to get me mad, 
I'll flip it back to sport mode, <laughs> get that thing tied on my heel, and then you're in trouble. But as long as they're rocked forward, we're all right. I'm in leisure. I'm in leisure. I, that means I can kick them off, and we'll get barefooted right now. But, you know what I'm saying? If we have to, I put them in sport mode. Yeah, we in trouble. We in and trouble. Everybody around me has been rocking Crocs, man. I, I just don't know. <laughs> I've been rocking my UFC. I've been rocking my UFC, uh, my UFC slippers and slides and all that stuff, you know. But I'm, I'm getting kind of jealous. Oh, okay, here's the deal. If it makes it any better, though, if this makes me any tougher, I jacked these Crocs from a oh, friend of mine. I okay. didn't buy them. <laughs> I stole them from my friend. And yeah, I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sport. He actually left them behind, and I just kept them. All right, here we go. Here we go. We got 127,000 over here by Big Lex Money for Jotco. GG. 60,000 for Mershart. Let's go. Yes, as long as I as long as I stole them, you know what I'm saying? If I took them, I figured that made me gangster. They are comfy though. I ain't playing. Leisure's good. All right, here we go out in the middle. Ooh, he's running into that. See, right off the bat, Mershaw thought he was going to try to step in a little aggressively, and Jocko was able to step back and throw the comp. But look at Jocko's the one coming forward, looking to be the aggressor a little bit. He's got Mershaw pushed off along the fence, and then he tries to come forward. But he, he's stepping in with that with that with that left hand, but he's he's kind of squaring up every single time he throws it. That that his left leg is following and turning himself square. That's what's leaving him open open to counters. Jocko or Mershaw? Uh, Mershaw. You know, I think the one thing that I'm noticing, if you look at it, that Jocko is up on his wheels the way that he's moving around a little better right here. And Mershart seems to seems to be a little more, a little flat. And he's kind of, I don't know, you see, he's kind of seeing that, that jab in and out, the way that Jocko's moving. It's almost like, what is Mershart looking for to get him to come forward? You see how he's kind of, he's stepping in, Adrian. See, and now he's, yeah. but you see how he's kind of just bowling in right now and Jocko's able to kind of step back and he fired that, that jab real quick on the way out and hit him with that one, too. He's kind of piecing him up. Oh, yeah. No, nah, and he's he's staying very fluid, too. And he's just, he's not really, he doesn't look like he's throwing anything in power. He's just looking to throw his speed and it's landing and it's landing hard, too. You know, and it, if you notice, then that's kind of, and it makes, Mer oh, Ooh, deep kick right kick to, to the, the face. face, front kick of the face of Mershart. You see what I mean? And that's it. Like, Mershart is just really slow. He's not getting off. He's flat footed. Jotko's up on his wheels. Moving around, you can tell he's sliding in, sliding out. Global hacks, how are you? And you know what I mean? Now he's got his back. Jocko's got his back and gonna have him pushed up against the fence. You know, and that's the one thing. Mershard just seems to be, he just seems really uncomfortable right now. Now he does a good job of pulling back in, breaking and moving off. And it's, and again, Jocko back to the center. And he's just, again, the way that he's moving around, sliding in, look at the feet, adding in the feints. And Mershart's just, he's kind of stuck. You know what I mean? He just, he's, his feet are heavy and he's chilling. Ooh. Every single time, dropping that check hook. When is the Cheeto Vera fight, uh, Samuel, 6-6 six, six games? Ooh. He'll be uh, the, the main event. The, the card just started. So the main event, hopefully that's what you're asking. The main event. The main fight will be here at the end. So we just started with the main card. There you go. But now, you know, see, now the one thing is, I don't know if Mershart, Jocko's moving right, 88 Nash, and that's the one thing. I mean, look at that, that aggressiveness coming forward, keeping that distance, landing the jab. He's not giving, he's not letting Mershart close it. Look at that. And that's it, right, Metaverse? Mershart does. He looks really, really slow today. Big lumbering left hand, and then he gets hit with two shots by Jotko. And then you, like, what do you think? You know, like with the feints and everything, is that what freezing up Mershart? Or what do you think it is, Adrian, that's really, I mean, doesn't he seem kind of slow, hard, like he's not ready to get off the, the starting blocks? Yeah, uh, I think Mershart's movement just in general, just like the upper body and lower body, keeping move, the hands moving and actually like, kind of like, it's it's all kind of starting off with the feints. He's freezing him with the feints because he doesn't know when he's actually going to throw. So it's just kind of making it hard. 
hard for him to actually come in. And then every single time Mershart does come in, it's he's getting hit with that check hook. He's getting hit with hit with that check hook. So it's like he doesn't know when to come in. And then when he comes in, he's getting hit with the check hook. So he's like, oh crap. Like, like I'm I'm scared to even come in because I don't know what's gonna happen. Like I don't know if I'm gonna get touched or whatever. So it's like making him hesitant to even even want to come in come in. Hundred percent. Then he gets this body lock right here, and which is funny because Jocko. What I like about Jocko right now is how his eyes are. He's open. He's seeing the fight because Mershaw started to rush in, and he almost fired an elbow up real quick. And that's the thing is Mershaw's not. He's closing the distance, but he's not closing it with anything, and that's kind of an issue as well. But right here again, Jocko's got Mershaw put up against the fence. Maybe he just needs a round, right? He normally looked this stuck in the mud. See, King of the North. It's like he really does. It's like Jocko took him into the quick sand and he's just going to start letting him drown and he does seem overwhelmed he's holding on to this over under pushed up against his back is against the fence but he's got no real movement so we have to see maybe in the next round he can gather and collect something and, and you know what i mean and come back um with a different idea tg push underneath underlooks by jocko but good round for jocko I mean, if you look at the numbers underneath, you got 31 total strikes. I don't even look, but significant, 26 to 12. But yeah, Mercer, he just seemed really slow in that one. Let's in the corner here. Oh, chat. How's everybody doing? Chat, you good? Huh? This is how every Gerald fight looks. It does, but the problem is, is it, if he doesn't get going, then he, you know what I mean? You're going to find yourself too far behind and then you're... Then you're lobbing. You're trying to lob and look for that. You're trying to look for that one punch or something, which, again, you can get it, but, you know, don't let it get too far ahead of you right now. Jens, did you ever get booed during a fight? Oh, for sure. I think. Maybe. I don't know. Probably. I'm no, sure I've been like, booed. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, so much chaos in that, in that ring. Yeah, like, they're all, it's all know? noise to me. I don't know. <laughs> I can only focus on the name calling. Blakovich versus <laughs> Rakic. May 14th. I like it. Here we go. Round two, round two. Dana versus Tito. Who do you got? I had Dana from the first time when they were supposed to do it. Dana can box. <laughs> I'm not kidding you guys. Don't kid yourself. Dana can box. Like, he looks, he can slip. And Tito could not box. There was, there was no way Tito was beating him the first time boxing. <laughs> Dana can box. Don't kid yourself. I'm not kidding you. And I'm not talking about, like, he knows how to put, he can box, box. Like, he knows. He's slick. When he was moving around that ring, I was like, Dana, what? He might be too big now, but that he could flow. Dana knows boxing. Don't kid yourself. And he would have beat Tito, I think, handily the first time. All right, here we go. Mershart now. Mershart definitely a, mot, a lot more aggressive. A lot more aggressive pushing Jotko onto that outer track with his back towards the fence. Nice counter right hand over the top when Mershart gets too close. Can you help Adrian get a fight, please? That's not my job. <laughs> if he wants one, let's get him a fight. Like, I'm in. I'm ready. Who do we got to talk to? Sean? What's up? We're all saying it right here. Mershart's got a body lock. Got Jocko pushed up against the fence. Head in the pocket. This is Mershart's world right here. Don't you think, Adrian? Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> I'm just laughing because uh, the guy that's saying give me a fight is usually uh, the guy that jumps on my team with Apex. So oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I got you. All right, all right. Yeah, head me off my game for a second. <laughs> What? Dana got the boxing fitness classes under his belt. Yes, he do. But you know what that means, right? That means you're fit at boxing. You know how many people, quote unquote, have boxing with no fitness under their belt? I'll show you just hours and hours of that, but you'll watch it for maybe 20 seconds. But you know what I mean? So I'll take the fitness boxing all day. All right, here we go. Now we're pushing again. Mershard seems to be, he's kind of mulling forward a little bit. I like Jotko up on the feet, pushing, pushing the hands, pushing backwards. Mershard still doesn't really feel like he's into it too, too much. You know, now he's starting to come forward a little bit, but I think just the feints of, of Jotko. But Mershard's at least now he's starting to come, he's a little more on the attack, right? Nice one-two by Jotko. No answer back by Mershart right there. Now he comes back with the jab. Went for the big left hand, but the counter right hand over the top. And I guess that would happen, right, Adrian? If you're doing that, every time you're throwing your right hand, Jocko kind of slips back and he fires that hook right over the top of it. It would get frustrating, even though it's your power punch, right? Oh, yeah. 
Uh, he just, I think he was just kind of like getting annoyed with being touched every single time he would come in. So like that, that would, that would absolutely discourage a lot of people. And wow. I thought he for sure had that in psych control, but the fact that you, he hip heisted, got that wizard hard wizard, and then use that to get back to his feet. That's slick. Nice little duck under by Jocko right there to take the back of Mershart. But Mershart, like I said, he almost feels like he now he's just going to go down to all fours. Mershart just seems tired. Something's wrong with him. He's kind of just folded up. Now he's going to try to turn in and go for a single. But, oh, he's got the power. He walked his way up. I thought Jocko had the sprawl on him at that point. But able to not. Now they're back up. And Mershart's got him pushed up against the fence. See that head in the pocket. I like that. Making Jocko have to look around a little bit. But he doesn't keep it. They're sitting in over-under. Nobody, no real moving, kneeing each other in the thighs. And now there's, it seems to, it seems to have worn Jotko down a little bit, but this is a, a, a lot slower moving over under position. Jotko now has Mershart pushed up against the fence. Got that body lock, looking to throw some knees to the thigh, possibly try to pick a foot off. OFCC just throwing knees to the inner thigh of the left leg of Mershart and making him have to work from here. Again, these are things that it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but right here, see the way Jocko's just kind of smothering him. Now you just got to make Mershart. Takes him down to the floor, passes the guard. Now we've got a takedown, but Mershart thinks maybe a possible guillotine. He's going to try to, nope, worked his way out, but he pulled guard to do it. Not bad. I don't know. Mershart just seems a little too tired, Adrian. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it it's it to me it, it whenever I'm looking at a fighter and I'm looking uh to see if he has has something to give and it's starting not to look that way. He just it just doesn't he doesn't have that extra oomph in within within him right now. You know, and it, it it seems like something's happened to him. You know what I mean? I don't know what he's been it, it just doesn't seem like he has any energy. Like he's just kind of going to the fight, like he's just having one of those days at practice. You just don't even want to show up. And he's just kind of going through the motions. And he's like, I'm just going to do enough to survive, but I'm not going to do anything to push. And Jotko is able to, we're going to finish it again with Jotko on top coming down with the elbows. And Mershard just kind of seems beat up. He just seems tired. Yeah. Seeing how he walks to the store, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily like it too much. Yeah, no, King of the North. Yes. He is keeping an open guard. I'll give him that. But, um, Giannis, when are you going to fight Sean O'Malley? Oh, man. Hopefully hopefully soon. Hopefully this year. Hopefully this year. Hopefully we get that fight. That would be fun. 100%. Because I'm going to get paid. I want to get paid. <laughs> I know that fight would get me paid. So, 100%, I want that fight. <laughs> Most annoying what you ever fought in your UFC run? Most annoying. Um, I had one that annoyed me the most. The rest of them it was all. They were all awesome. I just had one that was not my favorite. In my first time through, second time through was all just a, a blur. Not really. All right, here we go. You ready? Round three. Round three. International Fight Week sweepstakes. There it is. Win a VIP experience in Las Vegas with exclusive access all week. Exclamation sweeps in chat. Chat, exclamation, sweeps, and sign up. Here we go, round three. Now we go, Jotko up on his wheels, moving around. Exclamation, sweep, enter to win a VIP trip to UFC 276. I'm going to be there. Yee-hee! AK Snooze going to be there. The Twitch TV slash UFC stream is going to be there every day. All right, here we go. Nice right hand by Jocko Mershart. You see what I mean? Even when Mershart's trying to close the distance, Adrian, even when he's trying, he just doesn't look like, see, every time he steps in the range, Jocko's catching with that lead hook and that counter. Yeah, he's he's just kind of just lo loading everything up and just going forward. Like, it's just, there's no feints. There's no real, like, kind of like, it's just kind of just, he's telling you what he's going to throw and he throws it. And then it's just it, no it, speed on those punches. You notice that? No real zip yeah. on them. Oh, liver oh. shot. Did that drop Jotko? Liver shot got him? Body shot? Maybe he fell, but he stood back up. Mershard didn't feel like... See, every time, every time Mershard throws that right hand, that's his big right hand, he's getting popped with that lead hook by, by um, 
Jotko. Then he got a little too aggressive right there. Jotko takes him down, and now Mershart's going to keep an open guard, but he's going to have to try to work in here and not have the clock completely eaten up um, right here. But now he's looking to maybe pop over here with the Kimura. We've got a Kimura. No, Ooh. Jotko says no can do on that. Jotko is a lot faster than I relax. And he just got to get it figured out. But see, open guard from here, and he just got to try to push. Huh. He is trying to see, and that's the one thing I'll give Mershant, though. You know what I mean? He is trying to stay active, swung his hips out to the side, possible arm bar, arm yar. But now Jotko is going to use that and get into half guard. Can you put the fix Ooh. in for me on that sweepstakes? I wish, but now we're back on our feet, and here we go. I'm going to be there. That's good enough for me. Me and AK <laughs> Snoo running around with that backpack. Plus, it's my, and then we've got my 13th uh, wedding anniversary. will be at the same time, so we're going to be running amok, just going ham. And then they're going to have the whole, yeah, all the, all the, there's so many activities. Merchard's got him pushed up against the fence, but he's sitting, what, mid-level, Adrian? And he just kind of pushed, but he's not really trying to do anything. He's got no explosion in this fight. You know what I mean? Everything was just kind of a grind, slow moving, and he just has no explosion after, and then Jocko pushes him off. Ugh. That was a nice little small knee that Jocko just did. Off that clinch, in tight. Ooh, nice little short elbow. Oh, upwards elbow. That was nice. I like that kick right there by Jocko on the break. And then Mershard just kind of seems tired, like, and he moves in. And then it seemed right when he started to get aggressive, then he went for the takedown, and boom. Can I add someone on verdict app? What's a verdict app? Um, laser technician, what? Bring an extra bottle of Evil 100. I'm not going to go toting that thing around. We got a pass by now. Jocko's on top. Looking for it. He's out in the front, and he's going to take the back. Of Mershart. Mershart's gonna stand up. Jocko's still spinning around behind him. Staying heavy. Man. Now he's sitting out there in half guard, just putting in the work on Mershart. Mershart tries to step up. Now he's gonna see now this again. Just sitting right here in that front headlock position. Nowhere to go. Rip body shots. Make Mershart. There he goes. He tried to duck underneath. Nice job, and he did it. My man stepped over. Jocko stepped over. He's got an answer almost for everything that, you know what I mean? An answer for everything that Mershart tried to do. And he's not really trying to hold the position. He's just kind of just letting Mershart, almost like what we were talking about earlier, he's not really, like, like super, like, trying to control the position. He's letting him, he's letting Mershart work to get to certain positions and then he lets him make the mistake and he capitalizes on it. Now look, and he's still just moving and moving and pressure and pressure. Starting MMA to make a career at 26. What are the important things to be done? Well, we'll wrap about that right after this round ends. So here we go with, um, but Mershart's going to try to kick him forward and get him off. But Jocko just did a great job. Like you said, man, he just stayed open, moved around, fluid. Now he, he got away. He stood up. Now they're back on their feet. He's got his hand raised in the air. Mershart's going to try to come after him and try to push. No can do. I mean, that was just, I don't know. Mershart just forgot to show up to the dance. Um, starting MMA to make a career at 26. What are the important things to be done, do you think, Mr. Yanez, at 26 years old? At 26. So, honestly, for me, the biggest thing is first and foremost, you have to be, you have to work off your back. You have to be able to get off your back and try to get on top somehow, or like use to getting off your back to stand up, to work your hands. And I feel like a lot of people, as soon as they get to their back, you know, a lot of people are, they just start freaking out, especially at 26. And if you've never done any type of combative sport or any type of sports in general, and you're just going into fighting and into MMA, you're going to freak out as soon as your back touches the mat. And you're going to have to get used to be just being on your back just in general because that's going to be a spot where you're at a lot of the times and just in general because, man, like there's not one MMA training session where my back doesn't hit the mat. Not at all. Like that's a place that we drill very, very often. So we um, like we get so used to it that it's just everything is just second nature from once we get to that position. So 
that would be my first first thing that I would have to address recovering how to recover from uh mount the back side control using the guard to frame and get up and using the butterflies and all that stuff so it would just be a lot of working escapes so that would probably be my first thing that I would probably go to and after that then we could start working like the hands and start working uh take down defense or offense because man as at 26 year old as 20 at 26 years old you already left you already far behind a lot of these guys who are fighting have been doing this since they were five, either done jujitsu or either done wrestling since that time and have just continued to train. So you're already running behind. So you might as well just end up being an anti wrestler and then using that against them. See, for me, no matter what your age, cardio, if you don't have the ability to get in shape, you're just like the other 85% of the will, would be, want to be, I'm going to be, as I'm sitting down with my beer and my cigarettes, one day going to become, I've got my tap out shirt on, I'm, I'm the next world champion. There's not, it's not like there's some secret club you get invited to. Conditioning, conditioning, conditioning. You Hand, you control conditioning. See, there's one thing. Skills can be adjusted. Skills can be adjusted, and they can be worked on, and, th- and shit just happens. But heart and conditioning, that's you. You own that. That is all you. I can look right at you and tell, do I got to call you and get you to show up? Do I got to, you know what I mean? Do I got to quit? Do I got to get you to show up to the gym every day? That's not my job. You should be there before the door opens. You should be the last one, the last one to leave. If you've already got your foot out the door and practice hasn't even started, you probably want to go do something else. My point is, that is you. You want to be that irritating individual that's constantly in there wanting to learn. And that takes conditioning. That takes conditioning. You got to learn I'm not knocking on the tap out shirts. What I'm saying is <laughs> I'm the guy who had the tap out shirt. And I'll still remember this. One time I showed up to, a, um, I was at an airport and, and this lady goes, Oh, look, honey, there's another one of those guys. There's another one of those tap out shirts. And he turns up, he goes, Oh no. Shh, shh. Oh no. Shh, shh. Not him. Not him. Shh, shh. And she's like, what? And I go, it's all good. And I looked at him and I gave him a high five and I walked away and I could hear him go, do you know who that was? Cause I and I looked and I said I know I go the difference is with the tap out shirts this one is actually me and it was my punch out shirt with me in the middle I go I'm that guy in the middle she's like I go I know I I but I get it I go people have literally ruined it for everybody right you ruined it for everybody damn it we can't even wear <laughs> tap out shirts because uh. the, because the people like to go out you know what I'm saying. And, but I had, it was funny because the, the guy was like, honey, honey, stop, stop, stop it. And I go, I go, it's okay. And I said, I told her, I go, I get it. She's like, what do you mean? I go, I go, but it, it is me on the shirt, but otherwise I get it. I mean, I wouldn't want to wear it either. <laughs> so that's what I meant by the tap. But no, but to get back to it, I mean, that's the biggest thing is conditioning. And the ability, the repetition, repetition. And it's again like what Adrian was saying, to work on getting off your back. Repetition, repetition. The work on getting into the wrestling. Repetition. The work on striking. All of it. Repetition. I know, like I said, there's a lot of people, they don't even want to put their time in on the bags. They don't want to do any of that. They just want to do the sparring. They just want to do the live. You know what I mean? Or, well, their version of live. But that's like... That's like a small side of it. It's the repetition, the day in, the day out, the grind. That would be, it doesn't matter what age you are. You can outwork anybody if that's what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? And it'll get you really, really far. That one jab a thousand times with the gas tank to utilize it, it's all that matters. As a person who has an entire just massive array of, of striking but can only make it, you know, for a round. How do you prevent brain damage from too much sparring? Well, that's the thing. You don't spar much, number one. And number two, there's so many things you can do differently. Shadow boxing is, again, one of the most underrated things that you can do because think about it. You're choreographing your dance. You're, and I mean, I'm talking about going out there, going through the motions, putting in three rounds of spinning, spinning footwork, preventing, imagining those hands coming at you, slipping. I'm not talking about just standing there I mean, shadow boxing is how you rehearse what you want to do, right? But I mean, to prevent brain damage, 
I mean, again, utilizing the sparring, Vong Sao back and forth, little things like that. But you do need to have some sparring, some moving around. And, I mean, if you really, truly are trying to prevent brain damage, I would probably stop putting all these things that have um, chemicals in your hair that can soak through. I would probably, I wouldn't go into a combat sport in general if I was truly worried about, the quote unquote brain damage side of it. But if I'm worried about, you know, I mean, why get in the car? What happens if you get in a wreck? I mean, little things like that. The point is being in good shape, learning how to work on your defense and try to avoid getting hit. The other thing to avoid really good damage is countering, making sure that they pay for everything they throw, hydrating yourself. I mean, there's a lot of things that need to be done. You know what I mean? In in the combative world. And the number one thing, I don't care who you are, is conditioning. You control that. You. Everything else can be adjusted. But you, that's on you. So when you see somebody get... Now, I'm not talking about getting tired because you know how it is, Agent. We'll get into those scraps where you just burn each other out. That's not what we're talking about. It's that one that with no conditioning at all. I mean, that's on you, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Conditioning is a really, really, really big factor in MMA. Like, if you if you don't have it and you're going against these dogs that absolutely have it, man, oh, it, they're looking at you, man, like, <laughs> they're looking at you like prime real estate, prime yep. ribs, man. Yep. Oh, absolutely. I, man, I, I love to break to break people and by that, breaking like, wills love, right break I wills love, that's my favorite thing to do <laughs> like in a fight if i see a little bit of a diminishment i am using that and i'm taking it and i am running as far as i can with it like so that that's what i love to do so whenever i see whenever i see a lot of these fighters uh and they don't really they, they don't work hard enough i usually tell them like bro you you think you might not be you think you're working hard enough but you're not not I even tell close a lot, of them, like, the, a lot of the fighters that uh that go to the gym and like I, i'm coaching i look at them it's like oh no i'm telling you right now you're behind and you don't you're not acting like it it was like, and you need to, you need to push harder. You have to go. Cause if not like this four times, this four times a week, you know, a lot of these people are doing seven days a week. Like you, I'm telling you, there's some crazy and the guys running they're doing on their own oh, in the yes. mornings, in the afternoons. And you know what I mean? The extra work, the shadow boxing they're doing at night. And the one oh. thing real quick, somebody said it in chat, never get intimidated on how you look shadow boxing, because think about it. If you knew wanted to work on your dance, what do we got to do? Oh. We walk our way through it until we remember, we memorize it. Then we oh. really start adding it in. Shadow boxing should look just like that. Imagine things coming at you. Imagine the sl- Imagine missing you, that that you should be running a muck doing three rounds of hard oh. shadow boxing, right? Look at him go, oh, go one hundred percent. Like I'm telling you, shadow boxing for me because whenever I first started with my coach, whenever I switched over from a gym to uh, the gym that my coach saw Salise was at, uh, whenever I switched over to that. I would show up because our training started at 7.30. Like the pros and amateurs start at 7.30. I would show up at 6.30 and shadow box for an hour. And that right there helped me so much more significantly than anything else because it helped me be like, oh, Rhythm, I can timing. Feel, I can, and even just then, like, using, like I had gotten my better footwork. I had gotten better, like, being able to throw my punches. Because when you throw your punch and you're actually, like, throwing with intent and shadow boxing, you can feel your feet underneath you. You can yep. feel whenever you're offset or anything. So you're like, oh, it's so much easier. Like, and then just being able to work on the defense, you can imagine someone throwing punches at you. What like, And then in my head, whenever I was shadow boxing, like, Oh man, I'm dropping my jab. So what would I do if uh, someone's dropping the jab? It's like I want to bring that hand. I want to bring that right hand. But after it's like, okay, well I got to start bringing my. Every scenario was just running through my head, and at times, man, I I would shadow box into like MMA stuff where I'd act like the guy took me down, start working my way back up, start doing the shadow wrestling stuff. So like it's, it is a lot, and it helped me significantly to the point where the guys who were doing two a days at the time where I was only coming in once, I'd be given that extra hour and. It may, it put me up there with them and technique and as well like being able to stay up and keep up with those guys. So 
shadow boxing just in general is super super important and that's what helped me evolve a lot farther in my early stages of my career i love hearing you say that because you learn how to push off your legs you're learning how to use your hips you're learning how to use your body underneath you and andrew's cool uh yeah the reason i asked about brain damage is because i took boxing classes and people hit way too hard when i couldn't intelligently defend myself see you are and i'm afraid of this when this happens like when you're in, like you said, when you're learning how to box, the last thing that you need to be doing is learning how to spar. It should be that again, bag routines and shadow boxing, bag routines, shadow boxing, mitt work, having a good coach putting you through mitt work is hands down the hardest thing, especially one that moves around. I'm not talking about standing in one spot and just doing this, the ones that make you move and move your feet around and make you move around inside that ring or that cage, that puts in a lot. See, that those are the things that I worry about a lot when people show up and they're like, and I tell somebody, hey, I they just go, I entered this, I just started at a new at a new MMA gym. What should you know, what's one of the things I should be looking for? And I said, bottom line, if they got you sparring in the first week, you're in the wrong place. You don't need those kind of bullies. You don't need to be dealing with that. You need to be a beginner and for a reason. You know what I mean? For a reason. You're learning. You don't need to get all disheartened right off the bat. Well, this is how I make you tough. No, it ain't. That ain't at all. At all how I make you tough. What it means, that, that, to me, that's just asinine. You don't need to do that at all. You shouldn't be sparring that soon. And I'm sorry that, you're, that you had to go through like that. You got the dizzy head and things like that. What you should be doing, again, you need to, the shadow boxing, so much comes from shadow boxing. It, it's unbelievable. You know what I mean? It's, it's unbelievable. Oh, I actually had to tell a guy that came in, he just did one class, but he was watching us pros just move around light. We have a, a drilling day and it was just like punches into the takedowns and everything. And once we get to the takedown, you get the takedown, you start doing jujitsu and you start like actually going. And the guy was just so impressed. He wanted to come in, but it was like his first day there. And he's like, he's like, nah, man, I'm tough. I, I can do that stuff. Like, I know I can. I was like, I was like, Hey bro. I was like, I'm gonna let you know right now. I was like, please. It's like, look, I, I don't want you to get hurt. A lot of these guys, they see guys like you who want to come in and they think they're tough. They're like, they want to go over here and spar everybody. I was like, you're going to get hurt. And I don't want that for you. Like, please just learn some things. And then after that, if you feel like, if you feel up for it, you're more than welcome to, you're more than welcome to come. But like, I just hundred percent want you to stay over there for that reason. And he stayed over, he stayed over in that basic class for two weeks and came up to me after it was like, you were completely right because whenever they had the little sparring movements, like the, you know, jab for jab. And all yeah, that yeah. Stuff, he's like, he knew. He's like, oh. Then he would watch us, uh, the pros, probably be like, oh, oh, it wouldn't have been good. So he, was like, <laughs> he, he was so grateful that I told him not to spar. <laughs> it was like, all right. Right. Yeah, right. Like, don't, don't. Well, hey, and guys, the, pull yourself the, back from that. The other thing you do is you go, all right, here's what I want you to do off the bat. Here's this jump rope. I want five, I want three five minute rounds. And then after that, let me see how you feel. And pretty much in, they're like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. All right, here we go. Here we go. Round one. Elkins. Connolly. We got, that was awesome. Too much talk. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, this is the fight with the movement of Connolly on the outside. Elkins already coming forward. I expected nothing else from Elkins. <laughs> He pushed it, but see, that's the thing is, I, Connolly does the same thing. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm excited to see how he handles this. But Elkins trying to come in and lead with the jab. I like how he's keeping that. Goes in for a single. He dropped in for a single. Ooh. Popped up through two right hooks. Dropped back Ooh, down for the right double to get. Down. Do you see that? I like oh, that. Oh yeah. It, it, there for a minute, Connolly thought he was gonna sprawl on that, and he said no. Nope, popped up, popped him twice. Got him into. Now he's got his back, and he's Elkins has already got his back looking to. Work on the neck, or no, he's still just working on the back, maybe rolling to the mount. He's got oh, an arm triangle right arm. now. He's got the arm triangle. Elkins has an arm triangle, but he's in oh, the guard. Oy. I like how he did that, though. He had to pull back the guard to stop that arm triangle, Adrian. Ooh. Now he's got closed guard. Elkins is kind of body head, body head. Connolly's got open guard now, looking to see who's going to try to make some movement here, stuck in this position. Man, 
And I just know with Darren Elkins, he's going to keep this up for all three rounds. Well, yeah, he don't he don't get tired at all. The way they get, now that's one thing again, right? When you have somebody like that that just has that kind of gas tank, and if you don't have those kind of people pushing, you're gonna feel it really fast, right? Oh, absolutely. You, you know, you can absolutely feel feel those guys that just have that nonstop energy, nonstop energy whatsoever. Like we used to have a guy that trained that trained, and he would do uh, triathlons, and he was like marathon oh. running all that stuff. Come in just and spar, and he would just wouldn't get tired. And I'm just like, oh, I hate <laughs> sparring that guy because like you would at least like when you go with a new new training partner, you're like, oh, you're fresh for the first three minutes. The next three minutes, you can feel the diminishment. And then like with this guy, it was just consistent putting up Max Holloway numbers, and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> That Clay Guida energy, laser technician, uh, yeah. pretty much. But that's it, right? So that's the fun thing to do. Now, again, Conley does a good job getting back up to his feet. But that's the thing. When you're fighting with someone like an elk and stuff, it's, you got to get used to that because they're constantly going to make you, right? They're constantly going to make you throw at an output you're not ready to do if, and that's the problem. Otherwise, you got to learn how to effectively somehow roll with shots hibernate at the same time that your defense is up, you know what I mean? Collect some energy and not spend everything at the same time. See, Elkins, right again, instantly, right when Conley thought he's going to be able to throw some punches, Elkins, he threw his two, let's exchange, nope, shoots a takedown, takes him down, and now here we are again, Conley, once again, is on his back. That's got to get frustrating. Oh, man. And I felt like, off, just even just off that shot in general, I know Elkins did a very good job of hiding of hiding that uh takedown attempt uh and i just feel like Conley just wasn't ready for the uh for the shot I, if i was Conley, i would have fully expected the elkins to commit start committing to the wrestling immediately so i would have had a lower stance than uh than what Conley was having just just a minute ago you know and the thing that's kind of freakish though is because again you'll put your hands up what'll happen is he'll hit those two and you're like oh i didn't i didn't want to throw a counter because i was worried about the takedown so then he steps in again and throws that two and you're like that's it i'm getting this counter up and then he shoots underneath you so what happens is because you're so busy worrying about stopping that takedown we never throw those counter punches and it makes us look slow or they're like and lethargic or something you know what i mean that's kind of the the problem but that's what's frustrating about fighters like that where they put that one two and then they're going to change the level and you're like oh i'm going to make sure that i stop this so you're almost you don't get to be a wrestler until they're in on the legs right and oh, then yeah. you have to become the wrestler but until that point you have to strike but that's the one thing elkins guida and a few of them they do really well is your hands stay frozen because you're like I don't know when he's going to shoot. It's like, man, he just got off two free punches, but I was waiting for the takedown. Dang, he got off two more, but I was waiting for that damn takedown, right? And it gets frustrating. Ooh. Nice okay. job right there. Elkins is taking the top. A lot of aggression. Connolly's trying to get up. Elkins is going to take his back. Stand up. Elkins is going to, Connolly's going to walk over to the fence. Elkins is all over him. See, wrestle and scramble, wrestle and scramble, wear you out. <laughs> And then here we go. Now Conley's trying to walk his way back to the center. And Elkins has already had two big takedowns. He's got, or three takedowns, pardon me. He's got him scrambling. Conley's just going to have to figure out how to get comfortable in here. If I, if I was Conley, I would start throwing, oh, ooh, that was a nice elbow off the break. Uh, I would start jabbing to the chest and start jab and start throwing the straight punches to the chest. Just, just, to, just to get, just so when Elkins does end up level changing, yeah. it's going to punch him right in the face. And also kind of it discourages that that shot attempt when you start throw, throwing the shots to the chest, even just going to the body in general. You know, that's one thing that also I've been working on it as well as like throwing to the chest and making sure I start throwing body shots just in general. Because, man, someone takes a shot, you throw you throw you throw that left hook to the body, man, you immediately have an overhook. You have the overhook, you have a wizard just immediately. So that's a little things I've been working on here and there. But I would like to see that from Conley chest little bit more body work and you know just trying to keep a little bit just trying to be a little bit better with uh bring your hands back uh in a good position Love. and be in a lower position yourself so i like it i like it we've got fifty-two thousand points over here for uh tristan Conley, terra formality twelve thousand over here for uh oh f society seven two with twelve thousand for darren elkins what maidenless oh yeah he's maidenless <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's uh from elder ring uh 
this one game it's a game that everybody's been playing i i've been wanting to play it but like my friends have already been telling me it's like yeah one of the first one of the first things is uh somebody tells you that you're maidenless so that pretty much they say that you don't get no women <laughs> oh hey i got it i got it yeah all right <laughs> <laughs> oh here we go again so tristan i want to see what kind of comfort he has you know what i mean yeah elkins looks on point but now it's like what is tristan going to do differently see elkins bombing in there with three four shots right now you know what i mean that's just pressure 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 Ooh, nice calf kick You know, you can see Tristan wants so bad to try to get comfortable in here, but Elkins just all over him, clinching, clinching, <laughs> trying to get that underhook. Ooh! Oh, see, then he gets you scrapping, yeah. and then Elkins drops down. But now Tristan does a good job of pulling him, peeling him off, pulling him back up, getting him back in an over under position, and then they start throwing the knees and they're bombing. Now he tries to tie the head, throw an elbow. Elkins throwing shots, and then they get back to the center. And here we go again. Elkins is pressure, pressure. See, Tristan, you got to be the one trying to pressure him a little bit. I like that. See, and that's another thing. Because they're going to shoot, and you are only really going to get one shot off, make it your right hand. You better throw that big right hand and move. See, he tried to step in. Elkins immediately changed levels, drops in mid-level, drives him up against the fence and pushes. He does a really good job of fighting on the inside. Yeah. Oi! Like... A lot of people aren't comfortable throwing punches in, in that little phone booth area. Yeah. Elkins just does a really good job of that. Oh, nice Wait. takedown. He's passed. You um, like, and that's the other thing I like with Elkins is he passes the he passes the guard on the way down. Now he's in he's into a, well, Connolly was able to get the guard back, but right? Yo, little big man, triple six. Hey, what's up, bro? Love you on Ultimate Fighter Five. Much love, my friend. TY TY. How's everybody doing out there in YouTube land? Hope you're doing well. Make sure you drop over here to Twitch TV slash UFC. Hit the follow button. We're on here all the time. Jump in the chat, say what's going on. Book it to face, book it to face, and Twitter. Hope everybody's doing well. Here we go. Elkins is sitting in that half guard. Has him pushed up against the fence. Conley's just getting overwhelmed, chat, right now. He just, Delkin, Elkins is all over him. Just putting in the work, putting in the work. Now he's going to take his back. He's got one hook in. You can't start laughing without telling us what it says. <laughs> no, 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 I'm reading chat. <laughs> I'm reading chat. Uh. Now, look at that. I like that power. I'm going to try to break him down. Break him down. Put the feet in. See, I like that. Get that half power half. Try to drive more. Look at that power half right here. I love this power half. And then he goes right into a half. Yeah, he's all over him. Conley's just stuck. There's not a lot he can do. But, right? Into now that body triangle. Right into the body triangle. Ooh. Ugh. Not a good position right now. Oh, but Conley's oh, able wow. to come up. Elkins lost it. Now Conley's got him pushed up against the fence. Elkins breaks away. Conley's trying to chase him. Now, see, double jab right hand. There's the kind of frustrated right hand you need to throw right there, Mr. Connolly. Now Elkins is going to come in on chat. Go ahead. I feel like if he were to go the double jab overhand and then reload and hit the uppercut. I feel like because as soon as the overhand, I, I, I'm noticing that that left hand is coming up a little bit too high. And when he comes up, the elbow is is pretty much parallel to the ground, which is leaving a lot of space. See, I feel like the uppercut, he just did it just, just again. That I feel like the uppercut would land. Ooh, that was a nice knee. I, I don't know if, I, if it was just me, but I heard someone groan. There we go. Now, look, Conley's starting to track him. Big right hand. Big right hand by Elkins right there. Conley's trying to be the aggressor, chase him. Elkins is out on the warning track. He's out there moving around the outside of the octagon. Conley's trying to be a little more aggressive, but then a big right hand, double jab oh. right hand. See that mid-level, try to do that uppercut. Elkins tries to push forward. Oi. Now they're back to the center, starting over. Here we go. Conley trying to work his way in. Elkins drops in on a single. Nice. He dumps it, switches to a double, takes his back. GG. What? The fight principle? Something, Chrono. No, we got stoppages. Oh, fence grab potentially. Oh. Reset the position. Nice I, job. Nice job. Go ahead. Ooh, I, I've never, I, honestly, I've never seen that before. Like, no, that, this ref cool. just. Cool that they did that. This, in that exact same position. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. 
the ref just did that. Look, now Elkins gets back out to the center, trying to put in the work. Conley's trying to chase him Ooh. down. Did that jump knee land? Ooh, maybe. Maybe. What's that, Jens? Giannis, what do you eat, Adrian, when, you, when you're not in camp? Cheat meals. Oh, man. Anything and everything. <laughs> yeah. No, I just, I just had a... Uh, what, I, what I really look for is I really look for street tacos. Street tacos, my aunt makes oh. makes them very, very well. Also, any pizza. It doesn't matter where it's from. <laughs> I can go Domino's. I can go Pizza Hut. I can go even worse and go to Little Caesars as well. So I don't care. As long as, long as I got pizza, I'm good. But uh, probably, uh, oh, another place. They, it's a, it's this uh, food truck. Food truck down here in Pasadena, Pasadena, Texas. Uh, it's on Red Bluff. It's called El Chinos, and they have this uh, Hispanic burger. It's like a Mexican burger. They have uh, is beef, beef, beef burger with oh. avocado, bacon, ham, egg. It's it, and and queso fresco, like fresh cheese and everything. So it's really, really good. I love it so much. Oh Oof. yeah, brisket, brisket on top of that too in Texas, bro. One hundred percent. I, I can You know what? I, I, I'm honestly really disappointed in myself that I left brisket out. I'm sorry, guys, and I apologize for that. Here we go. The round three, round three, round up the bat. I just don't think Conley has an answer to the pressure and the takedowns. You know what I mean? The takedowns that of of Elkins. Ooh, that was a nice right by Elkins. Oh, that lead hook right there that time by Elkins. And then right when you think you're going to get into a swing, a slugging match, Ooh, he shoots a takedown. Go ahead. Changes levels. Changes levels on it. He, Ooh, he's doing a good job. He's doing a good job trying to time those jump knees in. Uh, try, trying to catch him on the way in, but, you know, Darren, Darren, oh, that's a nice. The inside fighting right now is just, I'm, I love it. Like, I'm absolutely just loving it. Elbows in tight. Ooh, nice left hook by uh, Darren Elkins. He's pushing. See, Conley's trying to be more aggressive, but the problem is, there it is. There was a nice yeah, little there we go. touch to the liver and a right hand over the top by Conley. The Elkins goes right into a single change up. See, Conley's able to sprawl that face up, get him up. Elkins is smothering. See, there's Ooh, a good nice elbow, elbow, good hands. Nice job. Conley made this. some really good adjustments right now. He's catching that face with a cross face and standing him up and be able to create, getting more of a fight going on right now. He's doing a good job. They're in Ooh. close. Ooh. Phone booth fight, oh. he says. Look at that elbow. GG. Oh, uppercuts. Oh, oh, my goodness. Two big right hands by Elkin right there. Conley ate him. They're in that over-under position. And that's the problem. Boom, boom, plum. Boom, boom, tie up. He doesn't give Conley a chance to throw anything unless he's able to do it inside. Then he grabs the head and he was able to throw two hooks real quick. Ooh. <laughs> you and you were just talking about this earlier. The phone booth fighting, fighting it, fighting in close range. Yep, this that is dirty it. Dirty boxing, and they're and they're lighting each other up right now. I love this. Yep, look at and Conley. Oh. Conley had the bite and do it, whether you want to or not. You got to get in there and do it, and that's my point. You start grabbing a lot of these guys. This style of fighting will just it wears people out, and they're going to have to either bite down deep, you know what I mean, or, or train for it in the first place and make it part of the game plan. But you just don't give them the freedom. And that's it. Now you can't just go in there all nimbly bimbly. You know what I mean? You gotta you gotta be able to you gotta work your way in, but you. Once you get in there, stay in there. Ooh, no, that was a nice right hand. By, you see by that Conley. right hand by Conley? Then Elkins came back with two. This is how you do it. Come back, man. You throw one, I'll throw two. Oh, that's sick. I just got my 77 year old father to start watching MMA with me. Gangster. You should have seen the look on his face when he first saw Dirty Boxing. I'm like, yeah, that's legal. There it is. Nice takedown by Elkins. Conley is just, and again, now you see, but look at that deep breath. That Conley right there, he's like, oh, man, I got to push. This is how you really go after that gas tank. And this is that style of fight. A lot of people, they just don't have it. They just cannot keep up with something like this. Unless they can hit you early and get you out. You know what I mean? These kind of fights are horrifying for a lot of people. Look at Conley's going to try to work his way up. Elkins is still grinding, 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 pushing forward. Conley's going to give up his back. There you go. But he's on referee's position, all fours. 
Now you got to sit on that one leg. Elk is doing a good job. Ugh. There you go. Now he throws a leg in. Nice job. He's going to figure for the body. There we go. He's got the back. What would you score it? Oh, man. What are we? I'm 10 9 in this thing. Ridiculous. We got five takedowns and everything else. I mean, he's got to be. I, has Elkins lost the round? I don't think Elkins lost the round. No, I don't think he has either. I think he was. I, I believe he was on the way to losing this round, but he got that takedown. Now he's doing a lot. And more now what he's top. doing. Yeah, yeah, he's got the figure four locked. He's got his back and he's throwing shot after shot after shot. And this actually looked to be the better round. Oh. Now he's got the rear naked choke. It's getting in really deep. It's getting really tight. Conley's trying to fight the hand. Elkins is doing a one arm choke right now. Now he's going to go to a short choke. He's doing still a good job now. Fight the hands back and put it behind the shoulder. Slide that down. He's still got the one arm choke. El oh, yeah. wow. Conley got out amazing. of it. Yee, yee. Oh, I love it. Now he's starting to work the shot. He's got the figure four. He's just putting it into work. But you see what I mean, chat? That is just the thing. It's just the overall conditioning. He's working him all the way to the last second. Maybe, but at least this commentary is way better than the actual UFC commentary. Yeah, stress grad, love and appreciation. Yeah. Tag, D, D, tag Daniel Cormier and Dominic Cruz. In Don't, that. You Let them die. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. You leave me out of that one. I just, this is, this is, it's like letting people know the really, see, you got to get out there and share. We want everybody to know about this fishing hole. We're not trying to keep this a secret. It's like, dude, we got Jens and then his guests. He's got Adrian here. They're chatting it up. Um, Jens, your favorite Mexican food? Um, oof, I'm telling you what, to be honest, I'm really, again, my tacos, I, I want to do my lengua. And my cabeza tacos, I really like a lot um, with the hot sauce and stuff like that. We get them down the road here, my little short corn tacos. But I also like my favorite is a barbecue, uh, a pork butt so that I can get the shredded, the shredded, right? The shredded pulled pork and make tacos out of that. My wife will get in and we'll, we'll throw that down. So that's pretty good. And then the food, that everybody's talking about my cheat meals that I like more than anything is my pho. I got to do the pho. Yeah, the barbacoa, right? But I like to get in there, so I'll get the barbecue. That's one thing I like to smoke, a big old pork butt, and then have all that pulled all that pulled beef or pulled pork, and then we'll just, a whole bunch of that, just start making tacos on a daily, on a daily. But the Laguna Cabeza, when it comes to the hot sauce and stuff, woo, right? Oh. Oh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry now. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. And it, it's but the pho, the biggest thing is having my pho, man. That's when we do that. That's pho days last about three or four days here. One massive pot, and it's with the soup, right? And it's it's incredible. But yeah, Ooh. love it. Man, you know I haven't actually sat down and actually made pho, pho. But I do love getting. I do love going to get get some pho. You got to go to the Vietnamese, yeah, the Vietnamese soup, man. It's it's impressive. Ooh. But my wife, we make it. It's just woof. You know what I mean? We tear it up. But Elkins with the win. Elkins with the win. <laughs> I think Jen is more Mexican than Adrian right now, bro. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be hot too. There's no if, ands, or buts. My pho, oh, yeah. oh, the pho is so hot that it, it'll blow your mind. It, it's oh, spicier. Get out of here. Oh, <laughs> it's it got. That's the way I live. It's like it got to be spicier. Get out of here. Well, that and it's quiet. It's the, it's a quiet, quiet talk because if you wrong pipe it, the pain oh. that you're about to go through if it goes down the wrong hole. So there's no real talking. It's very quiet. You got to focus. You're focusing on your food and you just, you know what I mean? You got to be quiet. That's, but my, it is so hot and so red. It's crazy, man. Yeah, it's nuts. But I've got, I've got the beef coming. I just got this new smoker. I got to, I got to build and put up. It's, um, I don't even ask me the name. I'll have to go look. It's like a bullet smoker. It's just a round tube going up that I like to use there. Ooh, Zach Efron. AK Sue, it's your dude. Um, <laughs> I love it. Hey, my New York buddies.
Let me see. Let me see I here. Can't see the <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Dude, he loves Zach Efron. Stop playing. <laughs> Quit it. All right. So oh, this fight right here. I'm Jared Gordon, Grant Dawson. Yeah. Soon we will have the smoking with Jen Stream. Yeah, we will. I got you. I got you. It'll, it's happening here coming up. I got to put this thing together. What up, Linda? I can definitely agree with uh, stressed grad about the commentary. Oh, I've been switching back and forth here. You and ESPN prefer you here. Much love. Y'all are too kind, but that's because you're stuck dealing with me on a, on a daily anyway. But I love it. I love it, man. I love being here. May 7th, Charles Olivieta, right? And then I got that. See, I don't like that because I've got this, this god dang, this jury thing, this jury summons. Ugh. It's just, it's just looming. It's looming. Uh, and yeah, and mine is May 9th. So, yo, Jaden FC with the sub. Much of an appreciation. All subs go to support the American Cancer Society. But if this jury is different. You can skip jury duty for six months. No, here's what. Okay, no, watch this though. So I had to fill out a questionnaire online. Okay. And then I have to, on, I believe it's. Saturday, I can't call until after 5 p.m. on Saturday, and they'll let me know if I have to show up on Monday. We don't even have to show up in person or any of that. That's just, it, it, it's just, it's crazy. But it's all based off of that now. You know what I'm saying? That's just nuts. So you, I, I got to call back in Saturday night and then find out if I'm, find out if I'm in or not. Oh, it's going to be a nightmare when I show up. I can tell you right now, Jens don't like being uncomfortable. When Jens has to go third person like this, Jens is going to say all kinds of just stupid stuff. I'm going to get in trouble. That's why I wanted to show up. I wanted to show up and have a uh, moment because, yeah, they they don't, yeah. Uh-uh! <laughs> I got streams. I have streams. I got to be. I got to be back. MMA Fanatic 7-4 with the Prime Game. Much love and appreciation. All subs go to support the American Cancer Society. Who do we got over here? Grant Dawson. 66,000 points for the natural born thriller. GG. We've got 16K for by Doran 754 for Jared Gordon. All right. All right. Let me click off these two. One. Two. Oh, I'm gonna move fast. Adrian, they're all yours. BRB, bio. Ah. Yo, what's up, guys? <laughs> uh. Yo, what's up, guys? Oh, shit. When's my next fight? My next fight still still being up, still kind of figuring out when I'm actually going to fight right now. Hopefully, I get something soon. Been asking, been talking, but hopefully, hopefully I hear something soon. I've been waiting, waiting to hear something. Adrian, I've been screaming at Dana. Dana, you need to fight. Oh, dude. I want to fight. I've been needing to fight. I'm fiending for a fight, guys. <laughs> Yannis need to stop ducking me. That's what. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'll see you in stream later, bro. I'll see you in stream. Gosh dang it. Nine fight unbeaten streak, eight zero oh, and one third largest control time percentage among active UFC fighters. Awarded UFC contract, Dana White Contender Series Season One, Week Six. Mr. Grant Dawson, let's go. Going even, I can't even type. All right, good, good. We got Cheeto or Font. I I personally have Cheeto. Later, late rounds. I had Cheeto Vera. I had Cheeto Vera winning. Good. All right. Cheeto. I like it. I like it at Cheeto. Like it. Like it. So we'll have to see. 
You know what I mean? Yo, corporatio. Corp or ratio. All right. How's I mean, everybody doing? I'm, I'm going to need to translate that. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, you're, you're on your own on that one, right? <laughs> Look at that. He looks ready to go. Here comes Gordon. Here comes Gordon. GG. Well, see, Dad, we got we got to talk to Sean or Mick, right, Maynard? Got to get rolling. Tell him, let's go. Let's do this. Like, I'm not even leaving the venue next time until the next fight is signed, all right? Yanez <laughs> <laughs> huh. blames his Apex losses on third parties. Oh, wait, what? Well, he's going to have a new oh, wait, partner. Oh, I'm coming in. Oh, uh, Amen. I'm popping in. I'm gonna, that's it. I'm getting it. Oh, real quick. Three-fight win streak for Mr. Jared Gordon. Fifth highest significant strike accuracy in UFC lightweight history with 54.8%. Former CFFC featherweight champion. Now you can continue. But look at get Man, only 22% over here. We got 17,000 F Society 7-2. Over there on Jared Gordon, GG. Bryphon, what? Dawson Vin turns out. Oh, GG. GG. All right, all right. Giannis, I got my debut in October, bro. What we saying? Am I fumbling it? Maybe. I don't know. No, no, you're not. You're not fumbling it. I thought you meant something else, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. No, you're not fumbling it. Not at all. Oh, we got inside jokes all day, every day. Fumbles, fumbling, yeah. I like it, it did. I like it, it did. That's what Google Translate. Oh, y'all killing me. UFC Gordon sleeping this guy. I think, yeah, hey, man, we'll have to find out. This is going to be tough right here, though. 33 years old, Gordon, 28, 5'10", 155 and a half. 5'9", 155 and a half. Gen um, no, no. I don't think so. That jacket of buffer, though, is just gangster. Love it. So on the reach again, like I always like it always it's it's the it's the length of both arms spread out, right? Pinky to yeah, finger to finger. All right, finger to I just finger. Have, I just wonder what like why they just don't go from go from armpit arm out. Yeah. That's it. Armpit out. Yeah, you would think they would just do arm length and leg length and all that stuff, but I don't know. Woo! I'm telling you, it's a wingspan, hunted. Poopy blowout. What up? What up? How you do? 18 wins, four losses. Look at this guy. I love this though. Hey, Jens and friends. Hey, hey I'm hey. a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Metaverse cop, 30,000 for Jared Gordon. Metaverse cop, 30,000. All right. We got no nonsense, Keith Peterson. <laughs> oh, here we go. All right, here we go. Here we go. Right to the center, right on the old monster. Look at this. Dawson does look a little bigger. I like this. All right. Hands up. Both fighters feeling out process. This initial, right? That teep kick by Dawson. Calf kick by Gordon, but a right hook by Dawson. Then that teep kick again. Urban Music TV with the raid. Much love and appreciation, TY Raiders. Hope you're doing well. We're in the middle of a fight. GG. All right, here we go. All right. <laughs> here we go. See, Dawson's trying to be the aggressor. I like that he's walking forward. But see how Jared comes in, throws three punches. Rod's batting and backs Ooh. out that right over the top. That oh. kick just missed. Did he? Did we got another calf kick by Gordon? Yeah. Over under position. He went for a trip, sat him down. Gordon's on top. Nice. He went for a trip. I think kind of got run over, but now he's going to work to keep his guard. Gordon's going to try to drive up. He's got to give up his back. He's going to try to fight the hands. Oh, we're up. We're up. All right. Redo. Here we go. Back up. Hashtag it. Sorry. Thank you. 
I have everything else, right? Or did I mess up? Okay, I got everything else. Okay, all right, sorry about that. All right, here we go. Now, Oy! we got to wow. spin the win by Dawson. Spin the win. Went over the head of, of Gordon. He goes in for a single leg. Nice job. We've got a guillotine attempt by, by Gordon. He's got it in pretty tight. We got a body lock by Dawson, who's going to try to take this down. Jumped up by Gordon. Gordon's oh, keeping it. Goodness. Rolled through. Still has it tight. Guard is passed. But he did a really good job rolling back out in front. Nice job. He rolled with it. Wow. GG. They're both on their feet. That was kind of sick. Giannis, the way he held on to that guillotine, but still was able to slip back around. And after he got the guard pass, rolled back up on top and got that was nice. Yeah, that was beautiful. I'm I'm just sitting here just looking at amazing because that was a, like a good little transition. Cause I, I definitely thought he was he had it and I thought he was gonna finish it once he once he got to the guard position, but he didn't really uh close his guard too well. But and then Dawson was just doing all the right things, and then and that scramble was just beautiful. And I like Ooh, right nice. there. See, he drops down to meet him. Grant goes in for a single leg. Now he's gonna step over on a leg. He's got Gordon's back. He's gonna try to get those legs sprawled out. If he does, we got bad days, bad days. I happen. I think we have a figure four around the waist by Dawson on Gordon. This is the spot when he's trying to ride those arms out. He's going to take the back, fight the hands. He's got figure four. And this is a big thinking out process right now. Yeah, he's doing a really good job of fighting the hands. What do you think? Frustrating position like this. What do you got to do if you're Dawson to try to put this thing away? You think I would I would start going if I, I would start going with the misdirection, start acting like I'm a choke with one hand and keep and keep and keep going misdirections on 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 the chokes. Like act like you're going to choke with that top hand that he's punching them with and then just pry that small of the chin down. So when he attacks that hand to pull down, because everybody wants to go two on one on that hand. So once he uses both hands to pull that down, that's when you slip the other one right underneath. See, I like yeah, what yeah. he's doing right there. Just sitting back and just ripping lefts to the face and just make him have to work. Just start put him down, put Gordon down to the side there and just give yourself a free reign to start bringing those left hands and see if he can try to, you know what I mean, and just start scoring the points on the punches for sure. And anybody's doing a good job. Um, Leonardo, um, RO8, uh, what happened to Tyra? I think Tyra was the first fight, right, that got canceled. I'm not sure why. But now again, same position right here. So it's a bad, I mean, it's a bad spot to be in, but there's not much that Grant can do. Jordan, Gordon trying to get his shoulders flat on the canvas as much as possible and fighting the hands at the same time. And see, it's when Grant does this right here, leans back and fires the left, left, left over the top. I would just sit back and just throw these punches like this and be able to, like, and just score the points. You're not going to, like, look, you see how Gordon's up there? He's blocking now right here. Yeah. Giannis start ripping body shots, body shots this, and maybe start making him forget, you know, but he's not going to notice how he's not going to let go of that, that other hand, the right hand of of Dawson. So we got one on one there, even two on one. But see right here, you got free body shots. Start ripping body shots. Score your points uh while you're there, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Ooh. There you go. So he's back. I like how he's angling back and just ripping those shots, ripping those shots. GG. <laughs> GG. Good round. Ooh. Move that. Got that. What do we have over here? Oh, who came in with the 93? Big Lex money, 93,000 channel points. Woo -woo. All right, all right. We'll see what kind of difference we can do in this round. But that was definitely, I would say, the round stealing moment was the triangle and the, you know, the positioning, don't you think? Oh, okay. So promotional officials announced Saturday that the bout between newcomers Tatsudo Taira and Carlos Candelario, forgive me if I butchered the names, uh, were scratched from the card at the apex due to an illness, not COVID related is what it, what it was. Just in case. That was that 25 er fight, right? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. 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 One sec, one sec. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Back to the center. Round two. Chat round two. Gordon walking out to the center, being a little more of the aggressor.
Oh, nice lead hook, nice lead hook. Did what? What's that? When you defended your belt against Penn before the fight, did any part of you believe the hype? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's not even funny. He knocked out Dean Thomas, who beat me. The only guy to beat me at the time was Dean. He beat my my roommate. My college roommate was Joey. Ooh, one second, he goes in on a shot. We got Grant's got a takedown on Gordon. Gordon's taking down again. Joey Gilbert from Chicago. And that what you people don't know is he, he transferred to Boise State from Chicago to be with his brother Danny. We were all at Boise State University. He was an All-American from Michigan. Joey was a phenomenal wrestler. Phenomenal wrestler. And when BJ beat him, oh, I'm not going to lie about shit. That was like an older brother to me. He was a junior in college when I was a, a redshirt freshman and they go and put that kind of beating. So now here we are, like we didn't even leave in this. We are now the second round body triangle. Gordon is on his back. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. Dawson has the back of Gordon and working on it on the uh, rear naked choke again. We right where we left off in the last round. Uh, so I'll take the second real quick. So yes, I was pretty stunned, but the thing that pissed me off the most was I was the world champion and I was like, it just, to be that underdog, I was just livid. I was just, yeah, I was angry. So I had to do what I had to do. But I was also in the position that you're not going to be as strong as Matt Hughes. You can't kick like Pat Militic. And I got well-rounded Jeremy Horn. So, and I've got my entire team on top of the single fact that I had more than anything else. You're never going to outwork me and you will not you will not, you will not out, you'll never outwork me. You won't out condition me. And if I can melt you, I'll melt you. And that's how I lived. That's how I believed. That was my life back then. You know what I mean? So here we go. Same position. Exactly. Hand fighting, hand fighting, hand fighting. What do you think Gordon's got to do in this position? I mean, he just, he's got to ride this agent. Just stay patient. Not, oh, he got, he got to keep trying to fight off to the side. And he got to, he got to break that, he got to break that body triangle. He has to get off to the side. And for me, I would be going towards the lock to have that lock on the lock foot on the floor and then start going for my escape. Because in, in this position, he's just kind of get he's kind of what is shown for the last three minutes is that he's just kind of just getting pounded out. He's there's not really much too much going on except for just Dawson. Well, there he goes. Oh, Perfect. nice job, that nice job. It. There you go. GG he's up. Now he goes in on that single right off the bat. Gordon's got to try to figure out how to fight this off. And then we'll see what happens. But he's up now. But he, Gordon's got a leg. He looked nice. to try to trip down. I mean, I'm sorry. Dawson had the leg of Gordon, had it curled up. Then he went for the takedown, which he hit the floor. Gordon did a great job of standing right back up there. He's got the underhook and pushed Gordon up against the fence. He's got the head in the pocket, and he's trying to break Ooh, him down. That was a nice little trip. Nice little trip against the fence. He had the single, and then... Uh, Kind of lifted up his other leg and just swept that foot from underneath him. Got the takedown. Now Gordon's back up. Doing a really good job. I, I, I'm liking the little small wrestling that details that he's doing. There we go. Now we're free and we're back out towards, well, now it's Gordon trying to drive forward. We got Dawson on the outer, he's on the outer skirt, dancing around, moving, trying to stick that jab. Big Ooh, kick. Ooh. Nice. That got close. Yeah, it did the kick by Gordon right there on Dawson. Not bad. Now, again, Gordon is trying to be the aggressor, but obviously you don't want to be too aggressive knowing that Dawson's going to try to drop down for a single, but he's chasing after him. You got to put the heat on him a little bit. Gordon's after him. He's got him He's got him pushed up against Ooh. the fence, throwing elbow. Nice little elbow. Nice drop down. He level changed by Dawson. Goes in on a single. He's got it twisted to a double. Right around the hips. Gets the takedown. Now Gordon's going to try to move his back and try to walk it up against the fence, possibly. There we go. Now he's going to try to take the back or just sit on that one leg. Nice job. He's sitting on that, on the outside Easy. single. Leg thrown Gordon. in. And now Gordon, he's just going to control job. it. Oh, big oh. shots, big shots. Just the wrestling, right? The wrestling. It, yeah, and he's, he's finding that the, it's... It's not like he's looking for the back. It's just creating the opportunities for it to be there. That's wow. That's amazing. And now he's doing a good job. Gordon's just trying to collect himself again, right? Trying to fight the hands. My man Dawson's on top, and that's the round. The ring, the round, the control time of Dawson right now is ridiculous. I don't know what Gordon's going to do in this third round, but.
Yeah, I was a big underdog, a big underdog. But, I mean, but he was. I mean, he came out, he was, you know, the first American world champion, jiu-jitsu practitioner, and he was just, and he was knocking everybody out. Now, see, the one that really made me the underdog is he knocked out Uno in 30 seconds. I went five rounds with Uno to win the, the inaugural lightweight world title, right? And that was one of the things that, so that really had, and I was commentating the fight. And all I could say was, he's not evil. He's not me. <laughs> I didn't know what else to say, but I was blown away. I wasn't expecting BJ to do that. And like I said, in the second round when he had that arm bar, I thought I was in trouble. Oh, Giannis, who do you got? Gatchi or Olivieta? Man, I, I have doubted. I have picked against uh, Oliveira almost in every big fight he's been in. And I've been proven wrong every single time. So I'm switching it up to switching it up this time around and I'm picking Oliveira this time. Even though Gaethje, like in my head, is like he's that guy to me right now. So it, it's hard. It's a hard I'm going I'm like 55, 45 Oliveira. So I I think Oliveira is gonna get it, but I would not be surprised if uh Gaethje were to knock him out or just have win a five round award. Oh yeah. Here we go. Gordon trying to be the aggressor again, but the pro at, at what point, right, Adrian? The thing is, Gordon oh, yeah. knows he's got it. He knows. He has to know, right? He's down two rounds. But the reality is, yo, Merk Mitsu, Merk Mitsu with the two months. Much love and appreciation. T.Y. also is going to support American Cancer Society. So what I'm saying is, Gordon wants to be aggressive, but here's the problem. But Dawson Ooh. missed on that single leg and paid for it. A lot of punches right there by Gordon. He's got to kind of be the aggressor, but, right? But Oh, nice. Nice. Here we go. Gordon's going to try to stop these takedowns. Here he comes. He's pressuring. Push it, Gordon. Push it. I love it. Oh, see, Dawson tries going on a double leg, goes for the takedown. He's trying to he fight it off the side. He has to fight the hand. Get off to one side. There you go. Yo, Jens, my sub keeps unsubbing itself. I, I don't know. I don't even know, but I'm not sure what happens. Just show up every day, I guess. And well, thank you for thank you for going through it. So we got a break. Now we're back to the center. Boom. Dawson drops down for a single leg right off the bat. Oh, we did a forward nice. roll to get out of that. Nice job. Gordon gets out of it. Got the head in the pocket. That's where you nice want to be. Dirty boxing. Love that little dirty boxing. Underside, upside, those uppercuts. Keeping that head in the pocket. You got to keep trying to pressure. You know you're down. That little up elbow by Dawson. I like it. Trying to keep Gordon from dropping his head. He fires an up elbow. Little jump knee. Look at that. Gordon's pushing it. Gordon's pushing it. There you go. A single leg by single leg by Dawson. Oh, we got a cut. Ooh. We've got ketchup on Gordon. Oh. And now look, he's got a nice choke. Oh, Dawson rolled through the guillot the guillotine. GG. They're back on their feet. Oh, I like it. Gordon is oh. he's 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 doing it. He's forcing a dog fight right now. He was gonna go for level change. This is it. Yes. He has to turn off the fence. He has to turn off the fence. Grant's going to start looking for that shot. Driving forward. Ooh, nice little Ooh. level change. Nice, nice. Walking him down. Look at that. Oh, he's still pushing. He's still pushing. Yeah, they're dead. Ooh. Yeah, they're wrecked. I mean, they're tired. You know what I mean? That's the one thing that... But Gordon's got to muscle through this. He's got to know he's down. We got to slip. He jumps on top of him. Looks like... Dawson slipped. I mean, he's out in front. Go ahead. Yeah, he got to sprawl out. He got to get. He got. He has to get that leg back. Can't let. He can't let. He can't let Dawson control that leg. Playoffs. What are you talking about? Playoffs. Anybody know that? <laughs> All I say is the Colts. All right, here we go. Now he's gonna sprawl back. Nice job, Jared. Not allowing the takedown to happen. Here we go. Look at Dawson is all over him, smothering, smothering, smothering chat. Got him pushed up against the cage. Grant, I mean, Gordon's trying to move his way out of it. Oh, down, geez. drops down. Here he goes again. He's going to grab the leg. Was it Vikings? It wasn't Vikings. Was it Vikings? I thought it was uh, the Colts. Maybe it was the Vikings. Playoffs? What are you talking about? No, 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 about no playoffs. <laughs> a long time ago, Sports Center. The fact that I can remember that part. 
Oi, nice scramble. He's got his back again. Oh, Gordon man. tried to do everything. And now it's locked up. Oh, it Figure deep? four. He's got it in the choke. Gordon trying to fight it off. Oh. It was the Colts, wasn't it? Jeez. Then he tapped him. Wow. Oh, it took him two round, third round. He got him. But that was talk about persistence. Persistence. Dang, man, that's tough. He just got out wrestled. There was just nothing he could do, right, Adrian? It was, I mean, he just got out wrestled. Oh yeah, he was doing all the right, all all the right things. He was, the the big movements were exacerbated by the small movements that he was doing. All the small things he was doing were 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 paying dividends in the end. And man, I like that, he, my man. Yeah, yeah it was just it, it, he he. He killed it. He he had his wrestling exchanges were were very were perfect. Constant all day on on point with those single leg boom. And the way that he did it too, drop down a single leg snatch. Chat, you just drop down, you snatch up that single. You don't drop down to the knees and commit and get sprawled out and get your motion stopped. You just change the boom boom level right into a, a single leg snatch. Drive the head, drive across, push. You know what I mean? But he did a great job. But it always ended up in this position right here, figure four on your on his back with a figure four and constantly working for that. You know what I mean? Constantly working for that rear naked. Jim Mora, coach, when he said playoffs in November 2001, the Colts. Yes, Brypin. Jim Mora, <laughs> playoffs? We don't know nothing about no playoffs. I can't even squeak at the way he said it. Playoffs? <laughs> GG. GG, Dawson. That had to be horribly frustrating to be Gordon, you know what I mean, in that situation. Let me move these real quick. Don't stand corrected because it made sense. Chance, those our guys are lucky he didn't join the Huskers. What? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Not bad. Now we've got Brito and Feely. Feely and Brito coming up. Not bad. How's everybody doing out there in the chat world? Hope everybody's doing well. Appreciate y'all hanging out with myself and my partner, Adrian Yanez, watching fights. You know what I mean? Um, Oscars ran from the Big 12, so now they're just kind of counting down. There's a lot of... Everybody's at top team. Everybody's at top team. You know you can volunteer at turtle sanctuaries? Are you serious? Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> Do they got turtle sanctuaries in Iowa? You know, we're naked choke submission. Yo, G, 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 G. Do what? They got him in Florida, but I'm not a Floridian. I'm, I'm an Iowan. I can't. I don't know. Me don't know about such things. Oh, really? Grant Dawson was offered Nebraska wrestling? No way. What's that? Kiki, uh, who who won? Dawson. Grant Dawson. Kilt it. Kilt it. K-I-L-T. Kilt it. You can volunteer daily anywhere. Oh. All right. Here we go. Thank you. Appreciate it. Answer his questions. Yeah. Yeah, man. I like it. The turtles, though. Sammy the turtle. Is that what it is? Sammy the turtle. That was a sad movie. I cried a little bit. You know what I mean? Let's see what we got going on over here. Talking to the moon. Oosh. <laughs> Here's your out if you want it. Like it. I'm not. I'm done. 
All right, so right there. That's what we got to give you another deal so you can see the chat. Is that what you see? You're trying to look at the chat? Oh, yeah, that's all I'm, that's all I'm looking at the chat. Yeah, we got to put you on a booth and we got to make it so you look up and you can see the you can see it like that. <laughs> I mean, thoughts on, on the next fight? Well, ah, Anderson Brito, Andre Feely. I don't know. What do you think, AJ? What, what are you thinking on this fight with Brito Man. and Feely? Man, I, I'm I'm just really excited to see Andre Feely uh, go back in there, get back in there, because every single time he's he fights, man, it's always it's it's like it's always great. I saw him fight whenever he fought Danny Pineda. That that fight right there, he was showing such a master class. It sucked the way that fight ended, but man, he's shown so much improvement. I just can't wait to see him fight again. I hear it. And right here, we've got Natural Born Trilla, 250,000. 250,000 channel points. Uriah Favors, A1 Combat, May 1st and May 28th, exclusively on UFC Fight Pass. What? Let's go. So, Natural Born Trilla throwing out 250,000 on Andre Feely. We got 5K. Azazel. 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 Oh, five trees with 5,000 channel points over here for Brito. I like it. it. I like it. My channel's response to orange juice for apple juice was juice is whack. Michael Chandler, wait. <laughs> uh, juice is actually pretty good, man. I love apple juice. Freshly squeezed. Freshly squeezed. Gotta oh, have a juicer. Or- Gotta have a juicer. Oh, oh man. I go to eight. I go to this. Uh, H-E-B, get the orange juice that they freshly squeeze. Oh. All right. If you favorite, trust it, if you favorite. trust it, then that's oh, it. Oh, H-E-B, if you're, if, you're from, if you're from Texas, you trust everything H-E-B does. Mm. All right. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> pineapple juice uh, and cucumbers. Ooh, pineapple juice and cucumbers. Together. Right. Uh, ooh. Hey, you know what? I do have a juicer, too. There Basically, you go. Because, uh. Yeah, no, that that actually works perfectly with me. I used to do beet juice in the morning every single time. There you go. Then you start peeing pink, and you're thinking, man, am I bleeding? Did I get punched in the kidneys or something? I did the yeah, first no, time. I was like, did I get hit? Like, am I, am I bleeding internally? My wife, get in here. Look at this. My pee's pink. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, it, what? It's, it's from it, the, it, the beets. It, it freaked me out because I, I started drinking on a Tuesday, and we sparred on a Wednesday. I drank it Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, then uh, Thursday morning. I was like, Hey, hey, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what's going on? Well, yeah. Pineapple. So what you do is you do pineapple um, and you let it ferment in a jar with cinnamon sticks and, and the sugar or the uh, piloncillo, the piloncillo, and you let it ferment for, what was it, three or four days. And that's how I made the, uh, that's how we made the, man, I can't remember. We did that with the, um, and then you put that in there with the Evil 100. And what the heck was that? Yeah, and you put it with the Evil 100. What do we used to call that? Why all of a sudden am I drawing a blank? That was the, ah, um, oh, I can't remember what we used to call that. I haven't made it in so long, but it's, um, yeah, I quit. Oh, yeah, that was the old-fashioned fist fight. That's what it was. So the tapache is what it was. Oh, thank you. Now I'm back. So tapache is fermented pineapple, and you put in a big jar. Well, I think it's like you make about a gallon's worth, right? Uh, you ferment the pineapple with, with piloncillo um, and, and cinnamon sticks, and, and you let it ferment. And then so you've got tapache, and you'll put the tapache in there with the Evil 100, and the a, a habanero bitter. I'd have to go up and get it, but it's a habanero bitter. Oh yeah, and we call it the old fashioned fist fight. Yep, <laughs> nasty <laughs> is what it is. Right. Nasty, yeah, I love it. It's really All good. Right. So that's one that we made for the drink. I got, I, I got, man. All right. I got to try that. It's not that. Once you get through and make the first, when you make your first, uh, the fermented pineapple, you'll notice, you'll start to see it on the top. You put it in a big jar and a cheesecloth, right? And you just kind of let it ferment. And then um, do you think O'Malley and Vera will fight again? It'd be pretty sick if they did. But to be honest, at this point, we have to wait and see what happens with this fight tonight because if Vera wins this, he's kind of, 
still going after titles and O'Malley's just kind of, oh, you just pay me. I'll sit right here and just keep denting people. You know what I mean? Like a kombucha, 100%. Like a kombucha, without a doubt. And so that's what you'll use as your, um, in, in, in like a, in the old fashioned fist fight. And then, like, yeah. So it's quite a bit, man. Sorry, I'm watching on the celebrating 100, 100 fight nights. It's crazy. It's crazy. But, and then the evil 100, for sure, the bourbon. So, like we're making the old fashioned, but we do an old fashioned fist fight. It's not bad. All right, go to fight new fight night food: pizza, burger, tacos, burrito, wing, or wings. Huh. Oof, wings. Yeah, yeah, uh, but I usually do pizza and wings, so I'm like, oh, I'm just, yeah. So that's kind of hard. That's a hard choice. Wings, wings, and more wings. I can't get all the wings you can get. YouTube, how you living out there? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well. So we've got a poll. We've got a poll. Pizza one, huh? Uh, the pizza, man. Yeah. Who yeah, has soap? Looks like it won. Who's got soap? What soap? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I can I, I, can I show it? Oh, yeah. No, uh, I got some soap. Yeah. Get the heavy hitter scent. I have it on me. <laughs> oh, look at him. Yeah. Duke's up. Heavy hitter. Ain't nobody sent me no soap. No. I'm I'll no send soap. you some. You got, I'll send you some. That needs to happen. How can I promote the soap if I don't have the soap? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. No, I'll send it to you. Now, somebody put, look at this. I can't believe that only this many people voted on that poll. That, that just makes me salty. Salty. <laughs> Number one. That, that's all that right voted. 24 people voted on this poll. That's it. I don't stop this. Y'all need to start jumping into these polls. Come on. Got to have it. But so go to fight night food, go to fight night food. And what? I can't believe chicken wings. That's just breaks my spirit, man. Breaks my spirit, but that's all right. Put your Dukes up soap. I, that's pretty cool. I, I wanted to make sure. Huh? There was a poll. Yes. Now we've got a, now we're doing a predict. I didn't know it was up. I'd have yelled something, but you know what I mean? Oh. What? Shoot. Do you want to know what Dana tweeted that had everyone freaking out? I'm almost scared. I'm almost yeah. scared. Oh, you couldn't vote because you were making pizza. Oh, okay, I got you. So, yeah. <laughs> it just would have made uh, pizza at 51% then. No. So, Brito walking his way in right now. Standing on there making his... Whew. Um, I don't know, man. We're going to have to find out. I went big on Brito. I like it. I like it. What do we got over here? 25,000 chat points. F Society 7 2. All right. All right. 25,000. But this 250 over here, Natural Born Triller, just run away with the Andre Feely. Andre Feely. I like it. After breaking it down, and, um, man, I was going to say Taco Pizza. Would be would be all right. You know what I mean? What games you know, do I play? I just do a lot of Fortnite no build. I'm liking it. I like it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so how so how's that been? How's that been? Cause like I, I remember whenever I was playing whenever I played Fortnite a couple times that I did, like like cause I know it's it's not it's not third person, right? You have you, you have the character in front of you and you can't do like first person stuff. It's all in third person, right? Unless you can look through the scope. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, that's what that's what I was wondering. It's, so even even in the no build, it's still it's still third person. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. I was liking that. I was liking it because I I would do a really good job whenever I was out and being the sniper. <laughs> whenever I was like sniping people, but like up close shooting somebody with with the SMG, and next thing you know they just start building like towers and towers. There's no building just, now, but it's a lot of it's a lot of jumping. There's a lot of bunny hopping. And it, yeah, they just snatch a building real quick. A lot of but you know what it really is? Get ready, because when people hear that the guns, when they hear that when they hear it, you're about to get third person. They're coming. They're they're coming right now. Oh, yeah. You can almost guarantee. So I'd rather be back there. I'm bushwhacking and I'm hiding. I hear some billets and I just come running in Yahtzee. And I just third party the whole time. Cause I'm tired of it happening to me. They hide the lines. They make their way in. They're always third. Oh, drives me crazy. But yeah, 
We we me and my uh, partner in here, Hasiel, we try to do that all the time in Apex. But you know, we yep. get third party when we third party. No, I get it. It happens a lot. <laughs> it happens a lot. I'm just saying, do not be comfortable. If there's a bush, assume I'm in it. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but I hide. I'm in there, and I, I'm popping out. Ha, ah, pow! And I'll catch you slipping. I'll do it all day. All day. You know what I mean? All right, Feely's making his way out, making his – here he goes. Andre Feely, um, fourth most takedowns in UFC featherweight history with 32, nine wins by knockout, seven first-round finishes. That's Web C. Dude, he's ready to get in He there. is he fired is up, though. Ready. Ooh, who dropped 139K? There we go. Tankenheimer, 138,795 channel points for Joe Anderson Brito. GG Brito won 10 of last 11 fights, five wins by knockout, five by submission, awarded UFC contract, Dana White Contender Series, season five, week one. What, as a parent, do you show your kids your fights or wait till they are old enough? Actually, I started with my son. I just let him watch me wrestle. When he said I wanted to start wrestling this year, and he said, did you used to wrestle, Dad? I let it ride. Ninja Yanez MMA with the Prime hey. Game. Much love and appreciation. All subs go to support the American Cancer Society. But I did show him. He was tripping. He's like, dang, Dad. Oh, I was putting a smash on people. Two-time state champion and a runner-up, just blazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was cool, though. He watched it with me. I called my manager, Butler, crying. I can't believe it. My son is finally watching me wrestle. And then I was almost going to show him a fight, but he already does. So y'all got to make sure you follow Adrian Yanez on Twitch. Twitch TV slash Ninja Yanez MMA. Hit that follow button. Get over there and hit that follow button. Oh, yeah. YouTube, where are you Please. at? Please. YouTube, Please. Facebook. Let's go. Make sure you get in here. Twitch TV slash UFC. Jump into the chat. The water is fine. If not, we love you over there, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Ooh. All right. Here we go. Here we I'm go. I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited for this one. It looks fired up. Yeah, I'm ready for the first round. Brito. Oh, I don't know. Here we go. Here we go. ESPN Plus. I'm just listening. I'm listening for the uh, where they go. Everybody doing all right? See, I knew they would snap in. They don't show it. All right, here we go. Then they did right off the bat. Look at that. I like Brito. You see how he just kind of ran out there. Look at it. Bouncing on his feet, moving. Feely's trying to lead with that jab. Oh, calf. Calf kick by Brito. Look at that. I like this feeling out process real quick. Another calf kick by Brito. But that lead hand, right? Adrian, that lead hand, a feel look, Ooh. sticking that jab, but a big bombing right hand by Brito to come over the top. Got to be careful. Ooh. Oh, there it was. Oh, my goodness. I just said that big bombing right hand of Brito. You got to be careful. Three punches. It's over. He landed it. That big Jeez. bombing right hand of Brito. Got to be careful. Boom. Jeez. Over. Man, that that was that was very very nice. Like just in general, like just within the the small amount, the small time that it, that it was in, the problem solving that he did in just within that short amount of time, he got he was getting out jabbed by uh, out jabbed by Feely, and then he starts jabbing with them and actually ends up winning the jab exchanges. Then adds that overhand right and puts him down. Just bombing overhand wow. right, right? See, right here, it just came right over the top. Oh. And again, 84% of all knockout time with both fighters in close throwing punches. Feely was throwing that lead hook, right? He was getting comfortable with that lead hook. And as he was throwing it, watch, right here, he comes in off the jab, boom. And then oh. that was it. And the problem was Feely was trying to lob a lead hook in there, and he just fired that over the top. That overhand just came in and caught him really right in the middle. Boom. Wide open. Hands were apart. Wow. Brito. Brito. Jeez. Good. What? That, wow. Wow. That was good. Three punches up. Dang. Yeah, that was... Wow. Wow. 
Um, yeah. Who who is the hundred thirty nine thousand right here? Look at that Tankenheimer, just yo four point one eight return on anybody that had channel points on him. Oh damn, Cage! I lost all my points in each fight tonight. That's why it's called gambling. <laughs> <laughs> the longer you hang out, the more points you'll make. That'd be it. I like that. I like Bisping's outfit right there. I like it. I like it. This is my first time I've lost literally every single Twitch bet. See. It's a good, safe place to do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look at that, though. Death Egger. I'm closer to that UFC VIP. Snagging points. Snagging points. Tankenheimer, though. Dang. Tank. I mean, shoot. That's... He got to get paid on that one. What a shot, though. What a bomb. Ultimate fighter. Oh, Team Pena. Team Nunes. Road to the rematch. Premieres May 3rd on ESPN+. Plus. I went from 555,000 points to 122,000 tonight. Probably the most. Dang. This is when you got to walk away, right? Get up and walk away uh, from the gambling table. <laughs> 440,000 uh, gain. Tankenheimer. Nice. Jeez. Yeah, 55. Yeah. Yeah, walk away, bro. <laughs> Stop losing points. <laughs> nice job by Brito, though. Nice job, Brito. Good lord. So now we've got, we've got. Here it is. I'm very, very curious for this fight with Orlovsky and Collier. Very curious. That's gonna be the. That's the next one right there. So we we'll have to figure that out. But. Very curious on how that's going to go. Huh? Sure, Zim still got a couple of fights to make it up. That's it, man. How many what? Aaron? We got um the co-main event, Orlovsky and Collier. Excuse me. Then the main event, Font and Vera. So two fights left. Two fights left. What a devastating right hand, though. What a big shot. I mean, the way he fired that thing in there, it's like, man, you got to be careful because that first one just missed. And I was like, man, I'm telling you, this right hand that he's throwing... Boom! I mean, just right over the top. Dunzo. Dunzo. Was friends with Orlovsky's drinking buddy and showed us a picture of Lusky passed out in the gutter. Oh, it happens. It happens. Who hasn't passed out in the gutter? Duh. What? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Uh, there's, some, there's some bad. There's some terrible stories from everybody. Everybody should at least have one drunk story. At least one. Luckily, a lot of mine were before social media. So, GG, <laughs> GG for being old. Uh, yeah, <laughs> GG for being old. <laughs> I'm glad none of mine were recorded. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm telling you. <sighs> uh, Hasiel, I might be streaming after the fights. I don't know. I'm not sure. For sure, tomorrow. I will be on tomorrow. You do it. I've been talking for. Almost five hours straight, and it'll be six by the time I'm done. It'll be, I got <laughs> sleepy time tomorrow. I'll definitely be back, but I'm more of a 7 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Chicago time, and so I'll be I'll be running the muck. So you can drop in after y'all is. So I'm gonna catch Adrian, and then we'll be over there. Like, let me know if you want a game. I think tomorrow is gonna be a game. Well, we got some things going on, me and AK. So we'll see what happens if we're gonna game or fights or not. I don't know. I got one. My 29th birthday before a big internet with my buddy hopping strip clubs in Fort Lauderdale. I don't remember about an hour of it, but I was told I had fun. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Ah. So how long have you been watching Street Beefs? Huh? How long have you been watching Street Beefs? Um, I started watching a while back, man. I don't know. First, oh, man. I don't know. A couple years ago, two, three years ago. And then I stopped. I think for about the last year COVID and everything, and I just I never stopped going to them, and then I kind of just stopped watching them. Every now and then, I dive in and check them out. What happens is, because now they've got a few more branches, so the uh -huh. Pacific Northwest and the West Coast are at either in Vegas or California. What will happen is a lot of them will go, hey, can you watch my fight? You watch my fight, so we'll jump in, and we'll watch. I'll, you know, like people come in, and I'll watch their fights. I was watching when I started, yeah, about two years ago, and then I just kind of got sidetracked and run off and do other things now, but... Yeah, I used to dive in and check them out all the time. Yeah, because I, I, I think there was one person that was trying to hit me up because I said they said they came to Houston. And I just couldn't remember. I like it, it, it 
probably it just like slipped my mind. I had a lot of things going on at that time, so like not. There was supposed to... to be there was supposed to be a street beef in in Houston, I believe, at one point, but um, that was it. And then I don't know what happened. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I'm not sure who does what with that anymore. Oh. There's yeah, all kinds like... of stuff like Stroka, like you do the Stroka. They fight in the sand, stuff like that. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. It's pretty cool. <laughs> The sand fights. I used to watch those. A lot of bare knuckle and stuff on the stream. Love them. Look at Charles Oliveira, though. This guy, he's a beast. I love this guy. You know what I mean? Mahach, right? The Mahach, and that's where you... Yeah. Whenever the, the release date for Endgame was, that was the first night that Jen started watching fights. Really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nah, I don't remember. Yeah, Hasiel, quit being such a casual. Watch I got it. Fights, I bro. got it. You don't need to watch all of them. We'll go through some on Monday. If you're around on the UFC stream, I'll show you a couple on Monday. My the soccer kick to the face is my one of my favorites, and then some pride fights. You know, what I mean, I can watch. And, and not get too mad. Not get too mad. But I haven't gone through the losses of it. But I'll get. I'll do the losses here pretty soon. Which is gonna be a whole another tough ordeal. I'll be down to get it. But that's the deal. We'll have to. We'll get it dialed in. But look at it. Oh, and I'm stuck. I'm watching. I'm trying to watch Keiichi. Look at these shots. Oh, I'm Jeez. watching this video. This highlight video of the fight coming up. I can't help. I can't help but stare at it. Um, but it's one of those things that, yeah. I mean, I have a blast, and we try. We try to watch everything, everything you know, fighting on, on the stream. UFC. I'm obviously UFC and the UFC stream, and then we're over there watch everything. But I really like it because people will bring me their amateur fights and stuff like that, and allow me to break them down and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. I mean, where you have a a former world champion, if you just bring your fight and they'll break it down. You know what I mean? Even the ones that are in. Things like a street beefs or stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. I mean, I appreciate it. People giving me their time and hanging out and watching fights. Yippee, yippee. Mm -hmm. Got to do it. But I want, I want to drain his ear. <laughs> and the bare knuckle. The bare knuckle is craziness too. But with this oh. fight right here, who do we got? Okay, hold on. Do we got the, is the, I need to switch it over. Oh, hold on one sec. Here we go. What do we got? Oh, who did this? We got Natural Born Thriller throwing the 223,000-plus channel points. Whoa, let's go. And then we've got 46,000 over here for Andre Orlowski. Chance, in your prime, who is the current fighter you would love to have fought that is active nowadays? Anybody. What do you mean? I would just would have liked to have been relevant. I wanted to be a world champion, so let me climb the ladder like I did then. Let me do it again. You know what I mean? In a heartbeat. Anybody. I didn't get a choice. You know what I mean? There was no there was no choice. I just fought whoever they told me to. <laughs> oh, whatever. But to be in my prime and to be able to fight at 135 instead of 160 and 155, that'd have been cool. You know? That'd have been fun. And man, and see, like I I've always had I've always looked at it and always looked at the the uh the older guys that at, that were at 55 and just seeing all those other guys that had a cut to 55 and seeing people like yourself and bj Penn and all those guys just like fighting at 55 knowing damn well that y'all were natural like 35ers or 45ers i was just i was just always kind of just like like amazed with like how like well y'all did like against people who were essentially cutting at least like 20 to 30 pounds all the time because people don't realize that that makes a huge difference well, the thing with Gomi, I remember they set they set the the weight class up. It was at 160 because neither of them could make 55. So when we did the Pride Bushido, I think it was literally like 162 pounds or whatever around where they, and they could fight at it. And it was funny because I was 158, just snacking food, laughing. And then when they would show up, I always tell the story about Gomi. I couldn't believe it. I walked right by him. I thought it was his. I thought it was his big twin brother or something. And I'm like, they go, you remember that? You know, that's Gomi. And I'm like, where? And like that guy, I go, shut up. And they was the next day. I go, nah. -uh. I'm like, look at the side. I go, what? He had put on so much weight from at, during the scale. I'm like, oh, all right. He's not that big. To the next day, I was like, 
I thought it was his brother. I walked right by him. I thought they're going, that's Gomi. I'm like, no, it's not. I thought it was his big ass brother. So I'm like, no, that's not him. No, that's him. I was like, wow. All right. Huh? Yo, it's Henry DeKiwi. Yo, UFC at Jens. Israel says, good day, brother. Much respect. Who? Get out of here. I'm going to get all blushy. I get, look at all red in the cheeks. No way. Look at, my man's still moving around. He ain't, my man ain't got a gray hair on him. Look at him, especially in the beard of all areas. That's like the only place I do have gray hair is my beard. I don't know why. Why the beard got to be going first? I'm not sure, but look at Carl here, just kind of chilling, Jeez. relaxed. I'm, we'll have to see who's got the big. You see this over here, though. All right, we got 75,000. Nas 18. Nas 18 over here putting the boat. All right, I like it. How are we on round one? I got everything, I think, up. All right, we're in. This is. Look at that right hand on the Tempel, Joe Saldo, Font versus Beta. This has been fun, chat. This has been fun. I appreciate y'all being here. How are we doing over there on the YouTube side? What's up, YouTube? Love and appreciation as always. Twitter, big smiles, and the book of the face. Facebook, let's go. Huh? Is it signs of wisdom? I mean, I can try and get the, getting this part, but. You know what I mean? It, it's I'm struggling on this one, so we have. To, but yeah, down here, get it. But see, I still I'm growing. Just got hair. Look at that, just tails, tails, just fluffy. Kmart, what Kmart? New England cartel, huh? Oh, it's been a time. Jen's got the lion's mane for sure. I do. You know what I mean? Small Ben on Collier. He's watched the tape on Orlovsky, new tricks. And I'll tell you what, though, with Collier, I mean, he could do it with just the pressure, right? Pressure, put it on him, and go out to that right hand. I, that's the one thing with Orlovsky. He's done a great job of slowing everybody down, right? I don't know much about, I mean, that's my opinion, but I don't know. What do you think? Who you got on this one, Mr. Yanez? Shoot, I can't count out Orlovsky. Orlovsky is really, really good. He's only gotten better. It's weird because you expect like you always see the opposite of like uh fighters like kind of just end up like as older they get they end up dropping off but he's just gotten better and he's beaten better competition he's been consistently just man like you're not i'm not counting him out so I can, i'm not counting him out in this fight i think he i think he gets the dub i think i like it i like it all right jens what are your thoughts on uh the bronx versus gaethje you know again and i'll let uh aj step in i'm just excited to see the fight and I think obviously there's a lot of the damage that the Bronx doesn't grapple until later. So he'll get into a fight first and he may pay for it early because Justin throws nothing, but just, he just throws super, super heavy from the word go. Right. And so you don't want to make sure you don't get caught right off the bat. I think as it grinds on, obviously, you know, it, it'll go into, into, um, Olivia had his favor a little more, but that we'll have to find out. I don't know what's your thoughts. You have any anything going with that one, Adrian? And I I really like I, I honestly I can't wait to see that see that fight just itself because I yeah. feel like Oliveira does a really good job of like like I know I didn't think anybody would like kind of like break down Dustin Poirier like the way he did. He took he took a he took some shots, but still can't kept coming forward. And I it's just his infighting with with the closing of the distance, the knees that come up the middle, the elbows, everything, and it's so tight, so technical that it like and also he has he knows he can get away with throwing a little bit of crazy stuff like all the knees, everything up close because he's not afraid of getting taken down. Yeah, and well, yeah. So he's like, yeah, no, I'm I'm not afraid. So he's wilted a lot of people. I just don't know if uh, Justin Gaethje is that guy who's going to wilt underneath that. Uh, Cause he can actually end up just coming out and just fight, fight the fight. Like how he did Tony Ferguson and just stay technical and just circle the whole entire time. Uh, try not to get, try not to get cut off. And that would make the fight a little bit more dangerous for Oliveira. But uh, if he comes in, just if just if Justin keeps coming in and just stays kind of reckless, then it's going to be a long night. And, I don't see it going his way if he just kind of marches in like how he used to do. But yeah. if he fights how he did, Tony cuts angles and not stay in front of him, then it's going to be a, a completely different fight. It's going to be a hard fight. I like but it. I just can't wait. I can't wait to see it just because I want to see 
if if Justin Wilts or if uh, Oliveira can take can take the punishment because you already know one thing that Justin Justin Gaethje does all day is just dish out punishment. I I just want to see it. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So we've got another pull up, a pull, a pull. Who do we have? Man, more than two of you. So who who do you have for UFC 274? Charles Livietta or Justin Gaethje? Man, come on. More than 10 people need to get in there and do this. Stop it. You want me to turn up? I've got it. No way, Bricktop. I've got his volume up so loud. It is up loud. No way. No, I'm not going any louder. All right. <laughs> Look, at now we've got 13. So get in on that poll. Poll. Paul, oh, here oh, comes Collier. Come on, vote, guys. What's going Votes. on, bro? Vote. I need 100 people to get in this poll. 100. You know what I mean? Jay Collier making his way out. Here we go. Thank you, Z Danny. I voted. Nice. See, rather than a sticker, you can just chat. I voted. Boom. I voted. Boom. Look at this over here. All right, 223, still natural born chiller. All right, 75. Okay, okay, here we go. Here we go. I like it. I like it. This coffee is gone. A little water left. Hey. You can't make me vote. You aren't even my <laughs> real dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up, man. Last fight defeated uh, Sherman by first round submission. One of five knockouts in UFC history by spinning back kick to the body. Defeated Alberto Uda. One of 13 fighters in UFC history with wins in three weight classes. GG. This one you got to click to open. All right. All right. All right. It's fine. That's hey, so it. He has he has three wins in three different weight classes in yep. like the UFC. Yep. Yeah, so he started he, out like what it was he welter, and then he went to two hundred five and then straight to the heavy. Right, my man, he jumped. I damn. Mean, All right. Yeah. He decided just to start eating good. I'm gonna eat good and roll <laughs> up to heavyweight, and it's working. It's working. You know what I mean? And now here comes yeah, Orlovsky's making his way, making his way out to the cage right now. Yeah, right. Just don't care. I like it. Just start throwing down. Look at that. Andre Orlovsky. Let's go. Looks all right. <laughs> it's crazy. Crazy. He doesn't have age. The, same. the guy don't even have any gray hair. I would keep going. He's got, man, it's physical. Like, phew. He's got what? I'm 32 cellular. I'm 32 with in my, uh, biohacking like a boss. 43 on the outside, ago. 32 on the inside. It's all that matters. 23 years ago, he made his he made his debut, his pro debut. Former UFC heavyweight champ, tied third most wins in UFC history with 22, tied third most finishes in UFC heavyweight history with 11. I was five years old when he made his 57. Fifty-seven percent of chat has Olivietta. Dang! Did you what? Wait, what? What did you just say? Oh, I said I was five years old when uh, uh, Arlovsky made his pro debut. Oh, so you weren't even born then when I started. Ah, my man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was looking. At, I, I was. Uh, at, I was, I was you know, three. You know, it might be three. A little bit old. I was feeling a little. I was born in '93. Like I was born. Oh, I was a senior started. in high school. All right, I was a senior. All I, right. I was, yeah, I was. I was born when this stuff started. So I was like, all right, you know. I think it was uh, November. November. It was uh, the day that UFC had his first tournament. It was like November thirteenth uh, or fourteenth. Nice, nice. And I was born November 29th. So I was like, all right. There's no coincidence right there, man. I was born in the month of November, and it started in 1993. I was, I was born for this. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. I love it. The co-main event of the evening. Oi! I, I was 17 when, when Oscar was born. Stop saying he is old. <laughs> 
Yeah. Right, man. Pepe, Sylvia, right? You had to go get these things. That's what I mean. VHS, man. Go get them at the Blockbuster or something. Rent them. Or rent them. Look at that. You know, Jake, call you. Go ahead. You know what made me feel old uh, earlier today? Uh, I was I was uh, buying I was buying uh, a beer and next thing you know I looked down and it says you can't buy a beer if you weren't born past this date and it said two thousand one I looked up I was like uh <laughs> I was like man you're just now going you're just now going through this look at them they're going through <laughs> look at these little guys going through some growing pains oh I'm my partner I'm so far past that I don't even like seeing numbers on the shows anymore. <laughs> When I got to tell people I made UFC 22 was my debut, I'm out, right? What are we on? 376? Yo, what up, Jens? Adrian, uh, Patrick Hutton, love for hometown QC and where I live now in H-Town. Much oh, love, Foot Night Dude. Main man, Patrick Hutton, man. What's up, brother? How you doing? All right, here we go. Fifty-five pro fights. That's crazy. All right, here we go. Here we go. Right out into the center. Right out into the center. Now again, or Lofty, this patient feeling out process. You know, it's the up kick by by Orlovsky, a lead hook by Collier. Now they're already in that overrunner position right here, Adrian, and this is that spot. Now again, he, Collier's going to try to get the double underhook, but he's got to start moving. You know what I mean? He's got to start moving, um, pushing, they're getting that body lock. I can't believe, like, you just see the size of just the bone mass oh. of Orlowski compared to Collier. I don't know, I'm trying to see it a little bit, but good job of pushing him up against the fence, throwing knees, keeping double underhooks. Andre just patiently chilling, getting kneed in his lead leg there a few times. Ooh. I like the softening of the lead leg, but, right? Bruce's jacket. Oh, yeah. No, Bruce's coat is something. So, again, just pushed <laughs> up against the fence. We'll have to find out. Nobody's really trying to move anywhere. They're okay with it right here. And just battling back and forth. That head position. Now we're back into an over under position. Andre frees it up. All right, here we go. Nice. Now we're back to the center. Popping that jab. So I like that Collier's being the aggressor right here, yeah? Ooh. Big overhand right, AJ, and then they're just into yeah. the clinch. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. He's kind of falling into Andre's trap of slowing everything down, at least it's the way I'm looking at it. Now we've got an overrunner position by Collier. Again, right back up against the fence. Yeah. <laughs> we have to see Sin just push up go ahead, yeah. No, I'm I'm just looking. I was just kind of laughing at the commentary. Like, yeah, they are heavy. Emphasis on the heavy weights. Yeah, very true. So now they broke again. <laughs> now they're back out, moving out towards the center. I'll just be curious. Andre is trying to get up on his feet a little bit, chat. There we go. Double jab, right hand by Collier. Ooh. Now we're starting to push a little bit. Andre throws the right hand as they were backing up, but that's what you got to do. Again, you can't get stuck into this. Nice calf kick checked by Collier. Calf kick by Lofsky, but you can't get lulled into this slow moving, right? The slow starting. You got to try to get out there. Look, Andre's trying to throw that jab. Nice. That big up elbow right there and come back with the right hand. He's starting to move side to side with his back against the fence. I like that. Collier's going to have to get up on his wheels a little bit, right? Man, yeah, he, Andre can't get can't get caught up getting lulled into fighting that slow pace. You can't fight that slow pace with this guy. Yeah, Andre, you you, 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 but, you get lulled into fighting fighting at their pace. You end up fighting their fight, and you end, it ends up not being good good for you because you're not used to fighting that. You used to fighting at your own pace. You got to start offsetting his pace by put uh, implementing your own pace. You know, and that's the one thing. He just unloaded that right hand. And again, it, it definitely gives you respect when he throws that punch. Now we've got to worry about we're headbutting, we're colliding into each other. You know what I mean? We've got to clash your head because he's coming lunging in and he just dipped down. So they got a quick headbutt. But 
There we go, right here. So now again, there, nice, Orlovsky nice is right. moneying on that, leading it in with that straight right. It's a great shot. He's throwing that lead right hand. Jake's walking right into it. He tried to spin an elbow. Now we've got a we got a body lock. Collier pushed him up against the fence. Got the double unders. See, double uh, yeah, double unders putting the head into the hole, putting the head in the pocket right there. Andre's gonna go ahead and start pulling underneath over under. Peel out the fence. I like that straight right by Andre, but Collier's trying to pummel in. Here we go. Walk his way back out. Where's the jab? I'd like a jab, Shoot. Collier. But that's when, right? He's got to move. He can't get lulled into this. Let's just throw our big power right hand. And that's it. See, because he loads it up and he just wants to fire that right hand over and over and over. You got to start circling and working on him a little bit, right? Circle, oh, circle, yeah. circle. No, you can't you can't be that you can't be a still target in front of Corey because he's gonna just bum rush forward. He's gonna throw a punch, rush forward, and hit the try to hit the body lock. And that's the one thing. Corey's got, you know, I like how that overhand right is one punch at a time, and you're playing into what Orlovsky's doing. He's switched up his stance already. He's starting to move around. He's he's getting up on his wheels a little bit. They're dancing around the thing, but now yeah, Jake needs to get him to circle. Nice calf kick. Up kick by Orlovsky in return. There we go. See, now he tried to take that big old hop right there, but the jab going inside. Look, here comes Orlovsky throwing that right hand. Andre trying to spin one off right there. See, so he's closing the distance. Then a shot. Mm. Ugh. I'm not sure what I think about this round. I think it was it played right into Orlovsky's style. 16 significant punches by both of them. And that's one thing, right? Slowing it down. And just going power shot for power shot. And I think I think um, Collier, though, I'd like to, if he could get up and maybe throw that first, second, maybe a third punch, add in a feint maybe. Who knows? I don't know. But I'd like to see him move around a little bit more. We've got a cut on the uh, above Ooh. the eye, the right eye of Orlovsky. So it's a Ugh. nice little gash. Nice little gash. I like that Collier is not sitting on a stool. He's standing up. What? Let's go. Oh. Let's push it. I love that. I love that. I make all my fighters stand up. <laughs> Never sitting down. No stool for you, right? No stool. Oh, no stool. All right. The head butt. One sec. Blahovich <laughs> versus Rakic. Blahovich versus Rakic. That's an interesting fight. Yeah, it is. There it is, round two. All right, here we go. Right back out to the center. And they finally oh. start throwing some jabs. <laughs> okay, they see, finally I, started throwing some jabs. Look at Collier. Looks like he's going to try to pick it. Like he's getting kind of up on his feet a little bit, right? Trying to move in. Andre's in the return. He's, more, he's crying about headbutts, but it's Andre dropping the head down. They're both dropping their head down. Nice calf kick by Collier. When they're doing that clinch, they're both dropping their head down. Peel off on the block the teeth. Now he's trying to try to move in. See, you can tell the way he drops his head to the side. Right there, moving out of the way. If, if there's a way for Olaski to faint and land that right hand, land that hook, maybe at a 45 uppercut or something. Nice calf kick by Carl. You're starting to walk him down. Yeah, I want to, I'd like to see that left hook a little more in that right hand. Cause see, he's just kind of walking in. Um, Olofsky being a busier fighter throwing the two, three straight punches. Oh, now we got him back. Now you see that right there, Adrian. Throw the overhand right, left hook by Collier. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Honestly, like, he's he's not really... I don't know what, if, if he's trying to look for a shot or look for a takedown off the clinch or if he's just trying to wear him down off the fence. But I'd like to see him in, in, in the boxing range, like, with the Arlovsky on the fence. Like, because he's getting close to touching him every single time, but he just ends up just looking for the body lock every single time. Yeah, he drops, he changes down and kind of goes, yeah, I mean, I'd like to see him get in and mix this up a little bit. And if we could have some feints, you know, and that's the one thing. Um, but Andre, once again, he's going to lull this thing to a decision. Oh, we got a jab that kind of stopped Andre in the middle of his movement. He threw a straight right and tried to move out of the way. And that's... And that's the one thing is Andre's just standing that straight right. Collier's just kind of look at there you go. Collier throws the three punch combination. He's kind of lobbing him in there. And Orlovsky's kind of just throwing that one straight right. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. And I'd like to see, again, more movement, just maybe a little faint to kind of direct him into the combination that you're looking for. But that's the one thing right now. Again, it's just crazy. And the significant strikes out 30 to 28. And they're just kind of walking each other down, not doing a whole lot, punching in midair right there by Olowski. But they lull into this style of slow-moving fights, and it's perfect for Olowski. Especially like the older fighter doesn't want to get going Ooh. until later. There's a good right hand. Good and straight he, right, yeah. And then he just slid out of the way, right? Then he's gone. Nice right hand by Collier. There nice. we go. Look, we had a one-two by Collier, but then a right hand by Orlovsky. Oh, Ooh, see, nice there it straight is. Right again. Stepped right into the straight right of Orlovsky all day. All day. See, now you got to have, where's that second, third, and fourth punch? Be the younger fighter if you're going to do this. Where's the staying busy? Going in for a body lock? Now they're pushing up against the fence. Go ahead. Yeah. See, exactly what you were saying earlier. Earlier, Just, man, stop with the one and twos, man. You got you to gotta start putting up a little bit more numbers whenever you're punching, man. Like, Five, the five the five punch combination, even though a lot of times it's not realistic, Oi. whenever you got them against the fence, the fifth punch will more than likely land. They yep. can't keep blocking them, if, especially if their back foot's on the fence. 100%. We got a takedown by Collier. He's going to look to – he's got the back of Orlovsky who stands up, puts his head against the fence. What's that, drug-free Rich Savage? Orlovsky is almost 44, old time for Jens to get back. Hey, Jens is thinking about it. That's why he got braces, so I can't get I can't get prompted in there. We got braces for another year, so no can do. All right, here we go. So now he's got him pushed up against the fence. He's throwing some knees to the thigh. There we go. Andre's going to turn back in, face him, get an over under. Oh, he tried to spin one off, Adrian. He tried to spin Oof. it off as Zolowski was trying to walk out the fence. Call a nice oh, one, too. Nice. See, now where's oh. three and four? Double See, jab. Arlowski's the one. Arlowski's the one that's putting up the numbers in those combinations. Ooh, nice. Yep, good that's one nice too. Double jab back. See, and there he is. He comes back with the one-two double jab right hand. Where's the four? There we go. See. There's a calf kick and a one-two by by Collier. I'd like to see again. He's got to pick this pace up. Got to pick this pace up. Or last, there's that right hand and he slides out of the way. We're gonna have to figure it out, man. He's got him. He's got him lulled. Orlovsky's trying to walk forward. He's gonna somehow win this fight again by throwing less than fifty uh, punches. Oh, big one two. Oh, big one two by Orlovsky and call. You trying to throw wow. two back, but I like it. Not bad. All right, I'm in. I'm in. Um, how many miles cheering. of road work do you think Jake Collier does a day? That's a goose egg, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> What he said. I don't think he does. <laughs> I don't think he does any, to be honest. I don't see him out there. On the, uh, yeah, I don't see him out there jogging. He might do a, a, a hearty walk every now and then, I bet, but not much of a jog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? The Butcher of Eastview, my last fights. Well, when I was 40, I fought an eight-man kickboxing tournament. I'm 45 now, and I'll fight again before I'm 50. Ah, there you go. There you go. I like it. I told you, man, the only way my wife's even going to let me have a, a shot at it is I have to, I have to show, I have to show the, the physique first. So, I, did it. I just want to box anyways. I just want to box. Exhibition boxes. Put me on a Jake Paul undercard. I'm good. I'm not going. That's what's his name doing that one? Dan Hardy and Diego are boxing. All right, here we go. Collier needs to pick this up. I wonder if he feels any kind of. There you go. Whoa. Double jab there right hand. Go. Somebody's oh, nice going to. Orlovsky seems like he wants to get a little more into that counter fight. There it is. I wonder if he knows that we need. They. I think Collier definitely needs this this third round. Orlovsky knows I've just I've literally lulled this thing into an under 50 total punches landed fight, which is significantly anyway. All right? There's a kick blocked. Collier walking him down. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, 
making his way out there. Look at Orlovsky still up there bouncing. Look, he looks ready to go. He just, I think, safety wise, Adrian, safety wise, he doesn't want to get into these big scrambles, these big knock them, you know what I mean? Drag out fights, right? Oh yeah. No, I'm looking at it, and he's he's doing a really good job of uh, skating skating off, but man. To see the Ooh, clashing of headbutts head, but, again, yeah. but he's dropping his head down. They're both doing it. It's like they're both leading with their face. They're both leading. They're both, they both change. They get close and they step in and they just clash heads. See, he throws the jab. Orlovsky's coming, knifing in. They both, he did it too. Come on, man. Look, they're both doing it. Look, this Orlovsky swinging in. One stepping in, one's leaning back and then swinging in. Nope, don't you dare. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you're leading with your head, GG. A warning for both. Here we go. Here we go. Nice. Now, yeah, the referee is the boss. I like that. All right, here we go. We're making our way, walking our way out again. Orlovsky, look at that. See, that's the thing right there. Orlovsky throws that right hand. He does that big swing with his head. That's why Collier needs to realize when that right hand is thrown, where's that lead uppercut, that 45? He's going to swing right into it. Easier said than done, but right hand hits, 45, boom, if you call your, he's waiting on it. But what, heaven, a headbutt should be allowed in MMA again? Standing. <laughs> Only standing. <laughs> All right, here we go. Still making our way out there. We got three minutes left. Nice kick, nice kick by Arlovsky in the right hand. Call, you're trying to walk Ooh. in, and the jabs. Look at that. Hey, oh. See, there it is. Oh. After he swings, that's what you got to do, Call, you. Where's that right hook? Let's go. Arlovsky backs out to the center. Here we go. I'm liking this. I'm liking this. Both of them need to unload. Yeah, no, Arlovsky won't unload, and that's why he'll win the fight. He gets them all to do this all day, all day. I love it. Look at that. Here you go. Jab, double, right hand, double jab, Barlowski back to the center. That's a close, really close fight. See, they're wanting three punches on every combination. I could live with that. See, three. There it oh, is. Four, nice. five. There it is. Now they're in there. Guys, job by Collier to come back in with that third shot, fourth shot. Orlovsky ties him up, holds on the head. They're in the center. Free it up. But that's what you got to do. You got it. Man. You need to be throwing these three, one, two, three punches. The third, fourth, and fifth shots are going to be the one. Right hand, he snapped down. He caught him this time. Snapped up a front headlock. Throw some knees by Collier, but that was the thing. Orlovsky to the right, tried to swim underneath. He snatched it, Adrian. Hit that front headlock. It's going to make him work a little bit. Oh! oh. He tried to spin the win off that oh, when they fed him off. Nice. <laughs> That was nice. Andre throws the right hand. Collier's walking forward. Here we go. Walking forward. Jeez, Andre, man. I like that he's up on his wheel, still moving. Here we go. Collier's just trying to throw that one, two, the jab. But Andre literally just outworked Collier. Outworked him. In general, now Collier's walking away. Here we go. He's going to try to throw the jab. Nope. Calf kick, but look at that. I like that jab. Oi! Orlovsky just moved out of the way. That right hand. Look at that. I can't believe they've been lulled back to one punch apiece. Oh, nice right hand. Nice right hand by Collier with nothing coming back. No jet, no hooks, nothing. There's a one, two by Collier. Orlovsky's moving, throws the right hand. See, that's the where the clashing happens right there. Yeah, the live scorecards, this would be a great fight for that. But you already know Orlovsky's going to win, so it don't matter. Throwing that double jab, double jab, right hand, left hook. Ooh. See, there it is. Nice job, Collier. Right hand, left hook. That'd be something. Caught the spin of the elbow. Takes him down with six seconds left to take the round, to, to get the takedown. He's sitting in half guard. And boom. Two rounds to one. I don't know. Ooh, not bad. That's close. Not bad. Yeah. 
You think Collier with the split decision? Ah, uh, I don't know. Uh, I think Orlovsky takes it with the split decision, maybe. He don't lose these. these. They go to the judges. He don't lose. They're like, dude, he's in his 40s. Of course we're going <laughs> to give him this. Of course we're going to give this. You know what I mean? They got to be thinking, it. he's in his 40s. Give him this. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see, everybody, because then we got the main event after that. But... That wasn't that bad. That wasn't that bad. But you see what I mean? How, how Orlovsky does a good job of just kind of lulling him into just these one punch at a time, one, two, because it fits his right-hand narrative. You don't want to get into these big scrambles, but if you're these younger fighters, output, output. That should be your number one goal, right? The number one goal. Don't you think, Adrian? Output. Oh, yeah. You got to try to melt him. He can't go. The old man is trying to keep this fight nice and slow. We want sniper rifles. I don't want run and gun MP5 spray and pray out there Call of Duty style. I can't have the run and gun. I need the sniper shot. Sit back, fire one. Pew. You know what I mean? Oh, so, yeah. No, it's uh, as uh, as some someone older used to tell me whenever we would, we'd spar, he'd be like, nah, it's the... uh." It's the veteran tricks that you it's the veteran moves that you have to learn and then you you're just veteran savvy at the end of that. So he's like, Yeah. He's like, I don't get tired sparring you, you smaller guys. He's like, it's just this easy because I use the veteran moves to keep y'all just that distance and fight at my pace. And like and that blew my mind whenever he told me that. I was like, Oh my goodness. I have to stop. Hold this. That. Did you hear this? <laughs> like, he did it again. Ooh. Andre Orlovsky ah, gets a right. split decision. We had a 30-27 for Collier with one judge. And Andre, 29. Again. Again. He does it every time. Every time. Slows it down. What can Collier? You can't be upset, bro. You didn't even, you didn't even land any more significant. You land less significant strikes. Dang, 30, so why is there always the one judge in a split decision that throws it 30-27? Man, I'm telling you, who's the 30-27 bandit that keeps doing this? I don't know, Tony Weeks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, that was shade from, that was shade from November, my bad, I'm sorry. I don't know, I'm not sure if he's, uh... <laughs> uh. Longest yeah. active win streak heavyweight division. Orlovsky four, Ngannou with six, Romanov five, Aspinall five, Tuivasa five. G G man, G G. Man, all those guys up there are killers too, and he's up there. He's he's man, fifty six fights and he's still up there. Yeah, like I love it. Uh, He needs to do something, a little more work or something, but we'll see. GG, nice job, Orlovsky. R.A. So, real quick before this next fight chat, I've got a, we've got a um, main event preview. Three minutes. So, I'll have this set up. If you need to go to the bathroom or do anything like that, Mr. Yanez, you jump up and get her did. I'm going to pop, let me get this thing going real quick over here. Um, let me hit the... Um, here, I'm gonna, let me try it like this. Move it over here. And then I'm going to pop that off. And then we're going to run him. At, terrible judge decision. What do you mean? He wins every one of them. He can't help himself. He can't help himself. All right, so we got a three-minute opener. I'm going to hit this thing. I'm going to hit go wide and big screen. All right, we'll see you all in three minutes. GG. All right. My last fight was in MSG against Frankie Edgar. Chito Vera, a guy that is on his way up in the division, has to go through the former champion. This is his opportunity. That was almost like my second chance against a big opponent. I fell a little short with Aldo, and I told myself, like, hey, there's no another chance. You lose this fight. You You need to go in there and put this guy out. Chito Vera gets the highlight he was looking for! 
My journey to be where I am right now haven't been easy. It's an incredible story. A rise to prominence out of Ecuador. He was six and one when he signed. He had never trained in the U.S. He really has come a long way in terms of his skill set, but his mentality has always been there. That's what's driven him to this point. He's an animal, and he's had a hard road to get here. My ultimate goal as a fighter is become a world champion and just let the people know if you want to chase your dreams and make it happen. You can achieve it if you work hard. Proudly repping Boston's fifth team, the New England cartel, the Massachusetts native Rob Font. His boxing is next level. There are many guys that can dictate and control a fight with a jab. Rob Font does that. I feel like I'm just scratching the surface. I'm figuring out how to really win these fights, really compete with these top guys. Oh, he stunned him. He stunned him. Bell made his down. That's it. Rob Font! For me, I'm trying to get in there and get out as soon as possible. Oh, oh big combination. Oh, man. Heavy oh. shot. Silver. That's it. Wow. Rob Font. Font is a great fighter. He comes forward. He punches hard. He's a big guy. But I'm prepared. And I'm ready to rock. Oh. With Cheeto, he's so well-rounded, you gotta watch out for everything. He kicks, he elbows, he knees, but I believe I'm sharper and more crisp when it comes to the striking. I plan on picking him apart and I plan on finishing him as well. Oh, he might be out. Rob Font! I wanna break him, I wanna put pressure, and I wanna let him know it's my time. My main goal is going there, make it entertaining for the fans, get him out of there as soon as possible, and get back in a win streak. This is the biggest fight of my life. I'm gonna take this win, I'm gonna kick your ass, and I'm gonna move forward. Hey! Oh, that was craziness. Hey, that got me all fired up. Goose to the goose bump. Oh, hold on one second real quick. All right, here we go. So what do we have over here? 50,000 kamikaze soldiers throwing 50,000 channel points. GG. We got 73 Hams solo. Ham solo. 73,000 channel points over there for Rob Font. What are you thinking, Adrian Yanez? What are you thinking in this fight? And I got I got Cheeto Vera. I got I got Cheeto Vera. He's just relentless. He's he's just so relentless. He's like one of those fighters that I personally like watching just because he has that come forward style and he's just the sorry for my my language, the I don't give a fuck. I am marching you down and I don't care. He wants you to well, he wants you to break. And I always love watching those type of fighters because I myself like to be the guy that breaks people, makes people will. So, you know, I, I if I if I like that type if I like that fighting style just for myself I like watching <sighs> others implement it and Vera does a really good job of doing that and I want I see him getting a a late finish in the fourth or fifth round. I love it. I love it. Yeah, no, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of Cheeto. I just everything about him, man. Like I said, the way he works and then watching these videos, learning more about him. You know, what I mean, getting back to those judges. Hopefully. That's going to be the problem with these judges. These judges. You know what I mean? Look at this kid. Ninja Yanez gifting that sub. Hey, my man's making it rain while commentating. Get sub. <laughs> All subs go to support the American Cancer Society. And before I forget, something happened before. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Jack Fro with the 12 months. Much love and appreciation. Jack Fro, appreciate you. All subs go to support the American Cancer Society. So much love and appreciation. GG. I know, man. Why? Wait, one judge had it 3027 Orlovsky. And then one judge had it 3027, the other one, and then only one. I thought they were two 2928s for Orlovsky, and one had a 3027 for Collier. Or was I not listening? I could be off. I don't even know. Oh uh, yeah, Rob Font also missed weight. Thank and you. Rob Font, there yeah, you go. I, I forgot about that. Now, too. yeah. Um 
most finishes in UFC Bantamweight history with nine. Fifth most wins in UFC Bantamweight history with 10. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, eight wins by submission for Mr. Marlon Vera. And I forgot about Font not making weight. And it was funny because, yeah, that, yeah, I just, yeah, that was weird. Not making weight. It's like, all right, well, let's move on and we'll forget about that. I don't know, man. It's no, you making weight. Let's go. You got to make that weight. You got to make that oh, weight. Yeah. It uh, it absolutely upsets me when people mess weight, man. It, it I I can't stand it. I really can't. I really can't stand it. It, it, it makes it makes me so upset. And like like it, because man, you, you signed the contract and you know if you at least have eight weeks, you should be able to make that weight. And as a fighter, you should consistently be in the gym and consistently making sure you're treating your body right during all year. Of course out of camp you can have a little bit of fun like on the weekends and all that stuff but i always believe monday through friday you should be eating at least healthy so you can keep your weight down like i i like nothing like man you don't even have to be so strict just make sure that you're staying healthy and keeping your weight in in a distance where as soon as you get into, into a training camp you're not having a fat camp you know because i've seen fighters go like from that fight at 155 blow up all the way up to 190 and then i've seen Fighters do at 45, blow up to 185 and all that stuff. I'm like, man, you're just hurting your body. You're killing your body every single time. So, man, like. And you spend spend training camp, not to cut you off. You spend training camp basically cutting weight and not learning and advancing. You you spend the whole thing trying to cut weight and diet. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I call those fat camps. I call those (laughs) fat camps, man. Like, nah, you you having a fat camp, bro. You're not having a a fight camp. You're having a fat camp. Fat camp. (laughs) Oh, that's gangster. (laughs) But it makes absolute sense. It's 100. It's 100. Oh, telling you. I love it. I love it. What? But no, I like it. So that's the one thing, you know, and, and again, yeah, there's no, when you don't make it, there's a lot to be said about that. And that's the one thing, just more about it. Um, What's that? After Paul Felder made weight, like I said, man, I spent all night running around in Singapore just to make weight at eight o'clock at seven in the morning. And so I don't want to hear it. My sauna broke. I had one bad thing happen after another, and I had to just get old school, throw on plastics, and start running around the soccer stadium all night until it was 6. I told him 6.30. Let me know when it was 6.30. I didn't want to do it, but I had to. I mean, I, I threw my fit. I flopped around on the floor for a minute, and then I was like, all right. My brother finally had to drop the hammer and said, that's it. We're getting old school. I'm tired of this shit. Part of my language. Get on your shoes. We're going out. We're going old school. And we're running around the soccer stadium until you make weight. By the way, real quick, Rob Font, second most knockouts in UFC bantamweight history with five. Tied with Marlon Vera and two others, BT Dub. The sixth most wins in UFC bantamweight history with nine has eight first round finishes. Sorry, continue. Ooh, yeah. That Orlovsky decision was so bad, I'm still mad. All right, let me tell you something. I don't know why you can be. It's what he's done literally on all of them. He lulls them to sleep. Damn you for getting outworked by Orlovsky. And that's basically what happened. Somehow he slowed you down to fight in his style. I don't know how he's, I'm, I'm, you know it? No. No, it was not a complete robbery. <laughs> okay. It might be, it might not be. I don't know. I don't know how you have a 30-27 and 29-28s and what have you. You know what I mean? 138 and a half. 5-8, 136 for Mr. Vera. All right, fine. Robbed. It's such a powerful word, chat. But, all right, fine, fine. Fine. But, why didn't, why didn't Collier just outwork him? What? Yeah. What? Collier outworked him, though. It wasn't that close. The punch stats, he was behind in both of them. <laughs> he, was, he literally got outworked by punch stats by Orlovsky. And the fact that even if it's within five punches, that's still getting outworked by the 44-year-old man sitting there having the same punch stats as you? Come on. Come on. Last chance to get predictions. You better get in there and have double. I'm going to have double the output. That's the whole goal. Double the output. Boom, boom, boom. I'm younger. <laughs> no? All right. Oh. 
By the way, chat real quick, exclamation sweeps. Make sure enter to win the VIP trip UFC 276 in Las Vegas. There's the link, exclamation sweeps, and get in there. You think that deserves to decide? No. What I'm saying is he should have. I'm saying Collier should have been working. He should have just outworked him. It shouldn't even, he shouldn't, if you don't want to be this close. You know what I mean? Judges wise, I just think the younger fighter, he should have outworked him. He should have tried to out, out punch him, outwork him. You know what I mean? Orlovsky was able to slow down. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that the judges weren't messed up or nothing. Uh, no. No, I'm not saying that Andre won because he was the fresher fighter. What I'm saying is Collier should have left no, there should have been no, no doubt. Be the younger fighter and get your ass in there and start working. Boom, 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 outwork him. So there is no choice. There is no decision. That's what I'm saying. But he was pushed into and lulled into a fight that, that, Arlov, that Arlovsky, right? That Arlovsky wanted. And that's kind of what happened. He played an Orlovsky fight. That's all I'm saying. Oh, no, the judges are horrifying. I'm still, the judges are just, they're, they're horrible. I believe we should be having live scoring. I'm, I'm a huge, massive, massive fan of live scoring. Round by round. Round by round, real quick. Uh, 100% live scoring. All right. All right, I almost forgot my round five. I got her. There we go. All right, here we go, chat. Round one, round one. Let me move this up. All right. Here we go, Agent. Here we go. First 30 seconds. I feel like Cheeto Rare is going to open up with a kick. I like how he just, look how he just, look at Font's trying to move around on the outside a little bit. Vera's right on the monster sidekick for Vera. Popping that jab. Good jab by Font right there. Nice calf kick by Vera. But that dang, that jab, look, he caught that teep kick. Oh, good right hand got through by Font, didn't it? Yeah. Does a, does a very good job. And Chino Vera is, a, is, Pretty much like he's a, a notoriously for me. I know him as a slow starter. He starts off slow every single every single fight. Oh, nice one two reach the chin of Vera by Font. Good one two right at the end of the punches. He's keeping him. Look at that. Chino went for a kick. Font tried to swear it out, but the kick landed. Good left hand as he moved around. Font is now out in front, being the stalker, throwing a good one two. That forty five uppercut. Nice. I, I'm liking every exchange that Font's doing right now. Oh, nice. and then right there, look at that. Boom, boom, boom. Double jab, right hand. And I like on that one. I don't even know how to really describe it. The jab by Tito, the one, two counter by Font, but then he came back with another one, two, three, Ooh, throwing the nice combos. Uppercut. You like that uppercut right there? Yeah, he, he, go ahead. Yeah, he 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 caught that, he caught that uh push kick and then still had it and threw the uppercut from long range. That was a very beautiful uppercut. It, it, like the long range uppercut to me is always a beautiful punch, and he just landed it nicely. Off that foot, too, knowing that he was going to be off balance when he let the foot land and hit him with that 45. A good elongated 45 is a beautiful, beautiful deal. Pain will get you. What up? Here we go. Now, look at that. Look at that jab, nice. though. Oh, nice. right hand elbow by, by Font. Bond's doing a great job. He, he's throwing in combinations, too. He's not just throwing singles. He's throwing in the combination. Changing levels with his punches as well. Yeah, I like that right there. He had the back of Vera's head and throwing those uppercuts. What the other thing I like about Font is he'll throw a combo, hit break, boom, 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 and throw another combo almost instantly, right? Instead of sitting back and waiting, okay, I threw my combo, now it's your turn. He throws, boom, set, and then throws another combo after that. Knock him off the rhythm. Look at that good one, too. Look, he's got Vera flinching just a little bit. Font still walking forward. Vera's kind of stayed right there in that range as well, though. Both of them still staying in the center, switching the stance a little bit. Deep kick caught by 
up kick. Ooh. Look at that. Ooh, that right hand to Font. Right to the belly hole by Font. Oh, look at that. Here we go. Oh, this is crazy, chat. So now here we go. They're back, right back to center. Good jab by Vera. Pop another jab by Vera Font, trying to work his way in, throws the jab to the stomach. Here we go, here we go. Font's walking forward, pushing forward. Oh, hey, see, I like, there you go, Ooh. you see that? I like yeah. that, two, one, blue, one. Nice, there's another two down the middle. There's the jab, double jab. Font's kind of bullying him a little bit. There we go, Cheeto's coming forward now a little bit. Oh. Rips a nice right hand to the body. body. Yeah, nice. Jab to the body. Oh, double jab. Right hand over the top. Coming back with that uppercut. See, I like how you swept that right hook. It's the, in, trying to go around the guard because Cheeto starts going up into that high guard. Rob Font did a great job of circling it right around, trying to hit the ear. Yep, I like that. I like that part. Reaches around the hand to hit the ear hole. Yeah, I really like that. Popping that jab. Font is walking him down. Walking him down. Cheeto's having a little bit of a trouble. You got to try to derail this train a little bit. Cap Ooh, kick. That, that uppercut, uppercut was man. nice by Font. Oh, Ooh. there it is. The jab uppercut again. He's hitting it all day. All day, Agent. Jab. Boom. Bombing that uppercut on by, by Font. There it is again. It's just, it's just there. He's just walking forward, hitting that uppercut. Because Cheeto, that, here's the thing with that high guard. Is a, lot of, a lot of those guys, when they do the high guard, they, they, have, their, they have their guard up covering their face, hands on their eyebrows, and they hit, leave everything up the middle on the side open. They never really shut it off. Yeah, you, the whole thing's got to shut here and then roll yeah. the hand, but keep the elbows in tight because this wide open, you're asking for those up the middle. And when you, because they tend to, they duck, right? So when you're here riding the brim, here, close. See, when you close, the wall closes. Close the wall, and then you can roll up the sides. But when you do this, you go up high and then you, you split the elbows and lean over, right? It runs into that's that jab, that uppercut, that uh font sign. I mean, this has been beautiful. Beautiful. Man. Oh man, this is crazy. I like it. This is this. I like I like what they're telling him. I like I like that they want to slow him down, get him to the body. Uh Especially with him having a harder weight cut, he's like, "Yeah, I, I, that's what I'd be telling my fighter as well." I was like, "Hey, go to the body." He, I don't, and me personally, I don't know how much he can keep that up because he didn't make weight. So it's like, how much does he really have in him right now? Yeah, yeah. And I know myself, like Cheeto is a very slow starter as well. But oh, that uppercut, man! Yeah, it's so beautiful. I can't, I can't stop. I can watch that all day. <laughs> Love it. Here we go, here we go. Here we go, pressure right here. So now right back to the center. The pressure, but, right? Oh, yeah. I like how Font's moving around on the outside. Vera's standing right on the monster. See, because Vera is really, good at, is really good in the kicking range because he'll kick all day. He yeah. doesn't mind it at all. Oh, Ooh, nice one, one, two, three. Two, three. Yeah. One, two, three by Font. All the three landed. Basic. The basics. All so, three landed. Go ahead. I like I like I like the I like what Font is doing because he's staying out of the range, like as in uh as the the Muay Thai guy I'm working with, he's like he tells me there's four four zones. Four nothing lands, three the kicks land, two, two the punches land, and and oh. one everything. You got everything, the whole like you want to be in zone four and, and with the kicking guy until you can move to zone two. I like that. I like that. Nice spin right there. He caught the foot of Vera, walked him all the way up to the fence, dropped the foot and blasted him. And now Vera's the one. Look at this. So it's Font is on the outside track moving around. Ooh. Nice left leg kick by Vera right there. Font still walks in, throws the hands. Pop that jab, but he just can't. That's the one thing is, I mean, Vera just can't get a rhythm going. Font keeps stepping in and mixing it up, right, AJ? I mean, I feel, oh, yeah. Giannis, I can't even do it. Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say seven <laughs> no, things at one time. <laughs> oh, no, it's because this this fight is actually going at a very fast pace. So as soon as we say one thing happens, something else is starting to happen. And like, oh. So 
I, I do like that that font is uh changing his levels on all of his strikes now. It's 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 he's making it a little bit more unpredictable, but he's starting to put his keep his head on the center now. Uh and so when Vera does throw something like a straight punch, it's starting to land. He needs to stay diligent and keep off moving side to side. You know, and that's the one thing. I like those busy hands right here, that one-two. See, there's the jab by Vera, but Font is just, he's able to walk in. See that one-two, one-two right there, one-two again. He's able just to capitalize on it all day and just knock the rhythm. Good calf kick by Vera to a double jab right hand by Font, and Font is still walking him down, walking him down. And Vera's wanting to throw one punch. Font's throwing three, four punches. There's a good one-two. Go ahead. I wonder if uh the like the actual the actual like punches from Rob Font are making like the power behind them are making it uh a little bit uh hesitant for Cheeto Vera to actually swing back because I he, he's throwing one shot but it's, he's kind of hesitant to throw to throw in combination. Yeah, I think he's worried about you know what I mean I think that I think he's you know the biggest thing is is he doesn't want to get punched. You want to make sure you're blocking, and so that tends to keep your hands up there, making sure it's like. I don't want him to hit me with one of these shots. Font's got footwork, doing a great job. Jab, cross, gets inside, boom, throws the knee. But the way he's moving out there, the footwork of Font, he's setting everything up, and I like one, two, and then he, like, knocks you off rhythm, and then one, two again. See, boom, boom, boom. Pause, pop, 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 pause, bang, bang. And he's, like, right there. Like, literally, I have to Ooh, big left leg nice. by Vera. Big nice left leg shot. by Vera. But it's one. You know, but that's how you're going to tend to keep, that's how you're going to keep that right hand at home with that left leg, throwing it to the liver all day. Vera's starting to walk him down a little bit, but you know what I mean? The way that Font is throwing the, 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 the way that he's throwing the, the, the rhythm, boom, boom, look right there, walking down, bang, bang, pause, pop, pop, pause, pop, pop. He's keeping it off rhythm, which is beautiful. Oh, see, one, Ooh, two, three, nice. money shots by Font. Everything oh. is being super basic. He's just keeping everything like the uppercuts, the straight oh. rights. See, he hits him oh. with the one, two, then jab, 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 right hand. Then he comes back in with the one and an uppercut. Look at that. I mean, he's just, like you said, he is keeping it basic, but he's doing it with a great rhythm, just a high output. And that's the one thing I'm really, look at that. Kick, set, right hand, left hand. One, two, pause, one, two, pause, jab, jab, pause. I mean, it's perfect. Vera, Vera's coming in here and he's stuck because he wants it, maybe that he's trying to make sure he blocks these shots, but he's only throwing one punch at a time. He's kind of getting run over right now by Font. Don't you think? Yeah. Oh, Ooh. lead hook, oh, lead hook. On? Wait, lead hook caught him. Lead hook caught him. Yeah, got Font that shooting. Lead. That lead hook by Vera got Font down in our single. He caught him with that lead hook. Nice. Vera's going to try to pull away. I think he realizes that he's hurt. Trying to push the pace, push the pace, throw some elbows. Oh, Font oh, trying to survive, man. get inside, trying to lock the body. That lead hook. Got him smashed down, trying to throw elbows. I, I got to see that lead hook oh. again because that was boom. He caught him with it. All right. So the marathon man. runner is just getting started. How burnt is, you know what I'm saying, on the gas tank how burned is Font, and Vera's just getting started, I think. You know what I mean? You look at his face, I think Vera, Vera's just ready to get going. Oh, yeah, and I, I kind of I kind of wonder what 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 it does after getting dropped by uh, by Vera. What it, what it does to him mentally right now going into the third round, like, oh, shit, like, I had to go into him. Like, he just hurt me, like, a minute, minute and 15 minutes, a minute and 15 seconds ago. What the hell? Yep, what am I going to do? That jab, one, two, three, just money shots. See, he's oh, got him just trying everything right here. But there was this kick to the belly hole. That was beautiful by Vera. Then there was that jab right there. But this lead hook, boom, Ooh. caught him clean. Jumped in with a nice left hook that caught Vera. Put him on the ground and had him scrambling for a shot. Font was moving off to the side. Ran right into it. Wait. It's not fair. Cheeto can't look. He can't even look. He wants to jump. <laughs> look, get back. Go. Here we go. Vera wants in there right now. And this is what he's got to do. Push this pace. Font comes out with the one, two. Here comes Font. You got to break him early. Oh, you got it. You got it. Oof. Body lock by Font. Going to try to pick him up and slam him down. Going to throw in a leg. Vera's working his way back up. Fight the hands. Fight the hands. 
Look at that. Yeah, he's nice. got his back. Nice, nice. job, Avera. Now we're in that over under clinch against the fence. We got Vera got Fonts back up against the fence. If I was Vera, I'm like, let's push away. Or at least be throwing some type of something. Like throwing knees in this position. It's it's open. There we Ooh. go. Almost almost caught the elbow on the break. I know, right? Here we go. Back to the center. Fonts walking him down. Left leg by Vera. But Font is still coming forward. You gotta throw something to get him to back off. So far, it's it, that's the one thing, right? Yeah. And he, he kind of needs to go back to what he was doing earlier. He needs to keep Vera on the back foot because the only success I've seen Vera have was on the front foot. Yeah. 100%. 100%. And that's one thing is, um, but I'm all over the fact that, like, right here, see, that's Font is still walking him down. And that's the one thing is it's – Tired enough, but Vera's got to throw something. He needs to be a little more active. Right now, it's Font just walking him down, trying to keep these shots going, throwing that jab. Vera's got to, he's got to get a little more, I think he's got, just got to get busier. Nice leg Ooh. kick. Nice leg kick. I mean, you look at significant strikes, 102 to 54, he's running away with it. Oh, Jeez. good right leg. That was leg. a nice body shot. Yeah, good right leg by Font. Left kick. There we go. Ooh. He stepped down on that foot and fired that left hand by Vera. I need more of that from Vera. Yes, I need sir. More. I just I just need him to just start coming forward, start, start throwing combinations. Yes, sir. He needs to put some punches together. There you go. Now he's starting to come forward a little bit. Font, though, he's right there. One, two. Here we go. Double Ooh, jab, nice uppercut, uppercut, landed again. Double jab, level changed into that uppercut. That was beautiful. I liked it. I liked it. You know, and Font just keeps coming forward. Barrett, man, you're gonna this fight's gonna leave you behind here in a minute. Couple double oh, yeah. jab. He has he has to do something significant now because I after I'm looking. Oh, nice. That was a nice little check hook. He's he's losing to me, he's losing this round, even though we're halfway through it. And if he loses this, if he loses this round, he has to get a finish because I'm like it's already three, three, three rounds down to zero. Yeah, I mean, I worry about 30-27 out there, whatever that ref is, you know what I mean, the judgment. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then you got, nice again, a lot of jabs by Font. But just in, if you watch it, just in ring generalship, Font is the one coming forward. Font is throwing these jabs. Look, at left to the body. The one counter shot, you can see it. Vera's only throwing one shot at a time, and it's Font just putting in all the work, right? And in a matter of an opinion, we got to go, I mean, this is Font. He's just putting in the work. Well, shoot. well, even just not even just just the the volume or out, but he's he's throwing volume, but he's also landing and doing a lot of damage. Yeah, like, he's doing a lot of damage. Just, oh, like look at that jab lead hook, levels. right hand to the belly hell to the belly hole by Font. And a yeah. lot of people don't do that in their boxing and, and like in their MMA, like just fighting in general. Like they don't change levels. They don't change levels in takedowns, wrestling. In the in the punches, in the kicking, man, everybody goes one level every single time. You got to change the levels. And Upstairs, Fon's downstairs. Really, and Fon's doing a really great job of, of, of changing the levels, making it hard for Cheeto to actually catch a rhythm on where he's going. There's a one, two, one, two. Look at that jab, jab. Look at it. Gets inside. Oh. Look at that. Goes underneath downstairs. Comes upstairs. Look at that. Right hand over the top. Putting on a boxing tech. Man, he is boxing right now. Coming oh. forward, popping those hands. He's just out working very. Look at that. One, two, three, one, two. Right? One, two, three. Boom. One, two. No pause. It's just like a little breathe. Hup. And then he throws his next combination. He's not just sitting back and waiting. Putting in the work. 144, 147 significant strikes to 85. Just out working him. Oy. Good left hand by Vera, but it's one punch at a time, and Font's going to walk you down. Oh, oh, good knee. Good knee, Vera oh, got him with the knee. Oh, it flattened him down. He fell down. He's got to put in the work. But again, short time. That knee was perfect. Put Font on his back. Vera's trying to throw shots, but Font is staying alive. He's sitting up. We know it's short time. Oh, man. Four seconds. Three seconds. So he stole the round again with the knockdown, baby. Man. That knee again. It has to. Oh, man. He, like. He can't, his font getting up. All right, he's walking off. Dang, he sat him down with see, that knee. See, that's what kind of throws that, that round into kind of a little bit of a, into a little bit of flurry. Gianchi. I think, 
Yeah, it's, it kind of makes it weird for the judges. This is the, this is very weird for the judges. Jonky, who's winning? I can't. We've had two knockdowns literally in the last 15 seconds by Vera as he's sitting there basically. Font is putting the work in. Font is putting the hands together, hitting all time, but then he gets dropped right at the end. Boom. And he got dropped right again. So Cheeto has to steal him. I, he's got to steal them both. And they're like this one right here. Go ahead. This is obvious. Give, Look at I this knee. What a this. shot. I would I would say the third round was probably the closer round for okay. me to like give give a to give uh, Cheeto the round. Yes. Like I give him this round just because like in the judging, in the criteria of judging and the scoring, the yes. scoring system, the, the, the finishing se if you're closer to a finishing sequence, then like uh, it, that round should be yours. The damage, if you almost finish the guy, that round is, that round should be yours. So I do give it to him. And that second round, he wasn't, he wasn't almost finished. He, he saved himself a little bit more in that in that second round than he did in his third round. This third round, Oy. that third round, he was almost but it done. Was, but it was more, vi but okay, but my question is, vicious. it was more visible that he got dropped with that knee as much as that hook. I don't know if it was as visible, right, that that he got blasted by a shot that sat and wobbled him down because he did a better job. He collected himself a lot better than he could this time with the knee, which almost looked like he was finished. But here comes Vera trying to push the pace. Yeah, and and he's still trying to come forward. He he needs this is what Font needs. He needs to put him on his back foot because most because most of the stuff that Font was doing was great on the front foot. Even though he's tired, he just needs to just keep the jab up, keep something up, and stay defensively sound. Yeah, I like even he's, if he's tired. Yep, and he's walking forward, which is beautiful, and that's the one thing he's smothering Vera still, and Vera backing up. There he goes now. See Vera starts he jumps forward a little bit with that right left of the body, but. You know what I mean? Again, Font is just throwing the combinations. Here we go. The jab, the uppercuts, the uppercuts. Oh, see, that's the one thing. If Vera could figure out how to do this in the middle of the round oh. and land a shot. Nice job again by Font. Popping Man. that jab. Go ahead. Man, if I'm if I'm shooting, I'm I'm hard stepping forward because I know if I get if I get on my lead foot, I'm dominating. Like it, he has to start putting the Putting the pressure forward. Right. He's got to get Font to move back. He's got to get him to back up. And he's it takes the shot. He's got to hit him. But see, he's trying to catch what Font's doing. He's allowing him to move in and looking for that counter a little bit. But yeah, like you said, the aggressive Vera moving forward and backing Font up a little bit. See, letting him just tee off like this. I don't know if he's trying to save something. Go ahead. Both both these guys on the back foot don't really fight well. It's like man, like if they need to be, they both need to fight fight on the front foot, and it's weird because it it's who's trying to establish the front the uh the front foot going in forward, start start working. And Font's doing a really great job of that. It's just when Cheeto goes forward, he does end up getting them hurt. Yeah, he does hurt Font very very badly. And it's kind of like that dilemma is like man, the guy who who's able to put up the damage isn't going forward but the guy who isn't able to put hurt the other guy right now is like is doing all the work working on the front foot yeah do you see the eyes are swelling bad right now vera's got that eye he's catching with these little shots inside it's tearing him up he keeps moving forward and he just he's wearing the damage and 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 vera is not wearing the damage at all <laughs> yeah that's what's crazy that's why it's so hard to like to to to, to give him the the nod I mean, to not give him the nod just by the way he looks, but Font is the one. Again, 178, but Vera's picking it up. He's doing a lot more, but the swelling on Font. Oh, goes, oh, oh, there it is. It sat him down again. He has a lot more time. Oh, we got a lot around. of time. He stays out front this time. Get off the ground. Make him get up. You, sets him down. Sets him down. He's just him beating him right up. Here. Vera just landing the damage. Oh, that was a sick slow motion fall. Look at him. Let him up. Back up. Uh, Vera. You got to do something. You can't let him just sit right here. He's got his fat. He's just, he's, he's got he his back recovered. against the cage and he's just recovering. You got to let him up. What are you doing? Kicking the leg, kicking the leg. I'm with it, but come on, man. <laughs> oh. All right. Man, I, was that a sidekick to the face too? Do you like, think it I broke to... his jaw? Yeah. We'll have to see, but... 
I'm not sure. He's just standing over the top of him, Chad. He's on his back right now, just trying to chill, and he's just kind of waiting for him, but he's not standing him up. He just killed literally. He had like a minute and a half. Now the ref's going to stand it up. Here comes here comes Cheeto again. Boom. Looking for oh. that knee. Look at, but now see he's the aggressor. He moved forward, but here comes Font. He oh. can't help himself. Oh, he tried to spin one off for a head kick. Font's coming forward. Here we go. Now see what I mean? Vera's walking him down, trying to spin off another kick. Look at that. Font's moving forward, though. Here comes Font moving, lands a kick. I can't believe he let him off like to the, I mean, he really let him off that time, didn't he, chat? I mean, he really, you know, AJ, he just sat back and let him, I mean, he just stood there, kicking his legs, letting him recover the whole time. I mean, it's showing your dominance. You definitely win the round, but, you know, like you said, I don't know how we're going to score that third round where you dropped him. We know the fourth round where you did it, and on the second round, man, I don't know. Go and ahead. I, I, and I don't know what these judges are going to be looking at. In the third Look at the damage. Gonna... Look at the face. Ugh. Like, man, what are these judges going to be looking at? A hundred percent. That third, that third round, Font was controlling for literally the whole four damn minutes thing. Yes, and thirty seconds, and then next thing you know he gets caught with one shot. Gets it does. Hurt super yeah, bad. Gabriel, damage is a big thing, but those are coming in the last two rounds. So, is it? Are we two rounds apiece coming down to the, the this round? Did he get that? Like he said, because he was getting dominated until he landed that lead hook that dropped him and kind of wobbled him, but it wasn't that bad of a right. Do we give him that round? Did he steal that round by being able to drop him? Like you said, in the the, the third round, it was a little more evident for sure. But Cheeto's ready to go, man. My man's ready to go. Look, at this is a marathon, and he's ready. He pushed for this fifth round. All I'm saying is 181 significant strikes to 129 significant strikes. It was crazy because the fight before where they barely broke 50. You know what I mean? This is nuts. <laughs> the way that, that they're going off. I'm just saying, this is insane. Here we go. Last round. Now here comes Font again, busy hands. Look at that, jab, jab, right hand. Jeez, man. Oi. Well, they got it at it. Well, total strikes is one thing. Significant strikes, they're literally saying what? You know what I mean? 181 significant strikes to 129. There you go, GG. More like four zero Vera. Yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> anyway, here we go. So now Font's trying to push it, throwing that jab. Look at that lead hook, nice lead hook right there. He switches stance down by Vera. Oh, here we go. The failing of the one defense night. is one thing, but man, look at Font is still coming forward and pushing. I don't know if Barrett's just waiting for that one shot to slide in. 192 and 135 in the strikes. Jeez. Almost 200 from Font. Yeah. Keep coming forward. Keep coming forward. I don't know why it, this thing dropped, but it should be up there. Live scoring is, is slowing down on me. Oh, Ooh. big shots, big shots. What do you mean? How is this how is this thing hard to judge? I don't are you watching the fight or do you need me to am I commentating wrong or something? Because the busyness and the hands of font, he's just landing him. Cheeto's not throwing anything. There's the jab. There's the lead hook that gets in. Boom, boom. Yeah, the counter broke. They're throwing so many. The counter broke. Now here he comes forward again, but Font is still walking forward. One, two. Boom, boom. Look at that. Double jab, right hand. Jeez. Oh, teep kick. Nice. There's a teep kick and a left by Vera. Look at that. And they're just cutting him up. It's crazy, isn't it? How Bro. it's just, how it's damaging him so bad when the, look at 207 significant strikes by Font landing and it, and Vera's face isn't even dented. But Font is tore yeah. up. It's crazy. Oh. And it, and Font has landed hard. That's what I mean. He's, He's landing hard, hard shots. This is crazy, man. I'm loving this. But now right here again with Font moving around, Vera starting to move forward again. We got 217. 
This has got it. I mean, oh, look at Fonts moving forward. There's a counter right there. I like how he slipped that left in there, moving backwards by Vera. GG. Fonts coming forward, throwing three, four punches. One Jeez. shot again by Vera. He laughed at him. Gave him a smile. You know, and that's it. He is. Font is throwing his shots, and Vera's doing a really good job of catching him when he releases from the combo. Backing out a little bit. Bam! He hits him with one. You know what I mean? Oh, double jab right oh, there man. by Vera. That was money. Did you see that? Snap that head back of Font. Here we go. Oh, no. I don't know why, but I, I, like, I, I pictured a kick coming that way. Oh, you know it. That's what I'm saying. I'm worried yeah. about the score. But if you go by the damage, if you go by the look of it all, right? Right now, this is crazy. But Font's coming forward. Font's trying to throw that jab. Vera throws that one hook inside. Oh, big kick. Nice one, two by Font. Moving it forward. Vera's off the track. Moving. I like it. Up, moving around a little bit. Oh, that jab just right in between there. Which judge will have, which judge will have a 50 44? I don't know. We'll see. There goes Font with the right hand and an uppercut. Oh. oh, uppercut. Vera played with it a little bit. Oh, there's another shot. Here we go. Vera walking him down, throwing that jab. Font still moving forward. Ooh, wee. Oh, big jab by Font moving forward. Man, I love this fight. I really love this, this fight. This has been an incredible <laughs> fight. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I'm with you. Look at that. Like downstairs, upstairs by Font. Nice kick oh, to the face. Again. Oh, did again. it break him? What? It got him. He fired one shot to the face and it backed him up. He even had the hand in the way. Backed him up, backed him up. He's in trouble. Vera's going to steal it oh, by doing this again God. at the end. Oh, I love it. Fired one kick and he blocked it. And he's on the run. And there it is. All right. So if you go by significant strikes, fine. If you go by facial damage, no way. Look at it. Wow. Vera just carved him up. But it was one kick. Boom, he fired that kick and it blocked him, hit him in his face and just wobbled him. Man, Vera looks like a boss right here. Love it, Cheeto. Jeez. Love it. Ah, what a fight, though. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, which one of them looked like they were in a fight? Get some. Oh, this is crazy. Man, he just dominated, but it almost makes you wish, like, why did you let him have so much? Why did you let him throw so many punches before? Shut him down early. Shut him down early. Boom. But I tell you, the power shot, it's like he just ran. He just ran. Ah, look at that. Cut on the head. Vera carved him up. Carved him up. Man, and he, here's the thing. Here's the thing that I'm weirded, super weirded out by is Vera got hit with some really hard shots, and he's not wearing it. Then you look at Font, who got clipped by not as many shots, and he's just He is up. tore up. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. He is. Font's face looks horrifying. Horrifying. Vera just carved him up. You know what I mean? It, it's absolute insanity. That, and we're talking about the face is swelled up, the cheek, dropped him twice. I mean, the face looks horrible right here, Hussein 944. And it's no really way, like, I, you can't... It's so hard to give, you can't give him, he has to win it just by the, by damage, right? <laughs> I don't, oh, all right, here we go, chat, here we go. 48-47, watch, 48-47, split decision. Maybe I'll call it fun. Five rounds. Forty-eight, forty-seven, forty-nine, forty-six. 49-46. Got to give him the Vera. There he is. GG. Okay. I like it. So, so it does it come back to that, what was it, that, that second round maybe they gave him the knockdown? Yeah, I think I think that's what, I think that's what it was, is the knockdown. After the knockdown, getting the fight ending sequence. So. We know in yeah. round three he got it. We know in round oh, no. four he got it. And then it boiled down to that round five. Three, three, four, and five to me were definitely Vera's. Yeah. 
Very hard work. I am very proud of him. That is amazing. I am so proud of Vera Man GG. That was tight. Man. Do you hear what he's saying, chat? When oh, you work yeah. hard, you have the most chances to survive because he did take a lot of punches. 223 significant. You know what I'm saying? 223 significant strikes. You know what I mean? That's just crazy to 169. But the damage, Vera, how can you not love this kid? Oh! Dude, it was nuts. Oh, I love it. The fam is in here. That is so cool. Oh man, he's don't you don't make me cry. My father's here screaming like a madman, he says. I love that. I this love is that. So cool. He said, I'm bringing that belt to Ecuador. My man, his mom is family. That's cool. He wants four, three, or two right now. Give me number four, number three, or number two. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, who's cutting it? Carson, are you cutting onions in here? Stop it. <laughs> Oh, I love him. I love it. Much love. Why would you give him O'Malley? He's not ranked. Why would you why would you do that? That's that, like a year year what? No, no can do. And is O'Malley number four, number three, or number two? He wants to climb the ladder. Climb the ladder. <laughs>